The I Am Discourses by Ascended Master St. Germain. Discourse number 1, October 3rd, 1932. St. Germain. Invocation. Thou infinite mighty presence, thou all-pervading principle of life, we give praise and thanks for thy wondrous activity through all our presence. Out of thy mighty essence comes all it is, and oh, that humanity might understand. Thou art ever and forever self-sustained. Thou mighty, active principle of life, surge forth in the outer activity of mankind, and manifest thy supreme justice now in all places. Mighty presence of light, God in action, govern the minds of mankind, holding them to truth and justice, and see that thy messengers are placed in all official positions. Let not of the outer interfere, that none of humanity may accept any thought of deception. Mighty presence of God in action, surge forth in the minds of all, expressing thy conquering presence. Greetings. I bring you greetings from the perfected ones, who are watching closely over and ministering to all. The Discourse Life in all its activities everywhere manifest is God in action, and it is only through lack of the understanding of applied thought and feeling that mankind is constantly interrupting the pure flow of that perfect essence of life which would, without interference, naturally express its perfection everywhere. The natural tendency of life is love, peace, beauty, harmony, and opulence, for life cares not who uses it, but is constantly surging to pour more of its perfection into manifestation, always with that lifting process which is ever inherent within itself. I am. I am is the activity of that life. How strange it is that students with sincere interest do not seem to get the true meaning of those two words. When you say and feel, I am, you release the spring of eternal, everlasting life to flow on its way unmolested, in other words, you open wide the door to its natural flow. When you say, I am not, you shut the door in the face of this mighty energy. I am is the full activity of God. Having placed before you so often the truth of God in action, I wish you to understand its first expression in individualization. The first expression of every individual everywhere in the universe, either in spoken word, silent thought, or feeling, is, I am, recognizing its own conquering divinity. The student, endeavoring to understand and apply these mighty yet simple laws, must stand guard more strictly over his thought and expression, in word or otherwise, for every time you say, I am not, I cannot, I have not, you are, whether knowingly or unknowingly, throttling in that great presence within you. This is just as tangible as if you placed your hands about the throat of an outer form. Only with the outer form, your thought governing the hand, you can release it at any time. But when you make a declaration using the words, I am not, you set in motion mighty, limitless energy that continues to act unless it is recalled and the imperfection consumed and transmuted. This shows you the enormous power you have to qualify this mighty energy of God, and I tell you, beloved students, dynamite is less dangerous, for that would but liberate you from the body, while these thoughts sent forth ignorantly and ungoverned bind you upon the wheel of re-embodiment indefinitely. Thus you can see how important it is for you to know what you are doing when you thoughtlessly use wrong expression, because you are using the most divine principal activity in the universe. I am. Do not misunderstand me. And this is no idle, foreign, or oriental expression, but the highest principle of life used and expressed throughout every civilization that has ever existed. For the first expression every self-conscious form of life gives is, I am. It is only afterwards, in its contact with outer, wrongly qualified activity, that it begins to accept anything less than I am. Now, dear students, do you not see that when you say, I am sick, you are just reversing this principle of life, which is naturally all perfection, thus requalifying it by your willful ignorance with something which it never naturally possessed. Through long centuries of willful misunderstanding, humanity has charged the very atmosphere about them with falsehood and unreality, for I need not say to you that when you say, I am sick, 
it is an abject falsehood in respect to your divinity which cannot be sick. Does this sound harsh to you? Then I say, think it over, and you will see what a blessing and release it can be for you. I say to you, dear students, in the name of God, stop using these wrong expressions of your Godhead, of your divinity, for it is impossible for you to have freedom as long as you continue to do it. I cannot speak of this to you too often, that when you really recognize and accept the mighty presence of God in you, there are positively no adverse conditions. Stop. I say to you, giving power to the outer conditions, persons, places, or things, and in the name of God, every time you find yourself starting to say, I am sick, I am broke, I am not feeling well, instantly reverse this fatal condition to your progress and declare silently with all the intensity of your being, I am, which is all health, opulence, perfection, happiness, peace, and the power to recognize perfection in yourself and everywhere else. When you think of the expression, I am, it means that you know that you have God in action expressing in your life. Do not let these false expressions continue to govern and limit you. Continually remind yourself, I live, move, and have my being, and all outer expression in the full opulence of God made manifest every moment. In thus reminding yourself of this invincible, unconquerable presence, you keep the door open for its pure, invincible essence and intelligence to weave into your outer expression at wondrous perfection. I plead with you, dear ones, everywhere. Do not continue to use these wrong expressions, thinking that in some hocus-pocus way you may slide past reaping the results. It simply cannot be done. Many of you know that they use the branding iron on the western frontier as a recognition of ownership by the ranchmen. So great is my desire to have you recognize and hold fast to the active presence of God in you, that I almost long for a branding iron to brand those words, I am, into your consciousness for constant use that you could not be drawn off the recognition, acceptance, and use of that mighty, glorious presence of God which you are. I trust that all who may hear or read these words will feel the power and the mighty conviction of this truth that goes with them, leaping into action wherever expressed. If at any time anything less than perfection attempts to make any appearance in your experience, declare vehemently that it is not true and that you accept only God, which is perfection in your life, everywhere manifest. As long as you give away to accepting false appearance, you will have them expressed in your life and experience. It is not, dear student, a matter of belief on your part whether you accept these truths or not. But they are the law, proven through long centuries of experience, and are placed before you for your freedom. Awaken to the fact that your thought and feeling in the past have built created the inharmony of your world today. Arise, I say arise and walk with your Father, the I Am, that you may be free from these limitations. There is only one thing in this universe that can surround you with limitation, and that is accepting the outer appearance instead of the mighty, active presence of God in you. The Western world likes to fool itself with the idea that it refuses to accept the ancient and Eastern idea of sorcery, in other words, the misuse of the spiritual powers. The worst kind of sorcery is being used in the political fields today that has ever been known in the history of mankind through the use of mental power wrongly qualified. If this same tremendous mental force were used in just the reverse way, to know that there is only God in action in every individual filling official places, the sender of that quality or truth would not only be free himself, but the political world would be filled with freedom and justice. Then we would experience a natural world, a world of God in action everywhere present. It is today as it was at one time in Egypt. Those who misuse the mental power are binding themselves to the rack of inharmony, embodiment after embodiment. Take the stand. I do not take on conditions from anyone or anything about me but God. Good, and I am always God commanded. You need to acquire the habit of stilling yourself. Sit down three or four times a day and simply still the outer self. This will let the energy be supplied. Learn to command and control the energy in your body. If you want the energy still, be still. If you want the energy active, be active. 
You must stand up, face a thing, and rise above it. There is no other way. The student should watch in every way for habits and break them up. He should not have to be told, but must look within himself and uproot whatever is not perfect. This brings a freedom not possible in any other way. The holding on of old habits is just like wearing old, worn-out garments. The student must not wait for someone else to think these things out for him. He must do it himself. It is not possible for anyone to do it but himself. In this work and under this radiation, everything that is latent in the individual is being brought forth to be consumed. Watch that the attention does not become fixed on the thing you do not want. It is perfectly ridiculous to keep recalling things which have not worked out. If you have built your limitations for centuries and can, buy this attention and self-effort, free yourself in a few years, isn't it worth it? Isn't it not marvelous? A humorous sense of getting away from a thing is sometimes the quickest and most powerful way of doing it, for a buoyant, joyous feeling releases the energy that many times enables a very wonderful manifestation to take place. If one will buckle down to brass tacks and call on the law of forgiveness, he can then consume all past creations in the consuming flame and be free. You must be conscious that the flame is the active presence of God doing the consuming. The freedom of God is here in action. When you have a feeling to do a certain constructive thing, go ahead, stick to it, and do it. If the heavens fall, whether the manifestations comes now or not should not enter into your conscience at all. Even when students only know a thing intellectually, they should not allow the mind to keep recalling wrong conditions when they know what this activity does to their success. It is unbelievable that people will not conquer this enemy in their consciousness. No student can ever gain the victory until he stops turning back to the old, negative conditions he is trying to get rid of. The whole work of a teacher is to get some means and explanation over to the student of the activity of acceptance. What the mind accepts is that which the individual agrees with through his attention, by letting the two become one. When the mind accepts and agrees with a thing or condition, the individual decrees it into his world. Whatever you let the attention rest upon, you are agreeing with and accepting, because through the attention you have let the mind become one with it. If an individual were to see a rattlesnake coiled, would he walk right up to it to be struck? Well, certainly not. Yet this is what students are doing when they let their attention turn back to their troubles. Such habits are only past momentum given to specific quality. There are only two activities in life. And if you will not let the inner govern according to its plan of perfection, then the outer must. When a constructive picture is flashed to your mind, it is a reality. When you recall it as a mental picture and hold it again, it calls forth the reality. One can become so aware of his own God presence that at any time he can see and feel its radiance pouring out to him. For things it does not want, the outer has all the confidence in the world. It is up to the student to compel it to have the same confidence for the perfection of God that it has for the imperfection of the senses. The student must always rely on himself. He must always think, what can I do to intensify this activity from the hints given? Benediction Mighty perfected ones, as we receive thy magic circle of protection, as we receive and are enfolded in thy mighty opulent presence, O Master within, we accept fully the opulence made manifest in our outer experience and use. We give praise and thanks for thy wisdom in its use. We give praise and thanks that we have the full strength to accept only thy mighty active presence at all times, and to refuse acceptance to anything unlike thee. Discourse 2, October 6, 1932 St. Germain Invocation Thou infinite, all-pervading presence, thou mighty master within each human form, we acknowledge and accept thy full presence manifest within these forms and within the human forms of every individual that God has sent forth. We give praise and thanks that at last we have become aware of this mighty presence to whom we can turn and recognize the fullness of God's activity, the I Am of all things. Greetings to you all. The Discourse when Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life, 
he gave forth one of the mightiest utterances that can well be expressed. When he said, I am, he did not refer to the outer expression, but he did refer to the mighty master presence God within, because he repeatedly said, I of myself can do nothing. It is the Father within, the I am, that doeth the work. Again Jesus said, I am the way, the life, and the truth, giving recognition to the one and only power, God in action within him. Again he said, I am the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world, prefacing every statement of vital importance with the words, I am. Contemplating I am as anything and everything you wish to be is one of the mightiest means of loosing the inner God power, love, wisdom, truth, and setting it into action in the outer experience. Again, let us refer to his mighty utterance, perhaps one of the greatest ever spoken into the outer expression. I am the open door which no man can shut. Do you not see how very vital this is when you come to review understandingly these mighty statements? When you recognize and accept fully, I am, as the mighty presence of God in you, in action, you will have taken one of the greatest steps to liberation. Now mark you, in the utterance of the truth that, I am the open door which no man can shut. If you can but realize it, you have the key that allows you to step through the veil of flesh, carrying with you all consciousness that you have generated or accumulated which is imperfect, and there transmute it, or in other words, raise it into the perfection into which you have stepped. Too much stress cannot be laid upon the importance of contemplating as often as possible the I am as the mighty, active presence of God in you, in your home, in your world, in your affairs. Every breath you breathe is God in action in you. Your ability to express or send forth thought and feeling is God acting in you. You, having free will, it is entirely up to you to qualify the energy sent forth in your thought and feeling and determine how it shall act for you. No one can say, How shall I know how to qualify this energy? For everyone knows the difference between destructive and constructive thought, feeling, and action. The student, in receiving instruction, should constantly analyze the motive back of that question to detect if that motive there is a feeling of intellectual pride, arrogance, or stubbornness in the outer-minded body. If there is within the motive a lurking desire to argue and prove the instruction wrong, rather than receive the blessing and truth intended, the individual has unknowingly shut the door, for the time being, to his ability to receive the good offered. Again, may I remind the students, regardless of their personal opinions as to what the truth shall be, I have proven through many centuries these condensed instructions how being given forth. If one wants to receive the greatest benefit possible, and the comprehension of that will be absolute, certain freedom and liberation, listen with an entirely open mind, with the consciousness that the I am, the active presence of God in you, is your certain ability to receive, accept, and apply without limit the instructions which is being given forth with an accompanying radiance, which will enable certain students at this time to comprehend these simple, yet mighty assertions of truth to their great blessing and freedom. The admonition has been before humanity through many centuries. You cannot serve two masters. Why is this? First, because there is only one intelligence one presence, one power that can act, and it is the presence of God acting in you. When you turn to the outer manifestation and give all kinds of expression and appearance power, you are attempting to serve a false, usurping master, because the outer expression can only find an appearance through the use of God's mighty energy. Your ability to lift your hand and the life flowing through the nervous system of your outer form is God in action in your body through your mind. Dear students, try to use this simple means as a reminder of God in action in you. When you start to go down the street, think for an instant. This is God's intelligence and power by which I walk, and this is his intelligence by which I know where I am going. Thus you will see that it is no longer possible to go on without understanding that every move you make is God in action. Every thought in your mind is God's energy, which enables you to think. When you know this is a fact, and there is no disputing it, 
Why not adore, give full confidence, trust in, have faith in, and accept this mighty presence of God in action in you? Instead of looking to the outer expression, which is clothed, qualified, and colored by the outer or human concept of things, regardless of the one mighty presence which enables the outer to express. All outer form and its attendant expression is but the experience life by which each individual may learn, through his own experience, the true source of his being, and come again into the fullness of perfection, through the self-conscious knowing thus attained. The outer experience of life is but a constant, changing, passing picture that the outer mind is created in its pretense, imagination, of being the real actor. Thus is the attention so constantly fixed upon the outer, which alone contains imperfection, that the children of God have forgotten their own divinity and must come back to it again. God is the giver, the receiver, and the gift, and is the sole owner of all the intelligence, substance, energy, and opulence there is in the universe. If the children of God would learn to give for the joy of giving, whether it be love, money, service, or whatever it may be, they would open a door to such vast opulence that it would be impossible to want for a single thing in the outer expression. The unfortunate thing in humanity, which has caused such rampant selfishness and unprecedented condemnation of each other, is the idea of claiming ownership to these wonderful blessings of God. For there is but one love acting, one intelligence, power, and substance, and that is God in every individual. The warning that should be placed before every student and individual is to guard against the desire of the outer self to claim power of its own. If in every act of the personality God were given full credit, transformations unbelievable cannot help taking place in the one thus giving full credit and power where it belongs. There has rarely been a correct understanding of supply and demand. There is positively abundant supply omnipresent, but the demand for it must be made before the law of the universe permits it to become into the expression and use of the individual. The individual, having free will, must consciously, with full determination, make the demand, and it cannot fail to come forth into expression, no matter what it is, so long as the individual holds an unwavering, determined consciousness. This simple statement used with sincere determination I am the great opulence of God made visible in my use right now and continuously will bring to the individual all he can possibly use. The limiting element so many students seem to be unaware of is that they start out declaring the truth, for instance, as in the above statement. But before many hours have passed over their heads, if they were to analyze themselves conscientiously, they would find in their feelings lurking doubt or fear, for both these are feelings. Naturally, this neutralizes to a large extent the constructive force that would quickly bring about the fulfillment of the desire or demand. Once a student can become fully aware that every right desire or wish is God in action, propelling his energy forth to full accomplishment, and is always self-sustained, he would become aware of the limitless love, power, and intelligence he has with which to accomplish any given purpose. With this simple understanding, the word failure would be completely wiped out from this world and in a very short time from his consciousness, because he would see that he was wielding intelligence and power that could not fail. Thus students and individuals come into their full dominion as God intends. It was never intended by the great, all-wise, all-loving Father that any of his children should want for a single thing. But because they allow their attention to become fixed on the outer appearances, which is like the changing sands of the desert. They have, knowingly or unknowingly, cut themselves off to a large degree from that great opulence and intelligence. This great opulence is their birthright, which everyone can have who will again turn to the I Am, the active principle of God forever within himself, as the only source of active life, intelligence, and opulence. All through the ages there have been certain standards of conduct necessary for the student who desires to reach beyond certain attainments. This is the conserving and governing of life force through the sex. For an individual who has been using this energy without any thought of governing it to suddenly say, I will cease this, cut it off as it were, without understanding the correct attitude of consciousness, 
would be simply suppressing a flow of energy which is caused to flow in the wrong direction. Any student who wishes to govern this will find this simple statement the most efficient, if used understandingly, of any one particular thing that can be given. This will normally and naturally govern the flow of life energy and bring it back into its natural channels. It is the mighty statement of Jesus, I am the resurrection and the life. This statement will not only purify the thought, but is the most powerful, lifting, adjusting force that can be used for the correction of this greatest of barriers to the full height of spiritual attainment. Anyone who begins to feel the inner impulse to correct this condition and will use this statement earnestly and continuously will raise this marvelous current of energy to the highest center in the brain as was originally intended. He will find his mind flooded with the most marvelous ideas, with the abundant, sustaining power and ability coming into expression and use for the blessing of all mankind. I ask any student to try this and watch the result in his own mind and body. Feel deeply the statement of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. Repeat it three times, either silently or audibly, and notice the lifting of consciousness which you will experience. There may be some who will need to try this several times in order to feel the amazing uplift that others will experience the first trial. This will show you in a small way what can be done by its continued use. There is only one means of overcoming or rising out of anything, and that is, after you know what it is you are to rise out of, to take your outer attention completely away from it, fixing it firmly upon the above statement. Any condition in the outer experience that one wishes to overcome can readily be accomplished by the use of this statement, as well as using it to change the flow of the misdirected energy. I had one student who felt the inner impulse to redirect this mighty energy, and the use of this single statement alone enabled her with little assistance to raise her body. In one year, a marvelous transformation took place in her entire outer appearance. It seems incredible that in the recorded statements accredited to Jesus, which were only a part of what he really gave forth, that so few of humanity would receive the mighty import of these wonderful words of wisdom. At no time in the history of the world have so many mighty statements been given as he taught. Every one of these, when conscientiously used, hold within it the attendant radiance and accomplishment with which he attained. You not only have this power of the I Am, but his individual assistance also when these statements are used. One should often contemplate the true meaning of these mighty statements of Jesus when once you understand that your thought, feeling, and expression of I Am sets the mighty God power in you into action, without any limit, then you receive that upon which the desire is fixed. It should be no trouble for the student to see and understand that the outer appearance is but man's distorted creation by claiming the outer as a source of power, when a moment's contemplation will cause him to realize that there is but one love, intelligence, and power which can act, and that is God. The human or outer defects or discrepancies have nothing to do with the omnipresent perfection of God, for anything imperfect is the creation of the outer concept of mankind. If man will turn to the mighty I am within, knowing that God is all perfection, and that all outer appearances but man's creation through the misuse of the God power, he will see at once that if he sincerely contemplates and accepts the perfection of God, he will cause to come into manifestation in his life and experience this same mighty perfection. There is no possible means of bringing this perfection into your mind, body, and outer experience except by knowing and accepting the mighty, active presence of God in you. Such full recognition will cause this inner power to propel this perfection of God into your outer visible experience. Say to students, I am putting forth, as a messenger of this truth, statements of truth which will positively produce results, if unwaveringly held to and used. Students think things do not work because they do a thing today and forget it all next week. The desire for light and truth is the presence of God in the desire, propelling itself forth into action. For illumination, use the statement, I am the full comprehension and illumination of this thing I want to know and understand. The days your eyes are open to see some of these marvelous ascended beings, the joy will last through eternity. 
If one does not take the attitude that, I have the ability to do this, he never in the world can accomplish the thing he wishes to do. The moment you express, I am the resurrection and the life, in thought and feeling, it immediately turns all the energy of your being to the center in the brain, which is the source of your being. You cannot overestimate the power in this statement. There is no limit to what you can do with it. It was a statement that Jesus used most in his most difficult trials. Always know that when you decree a constructive thing, it is God in you propelling you to do it. It is the most foolish question imaginable to ask, have you proved this in your own experience? Each individual has to prove it for himself or it will mean nothing to him. Nothing ever really means anything to anyone unless he uses it. The feeling carries with it a certain coexistent sight. One often feels a thing with such clearness that he really sees it from the inner standpoint. As you enter the ascended state, thought, feeling, seen, and colors are almost simultaneously manifest. Harmonious sound is quiet. That is why ravishing music is the most quieting in its effect, while bombastic music is just the opposite. Benediction Thou mighty, majestic, conquering I am, we give praise and thanks for the comprehension of Thee as God acting in us, and with Thy mighty presence and radiance. Cause us to feel the mighty import of thy mighty truth and wondrous presence. When we contemplate thee, let thy mighty radiance fill us with thy comprehending conscience to know and apply thy assertions of truth more and more perfectly. We give praise and thanks for thy mighty perfection and truth for all those who look unwaveringly to thee. Discourse 3, October 10, 1932. St. Germain. Invocation, Thou infinite, all-pervading presence, with Thy mighty radiance surging forth throughout the atmosphere of earth, we give praise and thanks for the onrushing Christ power of love and wisdom, with which no uncertainty is raising the conscience of mankind above the sordid selfishness of the activity of the outer self. We give praise and thanks that we have become conscious of Thy mighty active presence of all times, and that in the conscious recognition of Thee, Thou dost change our minds and bodies with thy pure presence forever. I bring greetings from the radiant host to you all. The Discourse From within the radiance of the great electronic belt, I am projecting this today. From the heart of the golden city, the twin rays come forth, upon which are the speech, the light, and the sound. The time has rapidly unfolded us when we must be more aware of the great electronic belts encompassing all creation from the Godhead to the individual. The etheric belt around the Golden City is impenetrable, far more so than a wall of many feet of steel would be. So in a lesser degree may the individual, with sufficient comprehension of the active principle of the God-Self, surround himself with an electronic belt or circle, which he may qualify in any manner he may choose but woe be unto the individual who qualifies it destructively. If anyone should be foolish enough to do this, he would find this belt of electronic force closing in upon his own outer form, and it would be consumed. But those who with wisdom build and qualify for God's mighty love and constructive power will find themselves moving in a world untouched by the ignorance of mankind. The cosmic period has arrived when those who have attained a certain degree of understanding must create apply and use this wondrous electronic circle. Every creation that is self-conscious action has this circle of pure electronic force about it naturally, but to a large degree its force is ungoverned, therefore dissipated. In consciously creating this mighty ring of pure electronic force, you stop all leaks in the generation of this limitless essence and hold it in reserve for conscious use and direction. After a few months of this conscious creative activity of and within this electronic ring, one will need to be very careful in loosing or directing this force in any manner except by divine love. In the beginning of man's individualization, he was naturally surrounded by this magic circle. But as the consciousness was lowered more and more, rents were made in this great circle of force, causing leaks, as it were, until it has almost entirely disappeared. This, however, was not a conscious creation of the individual, but was a natural enfolding circle. Now students of the light must go to work with no uncertainty and consciously create this electronic belt about themselves, 
visualizing it perfect with no rents or breaks in its construction. Thus it will be possible to consciously reach within the electronic belt of the Godhead and there receive limitless wisdom, love, light, and the application of simple laws by which all creative power is possible. While the student is admonished to look always and never forget it to his own God self, which is the creator of his individualization, yet never has there been a single attainment in which there has not been given the assistance of those still in advance. There being but the one God, the one presence, and his all-powerful activity, then the more advanced than the other is but more of the God self in action. In this recognition you will understand why you can feel, I am here and I am there, for there is but the one God self everywhere. When the student can once understand that the ascended host of masters are but the more advanced consciousness of himself, then he will begin to feel the unquestionable possibilities within his grasp. Whether he speaks to the Godhead direct, to one of the ascended masters of light, or to his own God self in reality, it makes no difference for all are one. Until one does reach this state of consciousness, it does make a difference, for the individual is almost certain to feel a division of the oneself which is not possible to be made, except in the ignorance of the outer activity of the mind. When the student thinks of the outer expression, he should at all time be aware that it is but the outer activity of the one intelligence, guarding himself at all times against trying to divide in his own consciousness this mon mighty God power centered in him. Again, I must remind you that this limitless, mighty power of God cannot intrude its wondrous powers into your outer use, except by your invitation. There is only one kind of invitation that can reach it and loose it, and that is your feeling of deep devotion and love. When one has generated about himself this electronic belt or ring, there is no power that can penetrate it except divine love. It is only your consciousness of divine love that can penetrate within this great inner blazing belt of the Godhood, through which the Godhood sends back to you its great outpouring, mark you, through his messengers, transcendent beings so far surpassing anything of your present conception, that it is not possible in words to convey to you the majesty of the love, wisdom, and power of these great ones. At this point, let me again remind you that the student who will dare to do and be silent will find himself lifted into the transcendent radiance of this inmost sphere. Then by experience and seeing will he comprehend this of which I have spoken. The soul who is strong enough to clothe itself in its armor of divine love and go forward will find no obstruction, for there is not but your present consciousness and this mighty transcendent inner sphere to obstruct the approach of divine love. When you have touched and seen within this inner circle, you will then understand how imperfect is the present expression of divine love. Once one becomes consciously aware of these great spheres to which he may reach, he will find himself fearlessly reaching deeper and deeper within the radiance of this mighty intelligent hub of the universe from which all worlds, all creation have proceeded. There are among you strong, dauntless, fearless souls who will understand this and be able to use it with great blessing to themselves and others. There are those who will understand and see that the presence which beats each heart is God in action, that the activity sending the circulation through the body is God, that the essence charging forward to vitalize the outer form is God in action. Then, O oh, beloved students, awake to this now. Do you not see how great a mistake it is to sink under the ignorance of the outer self, feeling pain, distress, and disturbance? all created by the ignorance and activity of the outer self, when a few moments of earnest contemplation will cause one to realize that there can be but one presence, one intelligent, one power acting in your mind and body, and that is God. You see how simple, yet powerful, is this consciousness within you to loose the full recognition of the great, pure activity of God into your mind and body, and to let its wondrous, transcendent essence fill full to overflow in every cell. It seems to me, beloved students, that you cannot fail to grasp the simplicity of your true God-Self acting in you. Ever turn to it, praising it, loving it, demanding and commanding to surge forth into every cell of your body, into every demand of the outer activity in the home, in your affairs and business. 
When your desire is sent forth clothed in the God presence, power and intelligence, it cannot fail. It must bring to you that which you desire. Desire is but a lesser activity of decreeing. Decreeing is and should be the recognition of the accomplished desire. Beloved students, do forever put away any fear of the use of this great power. You know without being told that if you misuse it, you will experience in harmony. If you use it constructively, it will bring such blessing untold that you can but give praise and thanksgiving for the moment when you awaken to the fact that this limitless power is omnipresent, ever awaiting your conscious direction. The individual who has said that you cannot add one cubic to your height by your thought has stifled the activity and progress of the individual. For thought and feeling are the creative power of God in action. The uncontrolled, ungoverned use of thought and feeling has brought about all kinds of discord, sickness, and distress. Few, however, believe this, and keep going on and on and continually creating by their ungoverned thought and desire, chaos in their world, when they could as easily as a breath face about, using their thought constructively with the motive power of divine love, and build for themselves a perfect paradise within the period of two years. Even physical science has given proof that the body or outer form completely renews itself within a few months. Then you must see that with the conscious understanding and application of the true law of your being, how easy it is to cause perfection to manifest in your entire body and every organ to keep it in perfect normal activity. In a short time, it would not be possible for inharmony to enter your thought or body. O oh, children, reaching to the light, this great privilege is the open door of God before you which none may shut but yourself, none may obstruct or interfere with but yourselves. Fearlessly use your God-given dominion and power and be free. You cannot attain and hold this perfect freedom except through consciously applied knowledge. Now I shall give you a secret that if understood by the angry or discordant individual would tear him or her from that destructive activity, even from a purely selfish standpoint. The angry condemning person who sends out destructive thought, feeling or speech to another who is poised in his own God power, receives back to himself the quality with which he charged this power, while the poised person receives the energy which serves him, and which he automatically requalifies by his own poise. Thus the creator of discord, through anger and condemnation, is consciously destroying himself, his world of activity and his affairs. Here is a vital point students should understand. When one consciously reaches within the inner electronic circle of God, he makes his outer expression and activity a channel for the ceaseless outpouring of the pure essence from the Godhead. This in itself, even though he be entirely silent in the outer expression, is one of the greatest services to humanity, which but few not ascended are aware of what it means to mankind. The one reaching within the electronic circle becomes a continual outpouring, and this very radiation alone is a tremendous blessing to all mankind. Thus, eon after eon, have there been those unselfish messengers of God, through whom was poured forth the blessings of those not understanding the uplifting presence of this surging energy. When there is one or more found who can be an outpouring for this great welled-up presence, it is likened unto the first trickling of a leak in a dam. As the consciousness is held steady and firm, and as the rent in the dam increases, greater volume of water comes forth. For at last all obstruction is swept away, and the whole force back of it is poured forth into use. Unlike the water dammed up that rushes forward, dissipating itself because it is without direction, the God power thus loosed goes direct to the channel of consciousness more receptive, and there builds itself up, awaiting the opportunity to rush forward more and more. Thus the student of light, aside from his activity in dispensing the truth, becomes, as it were, an artesian well, from the depth of which flows this mighty essence of God. The student should at all times remember that no matter what their mistakes may have been, God never criticizes nor condemns them, but at every stumble which is made in that sweet loving voice says, Arise, my child, and try again and keep on trying till at last you have attained the true victory and freedom of your God-given dominion. Always when one has been conscious of having made a mistake, his first act should be to call on the law of forgiveness 
and demand wisdom and strength not to make the same mistake a second time. God, being all love, must have infinite patience, and no matter how many mistakes one may have made, he can always once again arise and go unto the Father. Such is the love and freedom within which God's children are privileged to act. There is only one mighty, invincible, evolving process, and that is through the power of consciously generating divine love. Love being the hub of all life, the more we enter and use it consciously, the more easily and quickly we release this mighty power of God, which is always standing as a damned up force waiting to find an open in our own consciousness by which it can project itself. For the first time in many centuries, the searchlights, or rays, from the golden city over the Sahara Desert are set into active operation over America and the Earth. There may be some individuals who will see these rays, not knowing what they are. Mankind need no longer think that personalities can continue to generate their destructive forces and long survive. Those who can use this knowledge of the electronic circle should no longer be deprived of its benefit, give it forth and the warning with it. Use a statement. I am the fulfilled activity and sustaining power of every constructive thing I desire. Use it as a general statement for the sustaining powers in everything that there is. I am here and I am there in whatever you want to accomplish is a splendid way to feel that you are using the one activity and you thus rise above the consciousness of separation. Benediction O mighty ones of the golden city, glorified are we in thy wondrous radiance, privileged are we in the use of thy great rays, blessed are we in the conscious recognition of thy mighty presence, enfold us forever in thy transcendent light. Discourse number 4, October 13th, 1932, St. Germain. Invocation. Thou mighty consuming flame of God, we bow before thy mighty majestic power. We rejoice in thy directing wisdom. We rejoice in thy presence in the heart of every one of God's messengers that go forth to direct his service and energy to the blessing of mankind. We give praise and thanks that thy presence has changed the tide of things, and that thou art as always the mighty governing intelligence. We give praise and thanks that thy consuming fire and thy creative activity dwelling in the heart of every one of us are ready to be loosed by the conscious desire to action. We give praise and thanks that thou art the consuming presence everywhere, that I am there and I am here, and I am the power that makes all things clear. I am the majestic presence, I am the conquering power, I am thy mighty energy, thy consuming flame each hour. I bring greetings to you all from the heart of the creative fire. The Discourse The creative fire that I am is the flame of God, His Master Presence anchored in the heart of every one of God's children. While in some it is but a spark, yet with the right touch, that spark can be fanned into a creative fire and consuming flame. This mighty presence, God, in its myriad activities, is the omnipresent activity that all may use without limit, if they only will dismiss from their recognition the outer appearance, which is but an appearance, and take their attention away from that which has bound them through endless years. Today the scepter of power and authority stands in the atmosphere before the single eye of every advancing student. At first they may reach up mentally and take the scepter of authority, using it in this way until before they are scarcely aware of it they will find it tangible and visible in their use at times. It is no idle promise that those seeking the light may again receive this dominion. When we go through a footpath in the forest, we know may return to the same way if we wish, but we must make the decision. So after hundreds of years of search in the outer for power and authority, we find that anything that seems to be so is but a shifting sand, and tomorrow may be gone. By the rejoicing acceptance of your God dominion, you may step firmly upon the sure foundation of the rock of truth, which is God, and from which no outer disturbance can ever shake you, once you know from actual experience. Students of truth wonder why they cannot hold a firm anchor in their decision to hold fast to the God presence, which is their dominion. They do not analyze their outer expression to see what is lurking there to cause disturbance, question, and doubt 
but for those who will take the authority which is theirs and probe deep into their motives. It will be so easy to pluck out the tires from the golden grain, and soon be free from the disturbance that causes them to doubt themselves in the very presence of God which beats their heart. When students will be honest enough with themselves and their God, the I Am Presence, to pluck out by the roots anything that is causing disturbance within them, and be able to feel the mighty light and radiance of the great God Self, they will require little effort in loosing the great I Am Presence in love and intelligence, which is an ever-sustaining power and strength, assurance, or whatever they may need, in order to hold their feet firm upon the rock of truth, which is one of the great jewels in God's kingdom. Its dazzling radiance will unfold them upon the slightest invitation. O students of today, hold fast to this mighty presence which beats your hearts, whose life flows through your veins, whose energy flows through your mind. You have free will and can qualify and bless it to it your perfection or imperfection. Always remember that through your failure to turn to this mighty presence, by which you find you have created in harmony disorder, you must give yourselves ample time to gain the full recognition of this mighty power and give it full activity in your life. Do not become impatient because things do not work out as rapidly as you would like them to. They can only work according to the speed of your acceptance and the intensity of your feeling. The mighty energy that surges through your mind into your body is the pure electronic energy of God, the mighty I Am Presence. If your thought is joyously held upon your God Self as a source of your being in life, that pure electronic energy continues to act unabated, uncontaminated by human discordant qualification. But knowingly or unknowingly, if you let your thought begin to gather from the discord by which it is so often surrounded, you change the color and the quality of this radiant pure energy. It must act, and you are the one who shall choose how it shall act to you. Don't ever think that you can get away from this simple fact. It is an immutable law of God, and no human being can change it. Students must understand and maintain this attitude if they wish to make steady progress. I tell you, beloved students, you may rage and doubt and fear and rebel all you please at self-correction, but it is the open door to your mighty illumination and freedom from all limitation in the outer world of activity. There are a great many students, when they come to a certain point of understanding, where all the results of their activity are revealed to them, and they look upon the many mistakes that have been made which must be corrected, become despondent, critical, and condemnatory to themselves and God. This is a great mistake again. Everything that is revealed to them in which they find they have been making mistakes should make them rejoice exceedingly, that the things are revealed which need correcting. Knowing that God is the power to think, then they know they have the power to correct this and should joyfully set to work to do so. The power of God's life which beats their hearts is absolute proof that they have the intelligence and power of God within them by which they may dissolve and consume all the mistakes and discord and creation that they have consciously or unconsciously drawn about them. They may say to this undesirable creation, I am the mighty consuming flame that now and forever consumes all past and present mistakes, their cause and effect, and all undesirable creation for which my outer is responsible. It seems so strange that students seem to have such difficulty in fixing the anchorage and recognition of the limitless power they are wielding when they say, I am. When the intellect, which is the outer activity, knows this, then the student should intensify it with all their power by the intense feeling of the truth of this, then they would find greatly added speed and power in their active use. I tell you, dear students, you have come to a time when you can use this power with great authority to free yourself from the chain of limitation that have bound you so long. Set about it with joyous determination to put your house in order. If you are going to have a distinguished guest, I doubt not that you would spend days working earnestly, cleaning, washing, polishing, preparing for the guest. How much more important it is to prepare for this great prince of love and peace, the prince of consuming fire that dwells within you and controls the element of life. When one thinks of Oromasis, prince of the fiery element, it is the flame of creative fire within that it is calling to him for assistance in the quickening of this creative power, and brings results unimaginable. There has been no time in my memory when there was so much natural assistance at hand for the students of light 
for his use as there is at this time, and the student should take advantage of this with joyous intensity. When you speak in the name, power, and authority of the mighty I am, you are releasing limitless energy to do your bidding to fulfill your desire. Why longer allow doubt and fear to beset you when I am the open door which no man can shut into the great opulence of God, waiting, surging to press forward to heal, to bless, and to prosper you abundantly? Dare to be, to feel, to use this mighty authority, God, in you. Beloved students, do you not realize that you can express perfection by taking your determined stand with sufficient intensity that I am the mighty electronic energy flowing through, filling and renewing every cell of my mind and body right now? Do you not see with sufficient intensity of this, in a few minutes or hours you could dispel any disturbing condition in the mind or body and allow that mighty, pure energy to do its work, uncolored, unaffected by any discordant element in your own thought? You can renew any nerve, any organ, and build any member of the body into its perfection almost immediately. Oh, why not feel this, apply it, and as you begin to experience the remarkable results, your confidence will leap into its perfect activity, and your mind will have all confidence in its mighty presence and power and its omnipresent limitless use. When there is a seeming lack of energy, take your determined, joyous stand. I am the mighty presence of this alert, radiant energy surging through my mind and body, dismissing everything unlike itself. I take my stand in this alert, radiant energy and joy for all time. You can pass this pure energy through your mind and body as I would pass my hand down before you. At first, because you do not seem to feel any great magnetic electronic force pass over you, does not in any way indicate that you have not received this mighty energy which you have commanded with authority to flow through your mind and body. One may say the same thing to his affairs that may not be according to his desire for perfect expression. The student can stand and call forth the mighty presence of the I Am, send it forth into his business and world, command it to consume everything unlike itself, and replace all with the mighty perfection of God, which I Am, Command it to be self-sustained, and cause that perfection to manifest his unceasing authority and power, and cleanse his world in every discordant thing, for I am the supreme authority, God in action. One does not need to do this when any tension or the extent that he creates tension in the action of the body, but he can rise in the supremacy and dignity of the authority of God, and cleanse everything needing it. In doing this, one need not speak in a loud voice, but in a very low, masterful tone. Stand in the room by yourself and declare, I am master of my world. I am the victorious. Intelligence governing it, I send forth into my world this mighty, radiant, intelligent energy of God. I command it to create all perfection, to draw to me the opulence of God made visible in my hands and use. I am no longer the babe of Christ, but the master presence grown to full stature, and I speak in a command with authority. Thus one may consume the mistakes and imperfection he may have created, and in the authority of the I am, recreate immediately the perfection he desires. Know that it is constantly self-sustained, so long as you do not intrude upon it the discordant activity of your thought and feeling. I want so much to have you feel that you are the only authority in this world or any other so far as your world is concerned. Do not ever fear that the perfecting of your world is going to disfigure anyone else's world so long as your intent is not to harm anyone. It does not matter that the world about you says or how much they try to intrude upon their doubts, fears, and limitations. You are the supreme authority in your world, and all you have to do is to say, when you are beset by these conditions, I am the mighty, magic circle of protection about me that is invincible and repels from me every discordant thought and element which seeks to find entrance or intrude itself. I am the perfection of my world, and it is self-sustained. O oh, beloved ones, it is no longer necessary to wonder, waver, and question. I am the authority. Go on, dare to be, and use this authority of God which is expressing in the I am of everything. Why not be fearless, 
you have been wanting the presence of the great ascended ones. I am the visible presence of those greatly beloved ascended masters whom I wish to have appear here to me and whose assistance I desire. You have come to the point where you can dismiss all discord from your mind. Fill your minds with this pure electronic essence, and no discord can enter, so long as you keep it filled with this presence. I tell you again, you are the authority in your world, and if your thought is filled with this essence, then no discord will touch it. We are going to take this authority and use it, clear away all discord, and declare with no uncertainty, I am the supremacy of man. Everywhere I go, I am God in action. Benediction Mighty creative fire, we give praise and thanks for thy great omnipresence today, to heal, to bless, and to prosper everywhere. Enter into the hearts of mankind with thy creative presence and genius, and let the full divine justice of thy supremacy reign throughout the land in all official places. See that all authorities in the hands of thy trained and trusted messengers, that they may govern fully all governmental offices in America, and be ever divinely sustained, that America be healed, blessed, and forever prosper, that all sinister influence be consumed and forever repelled from within the borders of America. Discourse Notes The host of angels rejoice at the return of the wanderer who has come back home who has sought authority so long in the outer and find only husks. After his energy is wasted, he comes back home, and there is the fountain to recharge, rebuild him against all the discrepancies called old age. Thus you can stand forth renewed again in the fullness of youth and power, for such is the way of life, God's life. It keeps the most marvelous vibratory action expressing for each one to speak gently. It is perfectly wonderful if you could see the interaction of it. Let each one enter into the happiness and love of perfect obedience and liberate the great power of God. If one just lets go of the outer and enters into the inner, every discord lets go at once. Etheric Cities Over the principal deserts there are etheric cities. Over the Arizona desert is the etheric city in America. There is one over the Sahara and one over the Gobi. The one over Brazil is the etheric city for South America. Humanity should know and be made to realize it again, again and again. The inhabitants of cities pass out through so-called death and re-embody in that same place, because attachments have been formed and draw them back into the same environment again. The student who has to re-embody should take the command that, the next time I will be born into a family of great light. This would open the door to great speed in its progress. Discourse 5, October 17, 1932 St. Germain Invocation Thou mighty, infinite presence, Thou all-pervading, healing presence, Descend and do thy work. Thou mighty, infinite intelligence, Give forth thy confidence and strength. Fill the mind and body of each one With thy radiant presence. Fill every cell with thy radiant presence, Prove thy presence in thy conquering, mastering power. Mighty Master Presence within each one, come forth, erase this outer human self, and hold thy dominion now and forever. There is but one intelligence, presence, essence, and love, and this thou art. Pour forth thy radiance through these outer cloaks of flesh, and command thy perfection to thus be manifest and sustained. I bring you greetings from the great host, ever shedding their radiance and intelligence. Take the command. I am the pure electronic essence that fills my mind and body, and I broke nothing else. God in you is master of all conditions at all times. Say often, I am always the victorious presence of the mighty I am. Feel the mighty current of electronic essence fill your mind and body, erasing instantly all in harmonious activity, and giving you the consciousness of mastery and victory. Command. Divine Presence, pour thy radiance through this mind and body, and see that thy wisdom directs always in every outer activity. The Discourse Let us be conscious of the healing radiance filling this home. The great need today is the healing of the nations and of individuals. As the individual is given assistance through the outpouring of the electronic energy, through the mind and body and filling every cell, so in an expanded degree is the nation treated likewise. 
The nation is a great body of individuals and of nature's creations. We have the same power, being the individualized presence of God. Then we know I am everywhere present, and when my consciousness takes on this expansion, I know its energy leaps into action everywhere, in the cells of the body of the world as well as in the body of the individual. We must come to know that the active presence of God, all-powerful, is everywhere present, that there is not a single nook nor corner anywhere that the active presence of God is not, that this active presence seizes and binds all human creation and consumes instantly everything of an inharmonious and undesirable nature. With the use of the electronic belt surrounding the individual, he must understand that he can make this an absolutely invincible protection through its protection divine wisdom acts, repelling everything through our conscious actions that shall not be taken into the system, and that this omnipresent wisdom and intelligence is always prompting us to refuse acceptance of anything into the system, either through feeling, thought, or food that would in any wise disturb its harmonious activity. The natural activity of the currents of life play everywhere like the play of a searchlight. The outer activity should at all times be an invitation to the receptivity of the currents of life, which are pure cosmic energy, and which are ever flowing through the atmosphere of the earth. It is true that where there are conditions too dense for it to penetrate, it goes over or under them, so to speak, and finds its way onward just the same. Every individual since the beginning of this year should come to understand that he is walking and moving constantly within the reach of mighty healing currents. Through the power of Cyclopeia, the secret love star, and the rays from the Golden City, currents of healing force of tremendous power are constantly directed through the atmosphere of Earth. These, you will understand by their very nature, being the energy of God in action, are therefore self-sustained. The consciousness in the individual of their presence will enable him to contact these rays at any time. Students who have a feeling of patriotism and who wish to help the nation should take the stand that these healing currents reach not only individuals, but carry into conditions, environment, and official places like an intelligent flame, and are doing a work for the protection and uplift of the children of Earth not heretofore set into such powerful actions since the creation of this planet. The more individuals become truly and sincerely conscious of this operation, the more can they become mighty messengers of assistance in this most unusual work. Through the conscious manifestation of the mental forces back of the communist is the sinister influence with which we are dealing in the outer world's activity. Those who wish to be true messengers will meditate upon this idea until they have grasped the full import of it. They will use their conscious effort knowing that these currents of consuming electronic energy consciously directed through the atmosphere of the earth cannot be interfered with, and that in every sincere, conscious effort of the individual, in his desire to give his assistance, there will flow a consciousness of this energy that he has not hitherto possessed. Sometimes there are individuals of such a nature that while wonderfully kind and willing, the sudden consciousness they need to let go of certain kinds of food or other activity is a sort of shock to them. I would say to these individuals that the divine intelligence in each one will cause them to naturally let go of the things not in accordance with his great presence at every step of the way when it is necessary. In order for an individual to consciously let go of a thing, he must have something that he feels is stronger to which he can anchor. As students become conscious of this, the confidence and strength will come to them to take the step. As I suggested once before, I would consciously at least once or more a day stand on the floor and charge the home with this pure electronic energy and keep it charged so that God's very presence will keep out of the home food, thought, any kind of presence and everything that is not in accordance with the desires here. I would suggest that whenever you find someone is coming you take the consciousness I am the pure radiance of divine love enfolding these individuals and this garment enfolds them when they come and when they leave. When you are conscious of this you clothe them, and they will wear this garment into the home and out of it, and for them it will be a sustaining power. Those who come into your home are deserving of assistance, and this will enable them to receive the full assistance they desire and you will love to give. 
No matter how great the knowledge attained, we at no time ever have the right to force either the knowledge or the discipline upon anyone. Only as students apply what they hear and receive can they ever know the reality. When you say, I am, you acknowledge the power that breaks down all barriers and conditions of opposition. This human self is just like a starving lion in the jungle. It will tear anything to get what it wants to eat. In this state, the human consciousness will tear its best friend to pieces to get its own way. In any astral element, there is that human desire element through which, unless one shuts his mind entirely to the astral world, will constantly find himself interrupted in a good decision. Because he has left that door open to a force far more subtle than is ever found in the outer world. Many think they are good forces in the astral world. I tell you, no good force ever comes from the astral world. Any good force that seems to come from there must come through it, but it makes its own tunnel of light through which it comes. In the first place, what makes the astral world? There is only one place where the undesirable creation can find a home, and that is the next step to the human activity, which is the astral realm. This realm of astral activity has within it all undesirable creation accumulated through the centuries. Therefore, it is easy to see at once that no good comes from any contact with the astral realm. It has nothing in it whatsoever of the Christ. There is as wide a difference between the astral realm of activity and what some call the star astral as there is in between light and darkness. However, the so-called star astral is again misunderstood. It is not really called star astria. It really is an activity, not a realm and it is from the fourth sphere. The star Astria is a cosmic being whose work it is to consume all possible within the astral realm, and to reach individual whose attention seems to be drawn there. This great being will sooner or later clear the understanding of such individuals and consume their desire for any contact with that unhappy realm. No little children remain in the astral realm. The home of children who leave the earth is in the etheric realm. People who are in the body are in the same sphere when they sleep as the disembodied. There is a sustaining consciousness of the I Am Presence, which, if one goes forth with it on going to sleep, through that sustaining power one can reach unbelievable heights. If you have the consciousness through the outer expression of this I Am Presence, and you take this consciousness with you as you go into the other realms, it is a sustaining presence that is unbelievable. There is an activity in the experienced life that demands the conscious recognition and use of the I Am Presence, of God in action. When you take that conscience with you through the veil of sleep, the soul is able to function out of the body with almost limitless power. Suppose there is a seeming need in the physical activity. Before going to sleep we can say this, Through the mighty power and intelligence which I am, I go forth while my body sleeps make conscious contact with, and abundantly fulfill this requirement, no matter what it is. Knowing that this activity is self-sustained, it cannot fail in any way. It is a mighty way of setting into motion the I Am Presence. Whatever the I Am commands while the body sleeps must be obeyed. I knew of one instance of this kind when there was need of protection. The one using it had a certain consciousness of this presence. The individual was falling over a cliff, and this I Am Presence instantly built up a form, caught the individual, and took him back to safety. When one enters the conscious path and goes into any environment where there might be danger, one should always do some quick, definite work on his protection. For until one raises the body, he is always functioning more or less where he is contacting the outer thought of humanity. If the student be climbing the mountains, he must do con conscious protective work. He must do the protective work and do it consciously. If the student will always keep up his conscious protection, he will be able to avoid the destruction of other individuals. Steamship Protection God is the almighty power protecting and directing the steamship, therefore it moves in a zone of absolute safety. On the conscious path, you must be up in an action at all time. There are some who might think this is a suggestion of fear, but it is not. It is recognition of the omnipresent protective power. Automobiles God is all-seeing and all-knowing. 
sees ahead and will naturally avoid undesirable contact. When you say, God is driving this car, the vision of God goes ahead, sees blocks and miles ahead, and the prompting will come to go to the street which is clear. Because God is driving the car, our path is unobstructed in every way. There are two reasons why students have accidents. First, because they have become angry and opened the door. Second, because the student has lain down on the job. Whenever we do a thing with a positive, dynamic attitude, it gives confidence to the outer and it cannot fail. To project an electronic belt around another, say, I am the protective electronic belt around. And when you say, I am the protective ring or belt, it means that the electronic belt is instantly formed, invincible. Realize that when you say, I am, whatever is commanded is all powerfully, instantly done. You cannot use the I am presence without having instantaneous activity. Often say, I am the omnipresent, all-powerful protected intelligence governing this mind and body. It is instantly omnipresent there in action when you say I am. The I am, which is everywhere present, is at that point doing the work that moment. This is the way you set into action by the most direct means, the all-powerful action of the I am, which is all in all. Constantly remind the outer consciousness that when you say, I am, you have set into action all the attributes of the Godhead. You are now at a point when you should have instantaneous activity. When you say, I am, in any condition, it means that instant action is taking place there by the greatest power in the universe. The moment you become conscious that I am is the full activity of God, containing all the attributes of the Godhead, you do that moment have the full use of this mighty power. Use often, I am the presence producing this master home. Get the consciousness of the mighty presence you are calling forth when you are using that I am. I have always loved to specify what I wanted to do. If I want health in my body, I say, I am the presence charging this body with pure electronic energy. When you say, I am the ascension of this physical body right now, then you have accepted and entered into that action right now. When you are striving for the light in unlimited action, you are striving for the greatest thing in the world. Fill your world with the presence which I am, and when you do this, feel you are doing it consciously. If one will take the consciousness, I am, the perfect activity of every organ and cell of my body, then it must manifest. You have but to be conscious of this, and it must be. Use often. I am perfect health now manifest in every organ of my body. Put your confidence in your I am instead of some thing. Suppose you want great intelligent activity. Say, I am the perfect intelligent activity in this body. You cannot do this looking to something outside. To clear the mind, eyes, and ears... I am the perfect intelligence active in this brain. I am the perfect sight looking through these eyes. I am the perfect hearing through these ears. Go at these treatments with determination and they cannot fail. You have the reins, now use them. Avoid all use of words that seem to be a reminder of limited conditions. When you are conscious of the I am, you don't care what any the world does. You must not be concerned about anything but your world. For squaring the circle, use the I am activity. Pay no attention to what anyone says. Just say specifically what you want to produce. Say again and again, I am the only presence acting in this. Say, I am the only presence acting in my world. For finding things, I am the intelligence and all-seeing eye which finds this. You will be amazed at the feeling it grows within when you do not have to look to anything but the I Am. Wipe out of your mind everything but the conscious operation of the I Am, for it is the most potent power possible. Get the sense of ease about producing these seeming miracles. Suppose you want to illumine a room, say, I am the illumination of this room. Then you act upon the electrons in this room. The illuminating of the atmosphere of the room is as easy as raising your hand. Your ability to illumine a room is just as easy as physically illuminated through the electric lamp. 
you can just as easily plug into the universal current of electricity as through the wires. To make visible the illumination within your own body, say, I am the visible illumination through this body now. Right within yourself is a focal point. The I am in you created everything in the universe. When you enter into the confidence of the I am, it will soon do away with all obstructions. Use often. I am the consuming power and presence of every bit of fear, doubt, and questioning in my outer activity concerning this invincible activity of the I am. Keep this up, and you will always know instantly what to do. You can take this and use it, and thus remove every obstacle to the I am activity. When you operate consciously, you know positively it is done. The consciousness of an individual clothes the form with that individual's own concepts of it. When these are drawn about an individual who has generated a certain energy, they impose upon him nothing but the things of his own world. Whenever you feel a sudden joy impulse, grasp it, use it, and decree. Benediction Thou mighty, infinite intelligence, we give praise and thanks for thy mighty comprehension and mighty manifestation the consciousness of those presents. We give praise and thanks that I am the perfect understanding and operation, and that I am everywhere present, performing all required to be done. I am the illumination of everyone who looks to me. I am the radiant, intelligent activity in the minds of all mankind. I am the master acting in the brain of everyone on humanity, causing divine love, justice, peace, harmony, and perfection to manifest to our beloved America. Discourse 6, October 20th, 1932. St. Germain. Invocation. Thou mighty, infinite presence, creator of all that is, always majestic in thy conquering presence, we give power only to thee. We forever withdraw all power we have ever given to outer things, and stand serene in thy majestic presence, love, wisdom, and power, knowing that I am here, and I am there, and I am everywhere. Then I am serene in thy mystic presence, manifesting thy love, wisdom, power, and judgment, that I have thy foresight and see far beyond human possibilities. I give praise and thanks that I, now and forever, Acknowledge and accept only thy mighty, victorious presence in all things, in my life, my world, my mind, and my body. I give praise that I have placed above each form thy magic circle, invincible, impenetrable to anything unlike thee. I stand guard over my life, body, mind, world, and affair, that nothing manifest unlike thee. We thank thee. The Discourse Keep reminding the outer activity, the outer consciousness, that when I say, I, I am, using the infinite God power, when I say I am, I have set this power into motion to successfully accomplish whatever the idea is which has been held in consciousness. Sincere students should not forget this for a single hour until the truth becomes so fixed in the outer activity that it automatically acts. Therefore, you will see how perfectly ridiculous it is to say, I am sick, I am financially embarrassed, or that there seems to be a lack of anything. I tell you that you cannot possibly be affected if you will hold fast to this idea, then use it. When you seem to have a cold, you do not need to be told to use a handkerchief. Then why do you need to be reminded that the outer activity is but one power by which to move itself about, and that is the I am presence, God in you? The unfortunate thing about sincere students is that they will not meditate often enough upon this truth for its marvelous presence to come into activity. Know that I am the majestic, victorious presence filling all official places, and know it with certainty in your mind. If any of the students will sincerely take hold and use this, such a one will be blessed for doing so. Guard yourself in the outer contact constantly that you do not unknowingly accept the appearance of things or the fear of a so-called financiers. God governs your world, your home, your business, and that is all with which you are concerned. Do not ever fear that you are running amok with your imagination when you sense and feel the nearness of the full manifestation of the mighty, individualized presence. 
Rejoice. Believe in the mighty presence that's hold in its embrace everything in this world that you can desire or use. You are not dependent on the other things. With the joys entering into this mighty power and presence which contains all, do you not see how you would be provided for if everything were cut loose? I want you to feel, joyously accept, and with all your being know that the power of precipitation is no myth. It is real. Those who enter into this feeling deep enough will have the precipitation of anything they want. Children have been chastised for seeing angelic beings and for manifesting an inner perception. It is the parent of that child who should be chastised, and well at that, for daring to interfere with the God-given freedom of that child. If grown-ups would live more in the conscious imagining and acceptance of these mighty and great presences, of whose very existence most of humanity doubts, they would feel their presence in uplifting, sustaining intelligence. My beloved ones, if suddenly we find ourselves needing courage or strength, I am there surging forth, supplying this instantly. If I need harmony in my mind or body, then I am there, supplying it instantly, and I do not need to wait. Do not give a thought to the world or individuals who do not understand these things. Go right on rejoicing in the visible, active presence precipitated into your life and use on whatever you wish. Our outer common sense, so-called, must tell us that unless we expect, accept, and rejoice in the presence of a thing we want, how in the name of God can we expect to have it? The poor, insignificant outer self struts itself about saying, I am too important to give attention to these childlike fairy stories. Well, let me say to you that one day the individuals who say this will only be too glad to listen to those fairy stories and fill their minds with those ideas that they may come forth. In every instance in the outer contact of the world of business, whenever there is a negative condition that seems to touch your world in any way, instantly take your firm stand. I am the precipitation and visible presence of whatever I desire, and no man can interfere with it. This is a mighty truth. When I speak of precipitation in this manner, I do not only mean through the invisible, but through any channel, for all is a precipitation, it is only a little different in activity. When I recognize who I am, then I have entered into the great silence, wherein is God's greatest activity. This recognition should bring great revelation to the individual, if he holds to it with joyous acceptance. In your outer experience, the use of any activity develops your strength to greater and greater efficiency, does it not? If one can apply this in the outer activity, do you not see how much more important it is in the inner activity? The more you put it into use, the greater the power you put into it. No, you can do it with the inner spiritual things far greater and quicker than in the outer things, for with spirit the power acts instantly. There is no waiting when the I am acts. The fact that you give credence to development of the muscular system by use should make you realize that the same effort given to the exercise and recognition of the inner power would naturally produce far greater results. For instance, man is supposed to perform certain physical exercise in order to develop his muscles. I have, in my students, many, many times, enabled them to produce powerful muscles in a symmetrical, beautiful body without having taken a single exercise to do it. It is the same with the exercise of your inner faculties in bringing forth the inner power. In all development, either of the inner or the outer, the first part of the exercise is mental. Here we must know that there is only one power and energy to use, and that is from the great I am presence in you. Therefore the exercise of your inner faculties is necessarily mental, called mental, but I say to you, it is God in action, because you cannot form a thought without the intelligence and energy of God to do it. Therefore your mental activity is the energy of God in action. Now, you see how easy and possible it is to make a strong physical body without lifting your hand in physical exercise to do it. Most scientific, medical, and men of physical culture will deny this, but I assure you it is only because you have not become aware of or thought deeply upon the energy or power that is acting, because no kind of activity can take place except by the use of this inner energy and power. Individuals allow the impingement of doubts and fears 
to rush in and overwhelm them when it comes to the recognition of these great faculties, which are free for their use at any time. You see, they are but submerged, as it were, by the outer, like a cork that has been pushed beneath the water, which then, released by little effort, pops up to the surface into use. I must say it is positively pitiful when earnest students spend so many years straining at intervals to gain the use of these faculties, and then, because they do not operate immediately, relapse into a state of inactivity until something spurs them on, and then relapse again. Persistent, determined recognition of this I am presence will take you through anything to absolute certain accomplishment unless you lie down on a job. I see, and especially at this time, a goodly number of individuals who, with a little encouragement and description of the simple use of these faculties, will quickly leap into their freedom, and especially those who have this verbal instruction and the radiation that goes with it. Is it not appalling that sons and daughters of God will submit to the binding claims of limitation when, with persistent effort and termination, they would open a door and step through into this inner great chamber, filled with such dazzling light, jewels, gold, and substance, from which every kind of food in the universe could ever be precipitated? Then, with this truth plainly before them, these individuals still hesitate, through unbelief to step through, take this scepter and be free. Beloved ones, again I say to you, sing the great melody of the I Am, conquering presence. Sing it in your hearts continuously. Feel it with all your ability. Be determined to use it. Hold fast to the determination and the knowledge, and the way will steadily open to give you the mastery which is your eternal freedom. Just keep joyously knowing that you are through the veil now. Whatever mastery the individual has gained over himself, his affairs of the world, is always and should be a sacred chamber, an inner sanctuary upon which no other inquiring individual may intrude. No one may attain mastery through the desire of the outer to find the mastery within another. To seek, find, and apply the law of one's own being is the student's sure road to mastery. And only when the individual has attained it himself may he really understand what true mastery is. There is only one mastery to be sought, and that is over one's own outer self. One might walk beside a master for years and not discover until his own inner faculties reveal the fact. One might live in the same house with a master for years and not know it until some crisis arose to be handled, and thus the real power be revealed. For a master to discuss or disclose to his own attainment of mastery would be to dissipate his own forces, and may not be done at any time. If a student be fortunate enough to have a beautiful experience and to discuss it with others, there is usually so much doubt poured at him that he can soon begin to doubt himself. It is really funny how convincing someone else's argument can be. If a student will listen to the argument of someone else, why not be at least as fair to his own God-self and listen to its power and good as expressed through the inner experience? The moment doubt begins to enter, more doubt rushes in. The same with the I Am. If you put your attention upon it, it rushes forth more and more. Where the conscious attention is fixed, there the energy pours. Dear ones, do you not see, when you want something revealed, or to be inspired in some way, do you not see, I am that? The moment you say, I am, you set in motion this power that is inherent within it, all these faculties. It is all substance and must take on whatsoever form the attention of the mind is fixed upon. The I am is the fathomless mind of God. In reaching for understanding, the average student is but contacting the recurring memory of that which has been, instead of going into the heart of God and bringing forth that which never has been. Individuals and students many times do not and will not realize that there have been many civilizations of vast attainments which are entirely unknown to the outer world today. Atlantis, Lemuria, or the land of Mu, as credited by a few today, are but fragments of the great civilizations that have been. To do unusual things, the students who wish to do this take the determined stand. I am the heart of God, and I now bring forth ideas and accomplishments which have never been brought forth before. Consider only the I am, that which I wish to bring forth. The I am presence is the heart of God, you are immediately in the great silence. 
the moment you say I am, if you recognize that you are the I am, then whatever you declare is manifest that moment. To believe is to have faith a thing is true. There is an interlocking of belief and faith. In the beginning a thing is a belief, and if held to it becomes faith. If you do not believe a thing is true, you cannot bring it into manifestation. If you do not believe I am a thing, how can it act for you? The old saying, There is nothing good or bad, but thinking makes it so, is an absolute truth. When you know that God's energy comes forth into the individual absolutely pure and perfect, then you must realize that it is the individual who requalifies that energy and imposes his own impure quality upon it. This pure God energy is protected forth by the conscious effort of the individual, and he must impose some kind of quality upon it, for that is his privilege as a creator. Everyone is constantly qualifying this energy, which is pouring forth continually. Each one is continually pouring his color into it, through his own consciousness. Every activity of the outer that qualifies carries with it the inherent faculty of sound and color. No activity of any kind can take place which is not sound and color inherent with it. God's perfection naturally has no discoloration within it. Within the outer faculty which gives quality to a thing is where the discoloration takes place. Every student must take the responsibility of his own activity in qualifying the energy he sends forth. The mind cannot act upon anything that is not intelligent inherent within it. Do not allow yourself in the human sense to consider the element of time in anything you do, but enter into a thing joyously and stick to it until it does manifest. Be like a blowtorch. If you will hold steady on the mighty God presence as the actor doing the thing, you will enter into the fullness and perfection of everything ready for your new now. All permanent accomplishments must be the self-conscious effort of the individual. Question. What is sympathy? Answer. It is but agreement with imperfection. Whatever you do, be adamant before human sympathy. Watch that you do not allow yourself to be dragged down into quickstand when you can use wings to lift yourself above its destruction. Judge not, but keep joyously entering into the I Am Presence, and all things will manifest perfectly. For any imperfect condition, especially old age, use I Am the perfection of that individual. No matter what is said in the outer world, you must be unaffected by it, for you are coming to this perfection, and you must bring it about consciously. If you do not watch, you can let in an expression in a moment that can follow you for years if you do not erase it. When you are consciously using the great law, know that the active power of God's thought knows its direction, goes, and performs perfectly. Consciously charge the I am intelligence to use whatever is necessary. Say, I am intelligence. Qualify this with whatever is required. For healing, I had one student who was so qualified the electronic circle about him with the power of healing that he was called the healing shadow. Of course it was not the shadow that healed, but the moment people contacted this electronic circle, they were healed instantly. Question. Understanding God is love. Why did God individualize himself? Answer. In order to have something to love. Question. Why were the rays divided? Answer. In order to express love. Love is the active principle of God. When you are loving, you are enfolding what you are loving in that robe of God, that radiant presence and activity. Never condemn. Try always to understand whenever there seems to be a wrong sex activity and lift the consciousness of the individual by focusing the attention upon a high ideal of some kind in order to control the thought, so the sex activity can come under conscious control of the individual through the use of his own will. The proper, clean use of the sex is for the expansion and expression of love in the procreation of a form, that the incoming soul may have a harmonious and loving disposition and temperament. The thought and feeding of the parents are the influencing molding activity. The nature of the life principle of the individual is to love. Benediction Infinite God of love, we give thanks for thy gracious outpouring today, for thy mighty radiance filling all things everywhere. 
We give praise and thanks that we have entered into thy world where everything is so fair, where thy radiance, creative with every thought, brings into perfection all things held within our thought. Notes Raising the Body Nada raised her body 2,700 years ago. In the case of three raising the body at one time, they might ascend at the same moment or within a few weeks or months. Controlling an animal. Use, I am here and I am there, and I command silence there. Also look the animal in the eye and know that the love of God controls it. The difference between divine compassion and human sympathy is as great as that between light and darkness. Divine compassion holds the student's attention anchored to the mighty I am presence, calling it forth to produce perfection. Human sympathy is a rushing forth of energy qualified by a feeling of imperfection and but intensifies the imperfection already manifesting. Discourse 7, October 24, 1932 St. Germain Invocation Thou mighty silent watcher, even as thou hast before thee the cosmic crystal, send forth thy rays, anchoring them in the hearts of God's children. Teach them obedience to the great cosmic laws. Teach them obedience to the light. Fill their hearts and minds with thy peace, with thy silence, with thy poise. Let the rejoicing of thy heart fill their hearts, every one, even to overflowing, with thy substance and pure electronic force that brings with it the immeasurable, infinite blessing. Let each one feel thy omnipresent, watchful care, thy sustaining love, wisdom, and power. The Discourse I bring you greeting from the great host of light who watch attentively the outpouring of divine radiance, whose great love, peace, and light always enfold you, as messengers of the light, giving always strict obedience to the great light. Obedience of all manifestation is the first demand of the great host. When the command went forth, let there be light, obedience was the first activity. Consequently, limitless light was at hand. It is so with all outer activity of the one active principle, God. The first activity of the outer should be to give perfect obedience to that inner presence. Thus is it enabled to receive harmoniously the unadulterated pure essence, and so it should be with friends, with relatives, with associates, and with all outer contact of individuals. There should always be this wondrous grace of love, light, and obedience. It matters not the age of the individual, still the outer expression often for its need is obedience to the great inner light. When the impulse surges forth to argue, criticize, or feel a resistance, it is your signal that the outer is intruding itself to demand attention. Then is the time, by the power of your free will, to command the outer to be silent and obey the I Am Presence. It is useless to argue any point. Silence the outer, and then, in loving obedience, give the instruction. In this way it can come forth unobstructed. When students have entered the conscious path, the slightest intimation of disturbance or resistance of any kind should be followed instantly by silencing all outer activity and declaring, I am the obedient, intelligent activity in this mind and body. I am the governing power and do govern it harmoniously. It matters not upon what plane or in what sphere of activity the Son of God, that is, the Son or Daughter of God, acts, obedience to its laws, or the divine law of the sphere in which he is acting, is always imperative to his steady onward progress. Some day, I hope in a near future, we shall take up for consideration the elements of outer activity which are most disturbing, and the effect of their activity upon the body. I do not wish to do this, however, until the students are strong enough to hear the truth of this activity without a single twinge of resistance or self-condemnation, because to start an activity within the individual of either condition would be a mistake upon my part. I spoke some time ago about the student keeping on guard to watch that in an unguarded moment he did not find himself unknowingly entertaining some feeling of resistance, criticism, or some activity which he later discovered had been acting. Every student should constantly use, many times a day, for it only requires a minute and silently declare, I am the invincible guard, established, sustained, and maintained over my mind, my body, my home, my world, and my affairs. Keep conscious that this guard, being the I am presence, naturally has infinite intelligence. 
This will establish an intelligent garden activity about you that does not have to be constantly repeated. Again, we come to a point where every time we use the expression I or I am, we know that it is the full power of love, wisdom, and intelligence acting. Use frequently, I am the full liberation of divine love acting. Now, as a preparatory activity for the day, I would suggest that the students, with great joy and firmness, after having refreshed themselves in the morning, would silently declare, knowing that the power of the declaration is self-sustained, I am the governing love, wisdom, and power with its attendant intelligent activity, which is acting today in every single thing that I think or do. I command this infinite activity to take place every moment and be the sustaining guard about me that I move, speak, and act only in divine order. Then, during the day, whenever you think of it, take the firm consciousness. I am the commanding, governing presence, moving everywhere before me during the day, commanding perfect peace and harmony in all activity. In this manner, you will lock the door open for the continuous outpouring of this inner intelligent presence, which will transform your world and keep you from contacting in harmony of any kind, enabling you to have that steady flow of inner peace and harmony in all outer contact. It matters not what the manifestations may be within the body or without. The student must take his firm stand that his body is the temple of the Most High Living God. This is an unquestionable truth, and this attitude consciously maintained will more rapidly bring the body into a perfect activity which was intended from the beginning. I say to the students in all sincerity, there is no possible way of attaining a quality or a desired attribute without claiming it. The outer has drifted into a limited consciousness of declaring it and did not have the desired quality, and of course it could not manifest it under those conditions. The thought of the student often is, well, I have been holding this idea for a long time, but it doesn't manifest, it doesn't work. This is positive proof that somewhere in the consciousness there was lurking a doubt possibly unknown to the individual. I tell you that no matter what appears on the surface, if you will continually, with firm determination, claim the quality, condition, or things you desire, and go right on claiming them with a firm determination, you will find expression in your use just as certain as you do this. But I cannot urge you too strongly always to keep on guard in this matter. For the outer, when you have tried a thing for a few hours, days, or months, and it seems not to have appeared immediately, begins to say, Oh, it's no use. If it were going to have acted, it would have done by this time. Such a thing as failure is absolutely impossible when you have set the power of the I am, God in you, in action to accomplish a given purpose, if you hold unwaveringly to it with determination. Many times I have seen students nearing wonderful achievement, wonderful victory and freedom, and this outer attitude of not yet being accomplished would rush in, get their attention to such an extent that it would either retard greatly their progress or shut the door indefinitely. The student should compel herself or himself to hold before the mind this truth, that when the I am power and presence is set in motion, it can no more fail in its accomplishment than the universe stop its activity. For this mighty I am presence to fail in its accomplishment would mean that the universe would instantly be thrown into chaos. Such is the certainty and power of the I am accomplishment. It simply cannot fail unless the outer obstructs the way. Every student should guard with great watchfulness that he does not use the I am in negative expression. For when you say, I am sick, I have failed, I am not accomplishing this thing that I should, you are throwing this mighty energy into action to destroy the thing you wish to accomplish. This always happens whenever you use the word I, for that is the release of the universal power. Knowing that the I am is you, then when you say, my head aches, my stomach is out of order, my intestinal tract is disturbed, you are throwing the energy into those parts to act according to the thing you have decreed. For when you say my, it is the same energy acting because there is only one person who can say I or my, and that is you, decreeing for your world. Any expression which can only be used for yourself is including the energy and activity of the I am presence. The correct attitude to take, and some organ seems to be rebellious, is to instantly declare and hold fast that, I am the only and perfect energy acting there. Therefore, every appearance of disturbance is instantly corrected. This is the important point to keep before the student. If, through habit, you have thought that certain remedial agencies gave assistance, 
Then use these sparingly until you gain sufficient mastery to govern entirely by your I am presence. I assure you that even though you think that this remedial agent has given you relief, it is still the same I am presence that has given the remedial agency the power to give you relief. For instance, I have watched the medical world for many centuries, and when one individual or so-called authority says that a certain remedy is no longer of use, it is but a short time until it disappears entirely. The question within the mind of all thinking individuals is that certain herbs or remedial agencies have a certain natural chemical action corresponding to the element within the body. I say to you, what gives or makes the chemical affinity? The power of your I am which enables you to think. Thus, when you come to go around the circle of activity, you will find that there is only one intelligence and presence acting, and that is the I am, God in you. Now, why not look this truth square in the face? Take your stand unwaveringly with the I am presence, God in action in you, and know that it is the only life in you and all things or remedies to which you alone give power. Is it not much better to go directly to this great I am presence and receive its all-powerful, limitless assistance, which cannot fail, than to give power to something that leads you around Robin Hood's barn to get assistance from something in the outer to which you have given the power? I know it is not easy for students to turn away from old, old habits or dependence upon certain remedial agencies, but a little thought and meditation upon this fact will simply compel the outer reason and dependence upon these outer things to give away completely before the great I am presence. There is no way of convincing the student upon this most vital of questions, except he apply the wisdom and knowledge with unwavering determination until he proves for himself the active truth of this simple thing. There is no one who can tell to you what degree the student can apply this, for only he alone, by trying, may know. Many times the inner accumulated energy is such that the student is amazed with the results when he begins to apply this. The oriental phrase for I am is OM. That means the same thing that I am is beginning to mean to the Western world. For myself, I like very much the use of the I am because its very expression indicates God in action in the individual. OM, as understood by the orientals, is a universal presence and not nearly so apt to give the student the consciousness of the I am presence acting in the individual as the use of I am. This largely explains the reason for the condition in India today. Hundreds of thousands in India, through the confusion of many castes, have fallen into the air that the intonation of Om was all that was required in their lives. While this brings a certain activity in hundreds of thousands of cases, it does not bring the energy of that activity into the individual's action, and so is of little benefit. The method of the Ascended Masters throughout the ages from time immemorial has been the conscious use of the I Am Presence, the recognition and full acceptance of God in action in the individual, which more or more brings into the individual the full intelligent activity of the God Presence, the Godhead. Those Orientals who have reached great attainment, which many of them have, have become aware of this true activity through their sincere meditation. Perhaps the simplest, most powerful single thing that the individual can keep himself reminded of is that when he says, I am, he is knowingly or unknowingly setting into action within himself the full, unadulterated energy of God. Energy becomes power through conscious use. The fact that the individuals are in human embodiment is the command to raise the world of the individual into perfect activity. When the consciousness of the individual is raised, everything in the world of that individual is raised into the inner activity. O Mani Padni Hum really means God in activation in the individual. Use the I am instead of Om at all times, because many of you have been embodied in an Indian embodiment. At one time you knew that use, and to prevent it calling forth a lesser use, use the I am now to take you to the full height. Whenever you say I am, you are setting the pure energy of God into motion, uncolored by human concepts. This is the only way of keeping the pure energy of God uncontaminated by human qualification. Enormous results can be had in a short time by the determined use of these affirmations. I am this pure inspiration. I am this pure light right here in action, and visualize this through the body now. I am this pure revelation of everything I want to know. 
hold the reins of power forever within yourself. People are afraid of just embracing the great God power and letting it operate. What is there to fear in God? Its operation is pure and perfect. And if you do not reach out to embrace the great pure God power, how can you expect to use it and have perfection? You must claim it for your own. To say, I am, the ascended being I wish to be now, immediately enfolds the outer in that raising presence. I am my eternal liberation, now from all human imperfection. Realize who I am is. You have to use terms of explanation up to a certain point. Know that this body is the temple of the living God and is ascended now. The human side is such a doubting, criticizing Thomas. All instruction is but to give the individual student a chance to prove it within himself by applying and using the explanation of the law given. Say often, I am the governing power of this activity, and therefore it is always normal. There is no human being in the universe who can recognize this I am presence for another. In your recognition of this I am presence as who you are, every step you gain is a permanent accomplishment, and there can be no retrogression. Benediction Thou infinite, all-pervading presence, whose active intelligence governs all who look unto thee, fill each one who seeks a light with thy mighty inner light, hold each one closer and closer in the great I am presence, that it fills the world of every one with thy great, great perfection, and that the consciousness of each individual desires only the great, great presence and perfection. Discourse Notes all jewels are a high activity of God's substance. The more intense the fire, the greater the purifying power. Gold is not long for nor adhere to anything else. All other metals or alloys cling to it. Gold is this way because it is of a pure element. In all kinds of fuel activity there are at some point a golden flame. All consuming of outer substance at some point is always red, for the red color is throwing off the imperfection and purity. If the impurity were not there, the substance would go from the outer immediately into the golden flame. Discourse 8, October 27, 1932 St. Germain Invocation Thou mighty, all-pervading presence, Thou all-pervading I am, we give praise and thanks for the happiness pervading those under this radiation. We give praise and thanks that the simple key to perfect happiness may be given to bless and to anchor these children of God into their own firm dominion. We give praise for the harmony maintained within each student, and that they feel the necessity to continue it. We give praise that I am everywhere present, controlling every outer activity and bringing it into perfection. I bring greetings to you always. The Discourse That which everyone seeks is happiness, sometimes called bliss, and yet many who have sought so earnestly have unknowingly continued to pass by the key to this happiness. The simple key to perfect happiness, and its inherent sustaining power, is self-control and self-correction. This is so easy to accomplish when one has learned he is the I Am Presence, an intelligence controlling and commanding all things. Surrounding each individual is a thought world created by him or her. Within this thought world is a seed, the Divine Presence, the I Am, which is the only acting presence there is in the universe, and which directs all energy. This energy can be intensified beyond any limit through the conscious activity of the individual. The divine presence within is likened unto the pit or seed of the peach, the thought world around it unto the pulp of the peach. The pulp represents not only the thought world created by the individual, but also the universal electronic substance ever present, waiting to be acted upon by the conscious determination of the individual to be precipitated into his visible use as the form of whatsoever he may desire. The sure pathway to the understanding and use of this conscious power comes through self-control. What do I mean by self-control? First, the recognition of the I am intelligence as the only acting presence. Second, that knowingness, we know there is no limit to the power and its use. Third, that individuals, having been given free will and choice, do create in the world about them whatsoever they thought through their attention is held firmly upon. The time has arrived when all must understand that thought and feeling are the only and mightiest creative power in life or in the universe. Thus the only way to definite use of the full power of one's thought and feeling 
which is God in action, is through self-control, self-correction, by which one may quickly reach the attainment, the understanding whereby he may direct and use his creative thought power without any limit whatsoever. When sufficient self-control is attained, it enables individuals to hold the thought steady upon a given desire, likened unto the flame of an acetylene torch held immovable. Thus thought and feeling held upon a given desire unwaveringly, with the consciousness that it is the I am presence and intelligence thinking, that it is God in action, then will they understand that they may bring indivisibility, precipitate indivisibility whatsoever they desire. It has been proved in a thousand ways that the effect of a thing cannot bring happiness. Only by the understanding of the cause operating may the individual become master of this world. Each individual, knowing that he is the creator of his own world and what he wishes to have manifest in it, will understand that he has at no time any right to create anything discordant in another's world. Thus is each individual left free to meet the effect of his own creative cause. I rejoice exceedingly to see the success with which each student under this radiation is coming into the mastery and control of the other self. Here I must say to them, Beloved students, could you but understand and see the magnificent splendor of achievement before you through asserting self-control over the outer activity, you would bend every effort, every moment to attaining control and mastery over all outer expression. Thus will you be enabled to maintain the needed harmony through which the inner mighty power of the I Am Presence is liberated into your conscious and visible use. Let us disabuse the minds of these beloved students of the sense of time, distance, and space, the key which opens the entrance to all higher spheres above you lies in the simplicity and firmness of this self-control. All students should dwell earnestly upon the great truth that, where your consciousness is, there you are, for I am everywhere. Long dwelling in consciousness that there was space, great distance, or there is time, is all but the outer creation of man. Therefore, to step through this gossamer veil that separates your outer consciousness from its full inner power and activity is but a state of thought and feeling. Those who are reaching to the light so earnestly, desiring to live in and be children of light, are dwelling constantly in these higher spheres. The beauty of these spheres surpass the foundest imagination of the outer consciousness. When you enter them consciously, and at will, you find all creation there just as tangible as your physical buildings are here. To take your firm stand, I am the power of my complete self-control, forever sustained, will make it easier for you to gain this mastery. Students must be conscious that when they recognize the I am presence acting, it is impossible for it to be interrupted or interfered with in any way. No, there is no time nor space than the knowing of the vastness of eternity is within your grasp. To enter a higher sphere than your physical world in full consciousness is but an adjusting or changing of your consciousness. So how do we do this? Answer, by knowing we are consciously there. Affirm often, through the power of the electronic circle which I have created, I am no longer touched by any doubts or fears. I joyously grasp the scepter which I am, and step boldly forth into any of these higher spheres that I wish, retaining perfectly clear conscious memory of my activity there. In this way, one may quickly find himself enjoying limitless freedom, the perfect happiness of being active in any sphere he chooses. To be aware of what is a thousand years in advance is as easily and readily attainable, in fact more so, as going to your library in search of a book. The great delusion the outer conscience of mankind has built up, creating time and space since belief, has been the great stumbling block to humanity's freedom. Those who have reached the great disillusionment, that wealth or the outer effects of things cannot bring happiness, will understand with great blessing that within their own creative thought, power and feeling are held perfect happiness, perfect freedom, and perfect dominion. When the student once understands that whatsoever he connects himself with through his attention, he becomes a part of it to the degree of the intensity with which his attention is fixed. He will see the importance of keeping his attention off the seeming destructive angles of human experience, no matter what they are. To discuss the seeming inability, shortcomings, or faults of your friends and associates, 
but builds that element upon which your discussion rests within your own consciousness and also adds to the appearance which seems to be in the other individual. Because there are black magicians in the world, certain of God's children who are misdirecting and contaminating the pure electronic energy of the I Am Presence, is no reason why should we should let our attention rest upon that fact just because we are aware of it. Our business is to hold the attention free to rest within our own self-control, compelling it by the conscious action to rest on whatsoever we choose. Few understand that when their attention is called to some destructive thing, how much and how often they allow the attention to go back to it, or if another has displeased them in some way, how much and how often the attention returns to that incident when they have the full power to control their attention and make it obey their command. Few, even among earnest students, yet understand what a mighty power their faculty of attention becomes under their controlled use. I wish so much to impress upon the students how foolish it is to be affected, displeased, or disturbed by the imaginary activities of the ignorance of the outer self. When they once know, I am the only all-powerful acting presence in my mind, my body, and my world, they cannot possibly be affected or disturbed by any of their associations in the outer world. They must know, then, that they are entirely immune from hurt or disturbance of the outer mind of other individuals, no matter what they try to do. With this understanding, or by giving willing attention to this great truth, they will soon find a peace, happiness, and self-control operating about them to such an extent that no outer condition, disgruntled, common, or disturbance of their associates could in any wise dumb them, their world, or their affairs. As soon as the individual becomes aware that he really has control of his own creative thought, power, and feeling, then he knows positively that he can precipitate into his visible use, or bring into his use from the outer where it was already created, anything whatsoever upon which he holds his creative thought and feeling firmly. The moment that he is truly aware of this, he will know he is forever free from the need of the wealth of the outer world, or anything that the outer world can give. Thus has he entered into the mastery of dominion of his own world, the only world that has ever existed to him, and which is his God-given birthright. I assure you there is no such thing as a supernatural world as we step from this sphere of activity into another higher, that one becomes just as real as this is. It is simply a different state of consciousness we have entered into. To the joy, glorification, and blessing of the mothers, sisters, wives, and daughters, I will say that within one hundred years there will be hundreds who will be able to use the cosmic grace to cleanse their homes and keep them so, to weave their seamless garments when they have no desire to follow the freakish styles created by some commercialized idea. I find so many of the students wondering how it is that ascended beings or masters with all their creative power often choose to live in a humble quarter. I assure you the explanation is very easy. The far greater part of their life and activity is spent in the higher spheres in which they are directing mighty rays of light to the blessing of humanity, from homes and temples of light and wisdom, so beautiful, so transcendent as almost to stagger the imagination of the outer consciousness. Those homes and temples are eternal, ever becoming more and more beautiful. So they only spend a few hours in the visible world, which causes them to lower the density of their transcendent forms, that they may become visible to those yet occupying the physical body. If the students will understand this, it will save them much questioning and confusion in the outer expression, which time they can use in the activity of the mighty I Am Presence. This will bring them into the transcendent state and consume the longing for the wealth of the outer world, which is but rubbish in comparison to the transcendent creative power inherent in every individual. They can bring this transcendent power into their use through their own self-control and mastery. I say to you, beloved students, children of the one God, is it not worth your sincere effort when you know you cannot fail? Take your scepter of the mighty creative power and be forever free from all past, binding limitations which have beset mankind through the ages. I assure you that everyone who enters in to attain this scepter and mastery will be given every needed assistance if each one will try with all his ability. The one having the understanding of his creative ability must know that he can create whatsoever he will in whatever rate of vibration he desires to hold it, whether it be light or any other condensation he may choose to maintain it. 
You know you have the ability to change your thought from Chicago to New York in the same instant, and you know you can change your thought from a condition of light to one of very dense condensation such as iron. Then one cannot help but see that this which he does every moment, consciously at will, he can bring into a more powerful use, by consciously fixing the attention and holding upon what he desires. The attention is the channel by which God's mighty energy, through thought and feeling, flows to its directed accomplishments. Because one has not yet precipitated something from the invisible, there is that lurking doubt until some simple manifestation has occurred. Then his courage and confidence leap into dominion, and in the future he has no trouble in precipitating whatever he desires. The precipitation of gold or jewels from the invisible to the visible is as simple as breathing, when once that foolish questioning doubt accumulated by the outer is consumed or pushed aside. Mankind through the centuries has built up these walls of imitation. Now they must be broken up, shattered, and consumed in any way that we can do it. At first it does take some determination to do it, but when you know it is the I am power acting, you know it cannot fail. The outer only has to hold the attention fixed on the object to make it made visible. Dwell on this, and all of a sudden you will find yourself into the activity, and you will be amazed that you dwelt so long without using it. The length of the ray from a precipitated substance or condensation of light is controlled by the consciousness of the wearer. If the wearer's consciousness is raised very high, the scintillation is very great. The jewel of light is yet in its transcendent state of perfection. The jewel in a condensed substance such as a diamond, emerald, or ruby naturally would take on the condition of its wearer. If the rate of thought vibration and the person wearing it be low, the jewel will become lusterless, while if the thought be transcendent, it will become very luminous. When one has become a sincere student reaching to the light, he must qualify everything in his environment with the quality of the I Am Presence, no matter what the appearance seems to be. You see, there cannot be a quality or an appearance in your world except what you give to it. If fear causes you to believe in a disturbing presence, you are responsible for it, because if there were to be a disturbing presence and you qualified it by the I Am Presence, you see how impossible it would be for you to disturb. There is only one energy acting at the moment you acknowledge the I Am Presence. You have requalified that activity with perfection. Expectation is a very powerful, qualifying conscience to maintain. Intense expectation is a splendid thing. It manifests always. The individual through the centuries has created a veil through which he has shut out these transcendent spheres. If he has created it, which he has, then common sense and reason will tell one that he can uncreated. A powerful radiation has gone forth to yourselves and students with a powerful conviction that will be sustained until they have this work which is given today. To convey the simplicity, the ease and certainty with which the idea through creative thought and feeling can be brought into visibility is a thing the student should dwell upon. This will dissolve the feeling of can I and in its place put I can and I know. If the students will keep themselves harmonious from time to time, they will have flashes that will give them all needed confidence, add to all commands on going out of the body that you retain the conscious memory of whatever you experience. Stick right to a thing from a start and know that whatever knowledge you need will be forthcoming instantly. When you allow the attention to become fixed upon a thing, you that moment give it power to act in your world. Benediction Thou great happiness, thy mighty presence and power which I am, I qualify thee to go forth into the hearts of mankind, anchoring there and filling their minds, bodies, and homes, filling them with thy great happiness. Open the door of their consciousness so that the mighty power which I am can come forth into full perfection. O mighty presence, hold the children of light, the individualities of God, hold them close in thy embrace letting thy quality flow forth in their command, filling them with thy great peace. O mighty presence of justice, enter in and reign in all official places. Let the destructive intent of mankind be revealed, that it may be cast out and be consumed. Let the fullness and power of the radiant light enfold all, and thy glorious transcendent light fill all places. Discourse 9, October 30th, 1932 
Invocation. Thou mighty, all-powerful, active presence, God, we ever grow in deeper praise, thanks and gratitude to Thee for Thy life, Thy light, and Thy intelligent power manifest everywhere in the universe. For Thy active presence manifests in the mind, body, home, world, and affairs of everyone. Enable us to understand and feel Thy radiant power, always active in our world, affairs, and business, knowing no single activity can go wrong. For the dost govern all action, and Thy love and justice guiding and regulating all. Thou mighty supreme ruler of the universe, whose law is justice, whose power is invincible, protect America in thy great, blazing, loving presence. Reveal to the authorities of the United States of America any wrong activities. I am the mighty channel of justice, claiming all now and for all time that they serve only the cause of America and the light of God. No human thought shall enter in. No human hand shall be raised against her for she is sealed within the love of the great ascended host of light forever. Mighty God of the universe, thy love, light, wisdom, intelligence, and justice shall fill every office in the land. All political graft shall be wiped out forever, and thou shalt reign through thy creation, through thy children, in perfect justice to all. I bring you greeting from the great host, ever watching over and ministering through their divine radiance to heal, bless, enlighten, and prosper all who will accept. The Discourse One of the great needs of individuals, and even of sincere students today, is to feel the necessity of giving time morning and evening to sincere meditation, to the stilling of the outer activity that the inner presence may come forth unobstructed. Meditation really means feeling the active presence of God. Therefore, when one attempts to enter meditation, he cannot drag all the disturbance that has beset him during the day along with him. Therefore, consciously remove from the feeling and attention every disturbing thing. Enter into your meditation to feel the presence of God. And do not resolve your troubles. When the statement was given, Know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, it meant the recognition, acceptance, and activity of the mighty I Am Presence. First know, I Am is the first principle and absolute certainty of freedom now. Second, no, I am the active presence, governing all manifestation of my life and world perfectly. Then I have entered into the truth which shall bring all freedom. I must relate a thing that would be most laughable if it were not really serious. You would chastise it and rebel considerably if your little pet dog continued to carry bones from the alley into your living room. You would think you were doing that and it's very much out of place. Do you know, beloved students of truth, that when you allow your mind to dwell upon disturbing things or experience, you are doing a great deal worse than bringing bones into the living room? The unfortunate thing with students and individuals which seems so difficult for them to understand is, never under any circumstance try to hold the water that has gone over the wheel. In other words, the unpleasant experiences, losses, or an imperfection that has passed over your wheel of experience to the present time should never be held close to you. They have gone over the wheel, forgive and forget them. To give and forgive is godlike indeed. For illustration, if an individual or group of individuals has gone into a business undertaking, and through lack of understanding it has failed or gone to pieces, it is always because of inharmony in the mental attitude and feeling. If every individual in such an association would take his stand and hold it, that there was only God in action, only the most perfect success would come out of it. Since the individual has free will, if he will not control his own thought and feeling, he will wreck things for himself and others. Such is the great law, unless every individual corrects his own thought and feeling and keeps it so. Manifest in the physical form today has made plenty of mistakes, sometimes, somewhere, so let no one take the attitude, I am more holy than now. But each one's first attitude should be to call on the law of forgiveness, and if he be feeling or sending criticism, condemnation, or hate to another of God's children, a brother or sister, he can never have enlightenment or success until he calls on the law of forgiveness. Further than this, he must say to that person to whom he is feeling disturbed in any way silently, I send you the fullness of the divine love of my being to bless and prosper you. This attitude is the only release and freedom from the seeming failures of the outer activity. 
for individuals to continually revolve in their minds a discussion of business or project that is disintegrated will surely in the end destroy themselves if they do not face about and through calling on the law of forgiveness find complete conscious release from the entire situation for an individual to hold an attitude of revenge for any seeming wrong imaginary or otherwise can only bring upon himself incapacity of mind and body the old yet wondrous statement brought down to us through the ages unless you are willing to forgive how can you be forgiven is one of the mightiest laws for use in human experience oh that individuals and many students could only see how they hold to themselves the things they do not want by allowing the mind to revolve upon the discordant things which have passed and cannot be helped through the outer senses the greatest thing that all mankind is seeking in reality is peace and freedom which is always a doorway to happiness there is only one possible way to receive this which is to know god the i am presence and that this presence is the only acting intelligence in your life and world at all times then stand by this and live it one of the most amazing things that has been my experience to witness since coming into the ascended state is the distorted idea of freedom financially and otherwise there is but one sure certain rock upon which to build your eternal financial freedom and that is to know and feel with every fiber of your being i am the wealth the opulence the substance already perfected in my world of every constructive thing that i can possibly conceive of or desire this is true financial freedom and will bring it as surely as it is maintained and will not get away i assure you on the other hand man may use knowingly or unknowingly enough of this god i am presence or god energy to accumulate through the outer activity millions of dollars but wherein is his certainty of keeping it i assure you it is impossible for any being in the physical world to keep wealth that is accumulated without his being aware that god is the power producing and sustaining it you see before you constant illustrations of great wealth taking wings overnight as it were thousands within the past four years have met this experience even after the seeming loss had occurred had they been able to take their firm conscious stand i am the wealth god in action now manifest in my life my world the way the door would have immediately opened for them to again have received abundance why do i say again to have received abundance because they had built the momentum and had attained great confidence therefore all requirements were at hand ready for further use but in most instances they allowed great discouragement often hatred and condemnation to enter in which shut and locked the door to further progress now let me assure you beloved children of god there is no outer condition ever existed in this world so bad so disastrous but that there is the i am the active presence of god with the eternal strength and courage of the universe to again rebuild you into freedom and independence financially in every way i especially want the students who come under this radiation to understand this because in this day of falling thrones and governments individual fortunes and otherwise they need to know and understand if their wealth has flown away through ignorance of understanding then the i am presence in them god in action is the sure rebuilder of their faith confidence wealth or to whatever they wish to direct their conscious attention thus they allow this mighty inner energy to flow into their desire which is the only power that ever accomplished anything every individual who has seemingly expressed a loss of wealth to any degree should immediately use the marvelous statement of jesus i am the resurrection and the life of my business my understanding or whatever thing i wish to focus my attention on i tell you frankly beloved students and individuals there is not the slightest hope for you in heaven or earth so long as you persist in holding within your consciousness thoughts and feelings of criticism condemnation or hate of any description and that includes mild dislikes this leads us to a very vital point that you are concerned only with your own activity in your world it is not your province to judge another for you do not know the forces playing upon another on the conditions you know only the angle that you see of it and i tell you that if an individual should be entirely innocent of any intent to wrong another the individuals who send criticism condemnation or hate to such a one are doing worse than committing physical murder why is this so because thought and feelings are the only creative power and while such thoughts and feelings may not touch or harm their objective 
they must return and bring with them the conditions sent out by the individual who sent them forth, and always with accumulated energy. So after all, the one who holds vicious thoughts to another is in reality but destroying himself, his business, and his affairs. There is no possible way of averting it except for the individual to awaken and consciously reverse the current. Let us go one step further. Throughout all ages, there have been business associations in which there were one or possibly two with the deliberate intent to do wrong. And through this association, a number of individuals absolutely innocent of any wrong intent had been imprisoned. I now tell you, as an unfailing law that cannot be changed, that the individual or individuals who cause innocent person to be incarcerated, thus depriving them of their freedom of action as God intended, will bring that exact experience which they have desired for another into their own experience, even unto the third and fourth embodiment following. For myself, I would rather a thousand times be deliberately shot down than to be instrument of depriving any of God's children of their liberty. There is no greater crime reigning in human experience today than the prevailing use of circumstantial evidence. For in ninety-nine cases out of a hundred, it is afterwards found to be entirely wrong. Sometimes the truth is never known to the outer senses. So, beloved students, let no one seeking the light ever set himself up in judgment on another of God's children. Again, supposing someone we love very much seems to be going all awry, what is the first thing the outer would do? As a rule, to begin sitting in judgment and criticism. The most powerful thing that can be and should be done for such an individual by anyone who knows anything of the circumstance is to pour out all their love and to silently know, I am God in action, is the only control in intelligence and activity within this brother or sister. To keep silently speaking to the one consciousness is the greatest help possible to be given. Many times to remonstrate verbally with an individual sets up a condition of antagonism intensifying rather than erasing the activity which the silent work would be absolutely certain to accomplish. No one in the outer consciousness can possibly know what the I am God presence in the other individual wishes to do. These are vital truths that, if maintained, would bring very great peace into the lives of individuals. Many lives with their attendant business efforts are ruined because there is lurking within the consciousness of the individual judgment condemnation, or a feeling of some degree of hatred toward another. The student or individual who wants to leap ahead in the progress of the light should never enter sleep until he has consciously sent love to every individual whom he feels he has harmed him at any time. This thought of love will go straight as an arrow into the consciousness of the other individual, because it cannot be stopped, there generating its quality and power, with which will surely come back to you as you send it out. There is perhaps no single element responsible for so many diseased conditions of body and mind as the feeling of hate sent out to another individual. There is no telling how this will react upon the mind and body of the sender. In one it will produce one effect, in another still another different effect. Let it be here understood that resentment is but another form of hate, only a milder degree. A very wonderful thought to live in always is... I am the perfect creative thought and feeling everywhere present in the minds and hearts of individuals. It is a most marvelous thing. It not only brings rest and peace to yourself, but releases limitless gifts from the presence. Another is, I am the mighty law of divine justice and protection acting in the minds and hearts of individuals everywhere. You can apply and use this with enormous force and power in every way. Another is, I am divine love filling the minds and hearts of individuals everywhere. As you think on this, you will understand what was done when this home was made a radiating center of the active presence of God. You will suddenly come into a realization of the gigantic application of this. Everything in the life experience of humanity can be governed by the I Am Presence. The use of the I Am Presence is the highest activity that can be given. When you say, I am, you set God into motion. But there is a lot more to it which you will come to realize when you feel and know the enormity of the use of this expression. Realize the enormous power of the I Am to act in things of this kind. I Am the God Power Almighty. There is no other power that can act. When you say and feel this, and you liberate and loose the full activity of God. Another statement. I Am the conscious memory of these things. 
Also, I am the conscious memory, use and understanding in the use of these things. When you say, the presence that I am, clothes me in my eternal transcendent garment of light, it actually does not take place at moment. The secret place of the Most High is this I am presence. The sacred things that are revealed to you are not to be cast forth, for they are as pearls. No, always, I am the perfect poise of speech and action of all times. Then the guard is always up for, I am the protecting presence. A God's energy is always waiting to be directed. Inherent within the expression of the I am is the self-sustaining activity. Then you know there is no time. This brings you to the instantaneous action, and your precipitation will soon take place. Always preceding the manifestation, you will feel that absolute stillness. Benediction We give thanks, O mighty I am presence, for having entered into thy secret place. Let thy wisdom govern at all times the dispensation of thy light. Let thy wisdom guard and direct our minds and bodies at all times, that they always act in perfect accord with thee. As thou art called forth into action, O mighty I am presence, we know we are always charged at all times with thy mighty energy, and that it accomplishes all perfectly wherever it is sent. Notes Legal Affirmations for the one not in the midst of a case, take this statement. I am the law. I am the justice. I am the judge. I am the jury. Knowing that I am all-powerful, that I know that only divine justice can be done here. Discourse 10, November 3rd, 1932. St. Germain. Invocation. Mighty luminous presence, I am the conquering power. I am the radiant splendor filling everything in manifestation. I am the life flowing through all manifestation. I am the intelligence governing all activity, inner and outer, making it one perfect activity. Out of thy light, mighty presence which I am, all things are precipitated into form. I am the exhaustless energy governed by thy wondrous, infinite intelligence. Light the illuminating center within these bodies who come under this radiation. Expand that light into the full illumination of the body and mind, raising it into thy active, perfect, eternal garment. Mighty light, send forth thy rays into the hearts of mankind, into all official places, commanding justice, illumination, and perfection of thyself to express, bringing relief, release, and light unto humanity and by thy governing principle command all things in the outer human activity to give obedience. I bring you greetings from the great host of loved ones, who always watch and minister those whose devotion reaches unto them. The Discourse From out of the centuries of activity we have arrived at the focal point, where the experiences of ages come into instantaneous action, where all time and space become the one presence, God in action now. Knowing that it is the presence of God, I am, that beat your heart, then you know that your heart is the voice of God speaking. And as you come to meditate upon the great truth, I am the supreme intelligent activity through my mind and heart, you will bring the true, dependable, divine feeling into the heart. So long mankind has been loving on the periphery of the circle. Once a student becomes really aware that God is love, and love's true activity comes through the heart, he will understand that to focus his attention on the desire to project love forth for any given purpose is the supreme privilege of the outer activity of the consciousness which can generate love to a boundless degree. Mankind has not previously understood that divine love is a power, a presence, an intelligence, a light that can be fanned into a boundless flame or fire and it is within the conscious intelligence of every individual, especially students of the light, to so create and generate this presence of love that it becomes an invincible, exhaustless, peace-commanding presence wherever the conscious individual desires to direct it. Somewhere it has been said that love may not be commanded. I say to you, love is the first principle of life and may be generated to any degree or without any limit whatsoever for infinite use. Such is the majestic privilege of the conscious use and direction of love. 
When I say generate, I mean the opening of the door through conscious devotion to the outpouring of this exhaustless fountain of love, which is the heart of your being, the heart of the universe. Students, by contemplating this infinite power of love, become such a fountain of its outpouring that its conscious direction may be infinite in the student's use. When my beloved students wish to hasten their liberation from certain events of outer activity, I can but say, I am the commanding presence, the exhaustless energy, the divine wisdom causing my desire to be fulfilled. This will bring the quickest release from any undesirable condition that the very law of your being will permit. Knowing this, you may further know, the presence that I am, I now remain untouched by disturbing outer conditions. Serene, I fold my wings and abide the perfect action of the divine law and justice of my being, commanding all things within my circle to appear in perfect divine order. This is the great privilege of the student and should be the command at all times. Here I shall say something that should be very encouraging, and I trust it will. Each student who is earnestly striving for the light is being toughened as you make the toughest steel, which wears the longest, holds the best, and is the strongest. Such is what the life of experience brings to an individual. When one craves to be released, and still there appear trying experiences, it is the toughening of the steel of character and the strengthening of the individual that gives him at last the perfect and eternal mastery over all things. One may, with the right understanding of this, easily rejoice in the experience which is enabling him to turn to and bask in the glorious, wondrous I Am Presence. Thus, beloved students, you should never grow weary of well-doing, nor meeting the experiences sometimes seem to weigh heavily upon you. But rejoice that every step forward leads to the eternal goal, which does not have to be repeated. This is what methinks the student often forgets to use. I am the strength, the courage, the power to move forward steadily through all experiences, whatever they may be, and remain joyous and uplifted, filled with peace and harmony at all times by the glorious presence which I am. To the athlete on the race track, the beginning of the race is glorious anticipation. But as he reaches the goal and his adversary draws near, he puts forth every effort. His breath becomes short, and with one last leap he crosses the line to victory. So it is with students on the path. They know in the use of the I Am Presence they cannot fail. Therefore all that is necessary is to tighten your belt, gird yourself for whatever is required, and with a wave of the hand to your adversary bid him farewell. More fortunate than the athlete, the student knows from the beginning that he cannot fail, because I am the exhaustless energy and intelligence sustaining him or her. The power of precipitation, the student should understand and remember at all times, is within the I Am Presence. I am here, the life principle and intelligence in this body. I am everywhere, even unto the heart of God, the governing intelligence of the universe. Therefore, when I wish to precipitate anything whatsoever, I know I am the power acting. I am the intelligence directing. I am the substance being acted upon, and now I bring it into visible form in my use. The contemplation of this phrase just expressed will enable a student to enter into this activity without strain or anxiety. The question that so often confronts the students in the power of precipitation is that of money. The first question is, how is it that money may be precipitated without interfering with the government allotment? Since the creation of money is a standard of exchange, gold being its standard in heart, so to speak, and the security of all issue, it will be remembered that there have been almost a countless number of disasters in one form or another through which gold and the issue of money have been, to the outer sense, destroyed. Billions of dollars in this manner have disappeared. Therefore, with any money, and it is usually gold that is precipitated, there is no danger of passing the limit set by a government for its use. Again, there have been billions of Spanish gold and denominations of other countries that have been burned, lost, submerged at sea, etc., to the extent that precipitation would have to run into great numbers before there would be any question as to its legality. More often, however, gold is precipitated in its natural state, therefore always legal in its use. As the world has recently offered a premium for mole gold production, why not precipitate it and bless the world by its use? 
but I shall not hold myself responsible for the questions that will be asked when you do precipitate it, unless you have a mind from which you can supposedly have brought it forth, for you have no idea what the curiosity of the outer mind is until you call its attention to gold. I assure you, however, the outer is immediately set on fire. However, I am the presence governing it. The supposed demand to know the source of gold is but a subtle form of inquiry that someone else may discover your source. My idea would be to answer their inquiry that is none of their business. Simply say, here is the gold, test it. If it is not 100%, you may refuse it. If it is, you are compelled to receive it by the laws of your government. You will understand, beloved student, that it is only in the outer activity of the physical world that you require a medium of exchange. For the moment one rises into the power of precipitation, he has little use for gold or money or any kind of exchange except as incidents may require. As one by one you come into the ascended state, you will have many a hearty laugh over the seeming importance of these outer problems of the physical or outer world, for they are all but the maya, which means but a constant change. Remember, there is only one thing in the universe that is permanent, real, and eternal. That is the I Am Presence, God in you, which is the owner, the creator, and the intelligence governing all manifested form. Then to know that you are that presence, that I Am Presence places you, beloved student, independent of all outer manifestation. Do not misunderstand me. I know you have come into this understanding sufficiently. But if you are sincere, have doubtless determination in your recognition of the I Am Presence, God in action in you, you will find yourself, even to the outer sense, quickly rising into that dominion and independence in which you can say to all other things, Is it possible thou didst one disturb me? Some of you have had an inkling of how gross and coarse all outer form seems when once you are liberated from it, to your finer, higher sense. It seems incredible that you could have inhabited and still are inhabiting and using a form so gross and imperfect. Had you long ago recognized, claimed, and rejoiced in the I Am Presence as you are doing today, these outer forms would have become so refined that you could have come back to them with very great grace. However, one has but to rejoice at every step of attainment and every step he hopes to attain, because hope becomes faith, and faith becomes reality. Now, beloved students, under no circumstance allow the experience of the outer to pall upon you. But in this recognition, rejoice every day, every hour, every minute that brings you near to the goal of freedom and release from limitation, that freedom you have so longed for and so much desired. The light is growing very bright within some of you. Continue on with that calm, dauntless determination to scale the heights. For I am that great presence sustaining you, and you cannot fail. You know the old phrase used to spur one on, and especially among soldiers, was to tell them they were cowards in yellow. Now, beloved students, I say to you, you are not cowards, but you are yellow with the golden light of truth, of dominion, of mastery over all outer things which have bound you, and with one mighty surge of the I Am Presence, you break every binding chain, shatter all sense of limitations, and stand forth in your freedom the glorious, radiant, majestic being that you really are. I like very much to use the statement, I am here and I am there. And if you will contemplate it, you cannot help but overcome the sense of separation. The student is more or less uncertain, which always brings anxiety, and anxiety makes tension. As you come into a higher activity, you will become more and more relaxed. Always take the attitude of calm poise when anything should manifest. Always be happy and rejoice in the presence, but there is always the balance to be maintained. It is the middle way. Hold yourself within this center poise. One can rejoice as deeply in a calm poise as he can in over-exuberance. The calm poise conveys a certain something to others that they need. For every human being needs poise in the conscious realization of the necessity of calmness and poise, because it never leaves one off guard. Poise has within it a certain power of self-control and guard which is very essential. You will not only be delighted, but amazed at times at the marvelous things that will come with it. Use I am the perfect poise which controls everything. When you use the I am presence, be sure to keep it as a permanent thing. Each one try this, and if you do not feel results at first, just go on, 
for you certainly will as you use it more and more. I am the presence charging this water with the life-giving essence which I absorb, and which renews my body in perfect health and eternal youth. Affirm often, I am here and I am there. I am the conscious action everywhere. To discordant activity say, I am the presence preventing this. I am the positive, peaceful control of this whole situation. In the I am consciousness is the wisdom that knows what is required. Know always this. I am the controlling, governing presence of this meeting or situation. There is nothing that comes into physical form which is not first perfected on the invisible or higher planes. The student should not discuss this instruction, but just rejoice in living it themselves. If they will do this, they will receive so much more from it, because there will be no conflicting vibrations to disturb it. Benediction Wondrous presence of the God I am, we give praise and thanks for this feeling of certainty of thy presence that is growing within the consciousness of these students under this radiation. We rejoice in the great light of thy presence enfolding each one, which goes forth unto all humanity, changing all discord into love and peace. We thank thee. Discourse 11, November 7, 1932 Invocation from out the great silence, O thou luminous brother, we welcome thee in thy ministry unto America, and as thou hast put forth thy opening wedge this day, so shall those under this radiation become aware of thy presence, O thou great light that illumines all earthly minds, making them aware of the one eternal presence, the one intelligence governing all the activity that I am, individualized everywhere. We give praise and thanks that there is but one intelligence governing everywhere, and the duty of the student always, no matter what the appearance, is to accept only this fact, and that he becomes a radiant channel to pour out this truth like a gushing stream, pouring itself forth to the great ocean of life. We give praise and thanks that out of the silence has come another presence who will bless, lift, and enlighten humanity. By the power which I am and the accumulated wisdom and energy of the centuries, I project forth into the minds of humanity this day that intelligent activity which will guide them aright and control them to act accordingly. By the I Am, the universal I Am, the Great One, I command this power to act in all mankind. I bring you greetings from the great host and the great Master Himalaya. The Master Himalaya, this is the first time that the presence of this luminous brother has been brought to the knowledge of the outer world. It is he from whom the Himalayan mountains receive their name. Thus, ever since they have been raised into prominence, they have been a sacred, unchanging stream of life, held unwaveringly. Hence those souls who came within their embrace were caught up and lifted into that luminous, radiant form, where they have long sent forth their rays of activity to heal and bless mankind. The Discourse as the destiny of India and America are entwined as two vines encircling the tree of life, so again this day has the radiant help come forth to try and blend in harmony the minds of America, that its progress proceed unhampered and uninterrupted. Today there are in America thousands who have been reborn from India, and there are being reborn in India thousands from America, each to bring its interblending, balancing process required in both sections of the earth. The great being who has been introduced to you has been, after many centuries, in the great silence again, stepped forth to exert the conscious blending process of spirit and manifestation, to hold forth the chalice, that its heart may be filled with the liquid fire of spirit pouring forth into the hearts of mankind, creating that fullness of desire within them for greater and greater light, looking to and depending upon the great source of light, I am, God in action everywhere. The entrance of this great presence again into the activity of mankind will spread like a thread of light through all the activity of America, and expand its luminous presence like a mantle of soft-falling golden snow. It will be absorbed by the minds of humanity, the majority being entirely unaware, although there will be some who will sense the inner penetrating presence. If those under this radiation continue in their present harmonious, beautiful progress, it will be possible shortly to bring to their attention certain activities of the nerve fluid which will hasten their mastery over the outer form. It means the mastery over all condition that seems to bind or limit. 
I shall be surprised if your students do not feel the strength, if they do not feel the presence of this great being today. Even as I speak, his rays go out to them, touching the heart of each one, and I feel their thrill of joy, they not knowing just what it means. Watch carefully, each of you and your students, to be on guard to reverse all negative conditions that appear to the senses. On the lesser things for practice, if the senses report you cold, reverse your consciousness and assert your warmth. If the senses report too much heat, reverse it with a sense of perfect, normal coolness. If the senses report you ecstatic joy over certain enlightenment, say, Peace be still, and assert your calm poise and assurance. The ideal in all sense reports is to move in the middle way, the balance always asserting the calm mastery of control which I am. This will enable the establishing of a steady, flowing stream of creative ideas and energy from the heart of the great central sun, from out which has come this great being, the Master Himalaya. This will enable you to receive and use immensely more of that radiant energy which he pours forth. The reason for drawing your conscious attention to him has been that if you understand what it means, you may receive without limit from his energy, besides what you draw forth by your own conscious effort. The students must at all times understand that the masters do not come to them of the student's choice, but that they have been chosen to receive the radiance, a privilege for which words are entirely inadequate to convey the true meaning that can truly only be felt or visioned. Again they should understand that the master's province is not to assume their responsibility by solving their problems for them, but to convey intelligent understanding which they may apply in their own lives to solve their own problems. Thus they gain the needed strength, courage, and confidence to continue to reach up step by step, gaining their own conscious mastery over the outer self and the outer world. Always at a certain point of growth or expansion, we hear students call out many times with great sincerity, Great masters, help us to solve our problems. For encouragement and strength, I wish to say that far more than one has any concept, is the radiating presence of the master pouring out strength, courage, confidence, and light which in most instances the students are quite unaware of in the outer sense consciousness. There is only one way in which anyone with wisdom can be of permanent help, and that is to consciously instruct his brother or sister in the simple laws by which one may wield the scepter, gain the victory, and attain to fill dominion over the outer self and his world. To do the thing that the student requires in solving his problem would not only retard his progress, but weaken him immensely. Only by asserting one's conscious strength, winning victories, and thereby attaining confidence which comes in no other way, does the student enter into the fullness of his own power. With the powerful, masterful use of consciousness of the I Am Presence, the student goes forward with absolutely no uncertainty the goal of victory. The reason we have not and do not say more to the student concerning the assistance that we may be giving is to prevent his leaning upon an outside source to say or to do which would cause the student to lean upon us, because he knows of our presence would be the greatest mistake. We could make, but the student never need fear, and he should know that every assistance possible is always given according to the point of attainment he has reached. The I Am Presence, the host of Ascended Masters, the Ascended Jesus Christ, are one and the same thing. Through the recognition and use of the I Am Presence, I tell you, you can positively bring forth any quality you wish into the outer consciousness manifestation, if you will but keep to it. The need of everyone is to keep reminding the outer consciousness that when one says, I am this or I am that, he is setting God in action, which is his life individualized, the life of the universe, the energy of the universe, the intelligence at the heart of the universe governing all. It is necessary, it is vital, to keep the outer reminded of this fact. With this consciousness, the joyous enthusiasm of the student should increase continuously. There should at no time be a pall in the joy of its use, because it is positively the road to full mastery. The student must become firmly aware that he or she is the conscious controlling power in his life, in his world, and that he can fill it with any quality that is needed or that he may choose. The students who have intermittent physical disturbances in the body should take the consciousness often that I am the perfectly controlled breath of my body, and should, in connection with this, feel themselves as often as I can, breathing in that rhythmic breath. 
This will bring about a certain balance of breathing which is immensely helpful in the control of the thought. Sincere students should, whenever possible, avoid listening to things that are disturbing, for in doing so they often let in unknowingly elements they do not desire. Where they cannot, with discretion, avoid listening to things of this kind, they should use the following. I am the presence on guard here and consume instantly everything that seeks to disturb. Thus you will not only protect yourself, but help the other person as well. While a student should at no time fear anything, it certainly is necessary to keep up the conscious guard until he has attained sufficient mastery to control his thought, feeling, and receptivity. From the Golden City comes this limitless charge of energy for the blessing of the students of this radiation, as well as those of mankind who are looking to the light. Try to keep as much as possible in the joyous enthusiasm of the I Am Presence. Give it all power, and do not hold any questioning in the mind. Throw everything to the winds, give everything to that glorious I Am Presence, and receive its magic revelation. It is the mighty, miracle-working presence that can and does solve all things, not only problems, but questions whose answers need revealing. A remarkable statement that would be enormously helpful to the students would be to say, I am the miracle-working presence in everything I require to have done. For students to keep meditating and contemplating what it means to say I or I am brings results, revelations, and blessings that cannot be overestimated. I am sure your students will soon begin to show and feel the remarkable activity of this use. Today I feel the presence of the understanding and use of this much more powerfully than any time hitherto. On the higher planes there is a constant meeting and exchange of help while the bodies are asleep, far beyond anything the outer self is conscious of. Knowing that I am the quality of whatever I wish to use, then you know you can produce invisible, tangible form whatever you have within the consciousness. The moment the questioning of the outer mind can be put under control and made to subside, the greatest revelations pour forth almost tumbling over each other. Owing to the need, the Master Himalaya chose to come forth. He brings a special blending of America and India, and that is why it is possible for him to come here. As the inner presence comes into action, all outer activity subsides. It must necessarily because it obeys the I Am Presence. The golden snow is what the Great Presence spreads over America to be absorbed by individuals in the very particles of the atmosphere itself. This will enable the students especially to be greatly assisted and blessed because they have become the focus for this outpouring. It may be well for the students to understand that in national requirements, as in individuals, there are qualities needed for certain definite purposes at certain times. That is the reason for special great beings coming forth, these individuals having predominant the quality of the nation need at a given moment. The students who can take this understanding with great sincerity will find a new element entering into their lives which will benefit them greatly. The activity of expectation is quite a vital one in receiving from the inner presence. It is a faculty that can be used with a great deal of benefit by the student who cultivates it. For instance, if we have planned something from which we are expecting great joy, we feel all buoyed up with expectancy. We can acquire and use the same expectancy in elements we wish to acquire and use, for it is very helpful in enabling them to come forth. If one calls on the phone and you are to meet that one in the city, you expect to meet him. If you desire to meet the masters, one requirement is to expect to meet them. That is very helpful. Why not expect to meet them now? People have become so abnormal in their habits that naturally they have interfered with their breathing as well as other things. To use the statement, I am the balancing breath, will do a great deal more for them than the use of many breath exercises without the aid of an ascended master. The coming amazing activity will be done by the use of the I Am Presence, because with its use, anything can be accomplished. Take the consciousness often. I Am the Balancing Breath. This sets in motion the inner activity that maintains the outer perfection. In whatever you do, always take the I Am Consciousness, and then you immediately set into motion. Take the attitude of calm certainty in your mind and keep on keeping on. Benediction. Thou mighty presence, whom we in great joy have welcomed, we thank thee for thy great wondrous radiance and light. 
thy great radiance and conquering power, and we trust that thou mayest decree justice now and for all time to mankind. Notes St. Germain, I shall have to journey on. Question, where are you going? Answer, home. Question, which one? Answer, the Golden City. It is clothed in the electronic substance and is just as tangible to you as the physical. Within the light of the Golden City are lights that are much brighter than the surrounding radiance as these physical lights are in the atmosphere. Within all lights at certain points in consciousness focused, at these points it becomes illumination. Suppose this room with a great sun. It has an atmosphere. The individuals moving within it would have their own radiance about them, the same as the lights in this room. Discourse 12, November 10, 1932. St. Germain, Invocation. Thou mighty, infinite presence, thou all-pervading intelligence, thy love, wisdom, and power govern all things. Thy divine justice is ever operating in the lives and worlds of those who look to thee with unfailing determination. We give praise and thanks that thou art the ruling power and governing intelligence during all things. We give praise and thanks that in our world thou art thou ever sustaining, invincible power. We thank thee. God always finds a way to help those whose hearts reach out to him. The Discourse The seeming mysteries of life with their attendant experiences are, when rightly understood, blessings in disguise, for any experience that causes us to turn more firmly to the one act of presence, I am God in action, has served as a wonderful purpose and blessing. The unfortunate situation in which personalities find themselves exists because they are constantly looking to outside source for sustenance, directing intelligence, and for the love that is the supreme presence and power of the universe. It matters not what the conditions are that we face. At no time must we lose track or of allow ourselves to be drawn from the great truth that love is the hub of the universe upon which everything revolves. This does not mean that we call love in harmony, discord, or anything unlike the Christ, but instead we can love God in action, the I Am Presence, everywhere present, for the opposite of hate is love. And one cannot hate in any sense without having loved deeply. The admonition that Jesus gave was truly this idea. Each human being is a power that is intended to be the governing principle of his life and world. In the recognition that within each human being is the I Am Presence of God ever acting, then everyone knows that he holds within his outer hands the scepter of dominion, and should use his conscious determination in knowing that the invincible presence of God is, every moment, the intelligent activity in his world and affairs. This keeps the attention from becoming fixed on the outer appearances, which is never the truth unless illumined by the I Am Presence. No matter what the problem is to be solved in the individual's life, there is only one power, presence and intelligence that can solve it, and that is the individual's recognition of the all-powerful presence of God, with whom no outer activity may interfere, unless the individual's attention is knowingly or unknowingly drawn from his central recognition and acceptance of the supreme God power. The principle of life, always active, is ever striving to pour itself forth into expression, thereby producing its natural perfection, but human beings having free will, consciously or unconsciously qualified with all kinds of distortions. The individual who stands with his attention fixed firmly on the I Am Presence on God and with God becomes an invincible power which no other unmanifestation of mankind can interfere. In the recognition of I am here and I am there, Friends, wherever needful, will be raised up to one's assistance for I am the friends brought forward whenever and wherever is necessary. The release from all outer dominion or interference can only come through this recognition of the I am presence. God in action in the individual's life and world. Many times this requires strong determination to hold unwaveringly in his presence when appearances seem to be dominating. However, such is never really the case. The old saying, an individual is never licked unless he gives up, is quite true, for as long as an individual looks with full determination to God in himself as the governing intelligence, there is no human activity that can long interfere. The mighty outpouring of light flowing about each individual, 
through the activity of the vision, and knowing of its presence can be made as invincible as a wall of steel about one, in fact more so. Ever down through the centuries have the majority of mankind given their attention to the outer appearances, thereby inviting all kind of discord and distress. But today there are thousands who are coming to understand the God presence within themselves as absolutely invincible, to the extent that they are steadily being raised above the injustice, discord, and harmony of the outer creation. Until mankind or individuals hold their attention on the I Am Presence, God within, long enough and with sufficient determination, they will find themselves surrounded by the undesirable. But through this I Am Presence, each one has the power to raise himself above the discord and disturbance of the outer creation. At first, it does not take determination to hold fast when the seeming storm clouds hang low and the outer appearances seem overwhelming. But with a dynamic, conscious attitude and the attention fixed upon the presence of God within, it is like the lightning flashing forth from within the storm cloud, penetrating and dissolving the storm that seems so threatening. As one advances, he finds himself becoming more and more invincible to the outer creation of mankind, which brings such great distress. The statement of Jesus, Know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, was perhaps one of the simplest and greatest truth that ever be uttered. For the first fundamental of knowing this great truth to which he referred was to know that you have within you this invincible presence of God. If you know that and are certain of it within your own consciousness, I mean by that, standing with firm determination in the face of everything, then you know you do have that presence within. Your next step is to take your stand. I am the illumining, revealing presence, and no outer activity that I need to know can be withheld from me. Because I am the wisdom, I am the perception, I am the revealing power bringing everything before me that I may see and understand and be able to act accordingly. It is so easy when you once understand that I am the only intelligence and presence acting. To see how you have the scepter within your own hands, and through this I am presence, you can compel everything you need to know to be revealed to you. I assure you, this is not in any way interfering with the free will of any other individual. It is time that the children of God who are looking to the light awaken to this dominion. I assure you, it is no wrong nor mistake to claim and demand your own. In doing this, you are not in any way interfering with any other individual. If at any time there are those who through their outer activity attempt to take from you that which belongs to you, then it is your right to command through the I Am Presence that the whole condition be adjusted and your own brought to you. In this we must be very careful that when we have set the divine law into motion and divine justice begins to take place, that we do not become over-sympathetic and thereby interrupt the action of the law. When human beings are governed entirely by the outer self, and when they have no consideration for the power of God which gives them life, they are easily led to commit any kind of injustice. But does that mean in any sense that you shall allow them to do it in your world? Not when you know that you have the mighty power of God within to command and demand right and justice from everywhere. I want to cite you an instance. One of my students was going through a very trying experience, and the nature being very spiritual. I told her to demand right and justice. She did as advised, and presently things began to happen to those who wished to do her injustice. Through kindness of heart she began to relent and wish that she had not demanded justice. She came to me and said, What am I to do? I said with no uncertainty, Stand by the decree that you have issued. You are not responsible for the lessons these individuals have to learn who have wronged you, so let them get their lessons and be undisturbed. When individuals start to do wrong, that moment they set in motion the great universal or cosmic law of retribution, and they can no more avoid retribution striking them sometime, somewhere, than they can stop the action of the planets. To the innocent victim, retribution sometimes seems a long time coming, but the longer its arrival is delayed, the more powerful it acts when it does arrive. There is no human being in existence that can avoid this law. Many times students and individuals have thought that something could be imposed upon them. Such, I assure you, is not the case. The only way one can open himself to undesirable thought is by entering into condemnation and hate. If he has done this, he has generated the thing in which he believed. 
The student who knows the power of God within himself need never fear anything from anyone. The individual may, if he or she chooses, experience the fullness of the activity of God in his life and world. It is simply a matter of choosing what you shall have. If you want peace and harmony, know, I am the power producing it. If you want adjustment in your affairs and world, know, I am the mighty intelligence and power producing it, and no outer activity can interfere with it. From out of the seeming mystery of life's ceaseless activity, there is the illumining presence of the mighty I am within, that stands ever ready to bless you with untold, inconceivable blessings. If you only let it. How do you let it? By the joyous acceptance of the mighty presence, that you have this mighty power within you, and then do not hesitate in every detail on your activity, no matter how small it seems, to call it into action. For there is no energy in the universe but God to act through your consciousness, your mind, your body, your world. Say often, I am the presence in everything you wish to have done. This opens the way for the power of God to act and bring you justice. Have no sympathy for the outer that in its ignorance does the wrong thing, whether in yourself or someone else. Keep calm and serene knowing God is the only intelligence and power acting in your world and affairs. I am in you is the self-sustaining strength and healing manifesting in your mind and body. This keeps you in greater attunement. Face God, and the energy always surges forth to command every situation. Individuals who understand this law are not subject to injustice and the conditions which the outer selves of other beings try to impose upon them. Keep the outer reminded of this often. Be sure always within yourself that there is only the presence and power of God acting in you and your affairs. Keep using the statement at all times that there is nothing hidden that is not revealed to me. This is always necessary. However, no matter what individuals want to do, your safeguard is always to pour out the love of God to them. When individuals try to enjoy something through injustice, without question they never enjoy it, for they always lose some faculty by which they could enjoy it. Other personalities always have the same privilege to stand with God that you do, and if they do not choose, that is not your business. God is the all-knowing presence and power, knows and discovers all things, you may say for another, Mighty Master Self, the I Am Presence within this individual, come forth in thy conscious power with thy mighty insight and foresight, with thy wisdom and directing intelligence, and see that all things are adjusted for her, and that she is given the peace and rest she so much deserves. I am the commanding presence directing and commanding this to be done, and it is done now. Lift the consciousness into the full dazzling light, where she may see and know the repose, rest and beauty that is hers by her own creation and service. It is a mistake to let sympathy draw you into conditions that are very destructive and take the stand, I am the only presence acting here. For helping those who have passed on through so-called death, the I am, the presence holding that individual in the sphere where he belongs, teaching and enlightening him. If the student can get the correct idea of pouring out the love to his own divine self, he will receive complete relief from every discord to perfect condition. Say, I am the presence there, governing and healing the situation. Mankind in general and the doctors have distorted things pitifully. The individual who wants to rise in the God presence and live there needs the energy he wastes. The very energy individuals waste is the force and strength by which they are enabled to hold fast to the God presence. This energy is the life they need to enable them to turn and hold steadfast to the God presence. When the outer self has for centuries used life's energy to create wrong conditions, the waste of the energy becomes a wide-open drain upon the consciousness of individuals. Doctors are responsible for much of this terrible condition, for they teach the gratification of the sex appetite, and that is the greatest avenue of waste which human beings have been to contend. This is what it makes impossible to hold fast to the guide presence long enough to attain the mastery, it is 95% of the cause of old age and the loss of sight, hearing, and memory, as these faculties only cease to function when there is no longer a stream of this life. Energy flowing into the cellular structure of the brain, 
You cannot tell us to individuals until they have had such hard knocks that they are almost desperate with the misery of their own creation before they will listen to you. The will is absolutely nothing without this life energy. There is only one possible way to change anything which has been created and directed into a wrong channel. The attention is what holds it fast to the wrong use or expression of it. Instantly direct the thought to the higher self. Many people get the idea that they control it by sheer force of will through compulsion. Well, this cannot be done. For you but damn it up, and it only breaks out somewhere else. The only permanent way to overcome it is to change the attention and rise out of it. Use the statement, I am the governing presence of this energy and the only power that can raise it. I am the presence raising and transcending it, and that action is forever self-sustained. No, I am the presence doing this, and therefore it is done now, for God's activity is always instantaneous. In any wrong condition, the first thing to do is to call on the law of forgiveness. Remember that when a thing has been set in motion or energized, it simply acts. The physical body is the vehicle for contact with the sense world. When nearing the point of precipitation, continue on using the physical vehicle for doing the ordinary physical service. There is the inner, the mental and the physical world. The physical body has been created to act in the lower rate of vibration and is the natural vehicle provided. To direct and handle physical objects by the mind alone needs an accumulation of electronic force in the electronic circle of the individual. When using the energy below the ascended state, this consciously generated energy is held within the electronic circle, which surrounds every individual to a more or less degree. This accounts for some individuals seeming to have a limitless amount of energy, for that which is accumulated in one lifetime is carried over into the succeeding lives. Perhaps one of the most unfortunate things in which human beings lives is that man's so-called legal right to bind another individual in the sex activity when the other one wishes to rise out of it. Even in the ignorance of the outer mind, some natures have a powerful development of the love activity. The pure love of God never goes below the heart. True love never requires sex contact of any kind. The great ascended hosts of love are ever with those who want to do right. Send your thoughts out to them, and you shall always receive help. You have an invulnerable, invincible power when you know you have the recognition of the I Am Presence. The law of forgiveness is the wide-open door to reach the heart of God. It is the keynote and hub of which the universe turns. Benediction Thou mighty, infinite presence of God, we give praise and thanks for thy ceaseless ministry. We call thy blessings, thy wisdom, thy intelligence, to act through each one, giving peace of mind, peace of body, and joy of heart, to go forth the ruling, conquering, victorious presence over all things. We give praise and thanks that the mighty presence I am, God in action, governs all official places, causing thy perfection to be ever operative and self-sustained in thy name and through thy presence. Discourse 13 November 14, 1932 Saint Germain Invocation Thou majestic presence, infinite creator of all there is, the great I am, visible and invisible, manifest and unmanifest, we rejoice in thy great and mighty presence, that thou hast made us aware of thy limitless power, thy infinite intelligence, thy eternal youth and beauty. We give praise and thanks that we have become so aware of thy great opulence, thy great abundance, that we feel it like a mighty river in our hands and use thou mighty endless source. Thou ceaseless stream, thou hast made us aware that I am the mighty power of precipitation. We bow before thee in adoration and full acceptance of thy mighty presence and power. I bring you greetings from the great host and the great light of the illumined ones and growing rapidly stronger. The Discourse I am the resurrection and the life. I am the energy you use in every action. I am the light illumining every cell of your being. I am the intelligence, the wisdom, directing your every effort. I am the substance, omnipresent without limit, which you may use and bring into form without any limit. I am thy strength, thy perfect understanding. I am thy ability to apply it constantly. 
I am the truth that gives you now perfect freedom. I am the open doorway into the light of God that never fails. I give praise I have entered into this light fully, using that perfect understanding. I am thy sight that sees all things visible and invisible. I am thy hearing, listening to the bells of freedom, which I hear now. I am thy ability, sensing the most ravishing fragrance at will. I am the completeness of all perfection you ever wish to manifest. I am the full understanding, power, and use of all this perfection. I am the full revelation and use of all the powers of my being, which I am. I am the love, the mighty motive power back of all action. I wish to give the most kindly warning to the students under this radiation to watch every feeling that at no time anyone accept a feeling of jealousy at the progress of another. Each student must always remember that he has no concern whatsoever with the other students, except to know that I am the God presence there in action. For one student to wonder and question in his own mind about the progress of another is most retarding and is never admissible. Each student must understand that his only concern is the harmonizing, quickening, and the expansion of his own mind and world. The sooner students understand that, the one imperative demand of the great law of their being is harmony of the mind and feelings. The quicker will perfection manifest. Without this being maintained, they cannot go beyond a certain state of progress. As soon as the students realize this and begin to use the I Am Presence, commanding the harmony and silence of our outer activity, they will find that they can see, feel, and be the perfection which they so much desire. When students and friends have a deep, sincere love for each other, which is not inquisitiveness, that love is the greatest blessing and uplifting power. Here is one criterion by which a student may gauge himself at all times, determining what is the power acting. If one feels critical, inquisitive, or out of harmony toward a person, place, condition, or thing, it is a sure signal that the outer self is acting, and the right attitude is to correct it immediately. Everyone, especially students, must realize that they have only one thing to do, and that is to feel, see, and be perfection in their own world. This is so very important is the reason I am stressing it so much at this time, because as students begin to experience unusual manifestations through their efforts, there is always a suggestion at first which will say to the individual, I am able to use a law better than the other person. This, you know without my saying, is a mistake. One cannot long use the statement, I am, even intellectually, until he begins to feel a deeper and deeper conviction that, I am all things. Think often what these two marvelous words mean, and always couple with the use of these two words the statement that, when I say I am, I am setting in motion the limitless power of God in whatever I couple the expression I am with, in the scriptural statement, before Abraham was I am, Abraham represents the outer expression of life, and I am represents the principle of life which was expressing through Abraham. Thus there was the perfection of life, before any manifestation ever occurred, and thus is life without beginning and without end. My beloved students, my heart rejoices exceedingly in the nearness of which some of you are feeling the conviction of this majestic presence, I am, which you are. Do your utmost to feel calmly, serenely, and if you cannot see it otherwise, shut your eyes and see perfection everywhere. More and more there will come to you proof of the marvelous presence of this truth. You will hear, feel, see, and experience that marvel of all marvels, which as children you have lived in, miracles performed. There have been written for your benefit descriptions and explanations of the use of this mighty I Am Presence. You who hold fast to the truth will come into the threefold action, seeing, hearing, and experiencing these so-called miracles, miracles until you understand their operation, and then majestic, simple truth, which you may forever apply when once understood. With all my centuries of experience, I cannot help but say to you as encouragement that my heart leaps with joy at the nearness with which some of you are grasping the scepter of dominion. Go forward, my brave ones, do not hesitate. Grasp your scepter of dominion, raise it, 
For I am the scepter, the quenchless flame, the dazzling light, the perfection which you once knew. Come, let me hold you in my strong embrace, that where there have been so long two, there will only be one. I am. I am the knower, the doer, the perfection expressed now. I again speak to the individuals wanting so much to have their problems solved. There is only one presence in the universe that can or ever does solve any problem, and that is the I am presence everywhere present. Beloved ones, let me say in all kindness, there is no use just seeking to have a problem solved, because where one was, a dozen may appear. But when you know the perfect attitude is to enter into the I am presence, knowing it is the unquestionable solver of every problem, you will as surely as I am telling you cause all problems to disappear. For where you live constantly, calmly, and with sufficient determination in the I am presence, instead of having many appear where one has been solved, you will have entered into the state where there are none. I command the power in these words today to carry to everyone who hears or reads them the true conviction and understanding back of them. For the brain, I am the quickening of the cells of this, my or your brain structure, causing it to expand and receive the intelligent direction of the mighty inner presence. You must know that you have the power through the I am presence to consciously qualify your thought in whatever way you will. There is not to say what you shall do, for you are a free being of free will. If you could be conscious of every thought that passed through your mind for six weeks and keep it qualified with perfection, you would see the most amazing results. Say often, I am the master within, governing and controlling all my thought processes in full Christ perfection as I wish him to be. Blessing and holding others in the light. When you bless others or visualize them in the light, there is a double activity of the quality you send out. In doing this, there is a certain amount of protection that is automatic result, but the thought and quality in the light and blessing registers principally within one's own consciousness, and at the same time intensifies the quality in the one to whom it is sent. Take the eternal stand that, I am what I want to be. You must use the I am presence consciously always. Rarely, even among students, have they realized deeply what the I am presence meant. Only occasionally has any real comprehension of the I Am come forth, except in the retreats of the Ascended Masters. Jesus was the first to stress it to the outer world. I urge you earnestly, do not give any consideration to the element of time. Manifestation must come instantly when you give the I Am Presence freedom enough. Go on, apply it, no, and let the I Am Presence take care of the element of time. When you make a declaration of truth and stick to it, you must receive. The outer has no power of itself at all. Its duty is simply to know that the I Am Presence is acting. Sometimes, without being aware of it, the outer self is looking for the time and manifestation. I can convey to you the conviction and the feeling that when you command as the I Am Presence, Almighty God moves into action. Remember at all times that when you are dealing with personalities, you are dealing with the outer human creation, and you have all right and power to command its silence and obedience, whether it is in your own outer self or someone else's. If you will count ten before you speak, you can control all sudden impulse, and back of this is a mighty law which can help the student immensely. When there is a sudden impulse, there is a release or rushing forward of accumulated energy. If there be anger, then the energy is instantly qualified with it or with destruction of some kind. The power of self-control would say, only God's perfection goes forth. This will handle any condition of uncontrolled impulses with which the individual is contending. When the student has already let something go forth that is undesirable, then the thing to do is to consciously consume it instantly. The constant use of God bless this, directed to inanimate things, brings amazing accomplishments. The easy way to see and feel perfection is to qualify every thought and feeling going forth with perfection. When an impulse comes to do anything, instantly qualify it with perfection. Story of the engine in a small town. The whistle is the warning. 
The I am is the control of the engine. The ordinary human being would not think of running over children and killing them, yet he releases wrongly qualified energy and thought, feeling and words that kill the higher impulses in others. If your personality is not controlled and governed, it has the same qualities as all other selves or personalities, but your I am presence is the perfect control of it. There is nothing more tragic in the world than for one person to hold a thought of limitation over another human being. A thought of imperfection driven at a sensitive person sometimes limits that one for years, and many times the results are very tragic. We must all give everyone his complete freedom mentally. If you speak of freedom for yourself, be sure and give it first to everyone else. When there is a condition in another that you wish to help, use the following. I am the perfect manifestation there. The principle within both energy and substance is the same. Substance holds energy within it naturally. The heart center of substance is intelligent action. Vibration in its natural state is pure, always. Vibration is energy in action and must be qualified. The pulsation in all substance is the breath of God acting. Think when breathing. I am the perfect energy of every breath I breathe. I am the pure atmosphere of my world. Form the habit of constantly qualifying your world with perfection. The old habit of thinking imperfection has filled your world in the past. Now the important thing is to be self-conscious that you are filling your world with perfection all the time. Stand on your feet the first thing in the morning and say with feeling, I am the presence filling my world with perfection this day. Do not be concerned about personalities. To take the stand, I am perfection acting through any official would impel the I am power in action there. The first thing in the morning, say, I qualify everything in my world this day with perfection, because I am perfection. I qualify this mind and body with absolute perfection and refuse acceptance of anything else. I am the miracle, and I am the presence compelling its manifestation through divine love, wisdom, and power. When individuals come and ask about certain use of the law, always preface your statement with, You are an individual of free will, but this is the way I feel about it. What is required for the expansion of light for one person may be entirely different from that of someone else. You cannot expand so long as you have an opinion about anyone else. It is stifling to your own progress. The time comes with everyone when he must stand up and face himself, his outer creation, then say this, Whatever there is of imperfection left in me has to get out. Your constructive desire is God in action doing the thing. Your desire holds the power or energy of the I am through the attention on the thing you desire to do. I am the full revelation and the perfect application for precipitating what I desire, and I do know what is the perfect thing to do in the outer self while precipitating. Say often, I am the precipitating presence of this thing. Do not be anxious. Just know it with calm certainty. When you are conscious of the I am acting, you know it is moving forward. Do not let in the sense of disappointment. Rather say, I am the perfect harmony of my thought, feeling, and action. Benediction. Out of thy pure presence we receive now and forever thy strength, thy wisdom, thy understanding application of thy great and marvelous laws, that we may produce and maintain thy perfection in each life, mind, body, home, and world. Notes In a recent newsreel there has been pictured certain chemical activities and how to use this chemical action upon flowers to qualify them with a the desired fragrance. Instead of raising them in the earth, they are growing them in water with excelsior over the top. This shows how near the chemists and scientists are coming to bringing things forth direct from the universal. This shows the inner activity coming into conscious, definite use, or the activity held in consciously directed rays. I am the only acting presence in this ideal. I am the intelligent activity in their minds. I am the protection in myself and my property. I am the intelligence and presence acting everywhere. I am the visible opulence I desire. 
I am the presence producing abundance wherever I choose to use it. Discourse 14, November 17, 1932 Faith, Hope, Charity St. Germain, Invocation I am the joy, the courage, the confidence pervading all the earth, filling the hearts of mankind consuming all generated thought of depression or lack in the minds of mankind, and that which has been sent forth through lack of confidence shall be wiped from the earth. I am the presence, the perfect Christ activity in the minds of all humanity, filling all official places, causing it to sustain all personalities, causing them to turn with quick certainty to the source of their being, the perfect life manifest in all outer expression. I am the presence proclaiming the conscious act of divinity in the manifestations everywhere. This shall be, for I am the supreme conquering presence. I am here and I am there. I go everywhere, touching the brains of mankind as with a streak of lightning, not with consuming power, but with the I am presence that will no longer be gainsaid. I bring you greeting, joy and love from the great host. It is so wonderful, beloved ones, to have such perfect peace and calmness in your minds this morning. Oh, could you understand the value of maintaining that peace of mind? There is nothing that warrants it being disturbed. Your melodies were beautiful, and wonderful words shall come forth to bless through the melodies. There is that great joy in advancing, conquering presence that will bless your home, world, and students with its glorifying presence, with its presence of opulence streaming forth like a mighty river to all who make themselves worthy, by the peace and harmony of mind. The Discourse I wish to call your attention this morning to the active presence of faith, hope, and charity. In this consideration we will think of faith as the conquering, emanating power, hope the open doorway through the veil acting in the pure presence, and charity as a determination to think no evil, to speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil, and feel no evil. Students should always watch the inner activity of the outer mind and not let themselves be fooled by its action. This may sound like a paradox, but it is not. This is more important than it seems at first. If there is lurking back in the consciousness any feeling of resistance of any kind whatsoever, or that something which is always ready to bristle when something displeases, pluck it out by the roots. You know it is on the outer, and it will stand in the way of your attainment to prevent it until you do pluck it out. To maintain a tranquil, sweet disposition in the face of all things is the certain road to self-control and absolute mastery. This is much more important than any you can possibly understand at this time for your attainment of all that you desire. There are cosmic masters known as faith, hope, and charity. In calling your attention to these three principles always active in the life of mankind, I want to assure you that they are not only qualities within yourself, but there are beings of great light and advancement who are also known as faith, hope, and charity. The individuals and students who make the conscious effort to cultivate these qualities and consciously expand them in their worlds will find themselves receiving great assistance from these conscious, mighty beings from whose name come those qualities into individualization. These are cosmic, self-conscious, intelligent beings whose special action with mankind is to encourage and expand these qualities. Therefore, let all the students understand that this is far more than a scriptural phrase or expression. At this time, these great ones have come from out of the cosmic silence because of the need of faith, hope, and charity in the minds and hearts of mankind. The sinister force that would have destroyed the confidence, the hope, and charity in the minds of American people is doomed to fail utterly. Even now, Hundreds who voted for a wet administration are finding their own uncontrolled thought recoiled upon them and are regretting the unwisdom of the action. So out of the seeming wrong activity will stir some great good. Since the hypnotic force that was generated has spent itself, many of mankind are wondering what caused them to do certain things, and their very rebellion will generate the force which will be used to correct conditions after all. God, which is progress, knows no defeat in anything. Let students always remember this, which will enable them to maintain the so much needed peace and poise of mind. The majestic being charity has a natural consuming force for dissolving and annihilating hate, 
criticism, condemnation, and uses the cosmic rays as a balancing force in their ethers from which human beings are drawn their very breath and sustenance, so in spite of themselves they are breathing in the fire of these rays. This reminds me of an illustration. You know when a person is fainting, many times you hold the smelling salts of ammonia under the one's nose. This is what is actually taking place under the nose of humanity. It is now breathing in this consuming presence. Ask your students not to discuss this fact with unbelievers, but it is vital that the students understand this. Here I want to stress something earnestly. To the earnest, sincere student, there are innumerable means of assistance available to him, much of which is and will remain entirely unknown to him, but from which he nevertheless draws, when his desire for the light is sincere. To throw everything to the wind and stand joyously and determinedly in that one mighty presence which I am, enables each one to have a continuous stream of victories marked down to his or her benefit. No effort ever made in the name of presence with I am can ever fail, but must go forward from one victory to another until one attains and is able to use the scepter of his full dominion. I wish to encourage and strengthen the very important advancing consciousness concerning the law of forgiveness. The correct way to call into action the law of forgiveness is to say, I am the law of forgiveness, and the consuming flames of all inharmonious action in human consciousness. This sets into motion the completed action. When you use the statement, I call on the law of forgiveness, you are not always completing the action, because you need to be conscious of who and where that intelligence is which enables it to be done. As I look among the students, I find that it is important to keep touching frequently upon the use of the I am presence for it is doing remarkable things for them already. My very being lifts up when I see among the students those whose attention is held with determination upon the I Am Presence, how the student becomes a powerful magnet for the light, and how it rushes to envelop each one as a loving mother and her child. Could people see and realize as for one moment their determination would surge into a conquering flame from which there could be no receding? The time is apropos today, and I send forth to each of you and the students a conscious ball of light enveloping the heart and brain of each one, that they may receive more continuously the conscious blessing of the mighty I Am Presence. I believe that most of them will feel this. Whether they do or not, nothing can interfere with its action to bless them. To those blessed ones who find disturbance in the home at times, I would suggest that they use this statement and feel it deeply. I am the conquering presence, commanding peace, love and harmony in my home and environment. Anyone who will use this with determination can have a peaceful, loving, harmonious atmosphere in the home. Some may need to build a momentum to experience its continuous action. Many times they will have immediate results. To build this into the consciousness is recognizing the I am presence as the ruling power in their homes, for it is naturally the ruling presence. If students and individuals who have difficulty in maintaining self-control will sit quietly for five minutes, feeling deeply and thinking to themselves, I am loving charity, they will find a sense of great relief. For fainting. You know, speaking of fainting, the individual never faints. Only the personality does that. Therefore, if one who is in the habit of fainting will take this determined stand, I am the commanding presence forbidding this nonsense, and I forever maintain control of my body and mind. He or she will forever control it. When one first feels the least disturbance, quickly take the consciousness, I am the commanding presence, and I maintain my consciousness here. One must realize that in the command of the I am presence, he has absolute control of the body. The more anyone uses this, the more quickly does manifestation take place. Question. If the great central sun is the heart center of the infinite, where is that which is the brain center? Answer. In the pure state, whether in the infinite or the finite, when there is no imperfection, the brain and heart activity become one. For the motive power of all activity sent forth is love from the heart. Therefore, in the pure state, the heart and brain are synonymous. For within divine love is contained love, wisdom, and power. 
The infinite energy is always present awaiting use, but does not act in the life of an individual except under conscious command. There does come a time in the progress of the individual when things act so instantaneously that it seems to be automatic, but it really never is. There is absolutely but one road to self-conscious mastery, and that is the conscious direction of the eternal energy into whatever you desire. Now this brings us into another quite vital point. Desire is an indirect action of the attention, but desire, sustained by the determined use of the attention, causes the desire to become an invincible manifestation. This will give you a slight idea of how important it is that conscious direction be coupled with the desire. Conscious use of the I am presence, or the consciously directed use of this eternal energy to a given accomplishment, should at no time be anything but a most joyous effort. It should never seem like work or tension anyway, because when you declare, I am the presence, the intelligence directing this energy to a given purpose, you set the law in motion in a perfectly easy, calm manner, and it does not require any tearing the hair effort. Therefore, it should always be calm, serene, determined procedure. The student should at all times understand that the student never chooses the master, but the master chooses the student. Did the student understand what consciousness he was to maintain? It would come about very much sooner. For contacting the ascended masters use, I am the presence preparing the way and bringing visible contact with the beloved ascended masters. With the use of the I am presence, you have full command and limitless control over all disturbing conditions. When you speak in the I am presence, you are speaking in the presence which the ascended being is. You must realize deeply that when you say I am, it is the full God power acting and knows no failure of any kind. Benediction We give praise and thanks for thy infinite outpouring, great I am presence. We give praise and thanks that at last we know who thou art and that within thee are all possibilities. We give praise and thanks that thy mighty presence is always the governing intelligence, the love enfolding, the light illumining everything on the way. Discourse 15, November 21, 1932 Saint Germain, Invocation Thou mighty, conquering presence, the majesty of I am everywhere, we give praise and thanks for thy mighty presence everywhere. Thy all-pervading energy and power ever stands at the door of our conscience for use, what we may consciously direct it to manifest, thy wondrous perfection. Forever we give praise and thanks to thee for thy mighty presence. I bring you greetings from the great ascended host, always giving their assistance that you may manifest perfection. The Discourse Out of the glorious fullness of God's omnipresent light and substance comes the fullness of all things. The student who is strong enough, firm enough, to stand alone with his or her mighty I am presence, never dividing for a single hour the presence and the power of God, will find himself or herself steadily rising into that mighty perfection, forever free from all sense or recognition of any limitation. The student is fortunate indeed who can hold himself or herself within this mighty presence undivided, for the benefit of some of the students who are so sincere and yet are unknowingly allowing their attention to be withheld from the undivided presence, I wish to state certain facts with no intent to intrude upon the free will of the individual. These records, which I shall quote, we have within our possession, and they cover the past one hundred years. That of which I wish to speak of today is the delusion of astrology. No one living can give his attention to astrology and enter into the presence of the I Am and remain there. Underlying the present use of astrology is the human desire and opportunity to justify and gratify the outer desire. Here let me state an appalling fact which is within the records we have. There is no one thing or phase of study which has caused more failure or more indirect murder than the present illusion of astrology. In your city of Chicago within very recent years was a splendid student of metaphysics who consciously accepted the delusion of his horoscope and was driven to commit suicide. The one thing humanity needs most, and students above all else, is the firm rock and consciousness of the mighty I Am Presence, 
upon which to stand safely and free from the pitfalls of outer concoctions. It is not the negative statements of prospective death and the so-called ill-fated star force to be overcome that students need to know, but the unconquerable, all-pervading I Am Presence that is the only and all life of their being to which their attention needs to be drawn, and held there with a firm grasp. In the I Am Presence there is no height the student may not reach, but by allowing his attention to be held by astrology, numerology, and the many isms of today, there is no depth he may not reach. The present use of astrology has no semblance of the use which it put it centuries ago, then it conveyed no negative statements of any kind. The great harm of the attention fixed upon is that students accept the negative statements far more than they are willing to admit. The sinister negative forces generated by mankind in the world always takes advantage of such things as this to get a hold and hold the attention, especially of the student who is progressing, and thus keep it upon him that which will pull him down instead of raising him up. Where there is a horoscope that indicates the death of someone, Various minds become fixed upon that idea, and actual indirect murder is committed. So subtle that individuals would be shocked to be reminded that they had any part in it, but I assure you, it is nonetheless the truth for all of their surprise. Could the students of astrology see for one day from the great inner standpoint the destructive force generated and used through the present use of astrology, they would turn from it as from a poisonous serpent waiting to strike death into their veins. I say to you, beloved students, in the name of your light and progress, and all progress, stand within your own mighty I Am Presence, and let not your attention be held or divided by any outer thing if you wish to avoid the wheel of birth and rebirth indefinitely. From the great love of my heart, seen and knowing from the inner standpoint as you do not and cannot possibly as yet, I urge you to avoid everything that savors of a negative expression or condition. Then you shall rise in the wings of your mighty I Am Presence into the everlasting freedom and blessing of the perfect, eternal, limitless light. As I said, I do not wish in any manner to intrude upon your free will, but the gates of eternal freedom are open before you, if you will but believe the truth I have uttered, which will enable you to enter within these gates and receive the eternal blessing of the light waiting there to enfold you. If there are conditions in your life, home, or environment that you wish to be rid of, command, through the I Am Presence, that they be dissolved and consumed before its mighty light and power. Beloved students who have come under this radiation, with you we shall not touch upon this subject again. May the I Am Presence within you enable you to see the light and truth of which I have spoken. I have seen within you the glorious light that can be quickened into a dazzling radiance, enabling you to express perfection. Hence, of my own volition, have I offered my humble assistance, but if the personality persists in allowing the attention to be held on anything but the mighty I Am Presence, which I know is the mightiest and only raising presence and solver of all problems, then my humble efforts must necessarily be in vain. I assure you, dear ones, you have reached a point where you must go up or down, with your determined attention and acknowledgment constantly held on the mighty I Am Presence. There is no condition force or presence in earth or heaven that can prevent your wondrous, glorious attainment into everlasting freedom and protection. If you have not that within you which causes you to feel and tells you of the great divine love that enables me to voice this truth to you for your protection, then we must but wait such time as the truth of it does appear within you. When students and individuals have once learned of and acknowledged the mighty I Am Presence, and then allow their attention to longer be held by or upon other things, whether it be consciously or unconsciously, makes little difference, for they are deliberately turning their backs to the presence, which is the source of their being and life within them that enables them to move their bodies without. I declare with all the love of my being that I am the presence, enabling you to see and feel this truth and stand by and within it for the sake of your own wondrous progress. Those who will hold steadfast enough to the mighty presence will find abundant proof coming into their experience of its limitless power and intelligence. Beloved students, many hands of the ascended host are extended to you give their assistance when you can hold your undivided attention on the active presence of God in you, and stand there unyielding to the pull of all outer appearances. 
Truth is mighty and does prevail. May you feel its majestic presence at all times. It is a mistake on the part of the student to feel disappointment because a certain thing he has worked on does not manifest instantly, when as yet he has not generated great enough power and activity to produce it that quickly. The attention must always be on the I am only. Suppose I were to declare, I am the mighty I am presence in action, and then an hour later I allowed my attention to be fixed on a star in a so-called adverse aspect of me, or the outer condition that indicates disaster of some kind. Do you not see how that would annul the statement I had made and would liberate the power of freedom? Jesus said, You cannot serve two masters. This means that you cannot divide attention, for you must stop, look, and listen. I tell you, you cannot make steady progress if you give power to anything but your mighty I am presence. The unfortunate thing with so many students is they do not hold long and steadily enough to the mighty truth of their being to gain momentum and strength enough to stand against the pull of suggestion and outer appearance. The strange thing to me is that when the student's attention has been once drawn to the all-power of the I am presence, which is the only active principle of life they have, God in action within and about them, they cannot or do not see that they are dividing the power when the attention is fixed on other things, and but delaying the magnificent activity and accomplishment which the I am presence would otherwise bring forth. However, having gone through the mill, so to speak, we have infinite patience to wait until the beloved student can grasp his scepter of dominion of this mighty I am presence and hold it. I could bring you records of the most appalling things done through the suggestion of astrology. Crimes are committed every week of the year by the suggestions given out through it. The suggestion given sets the law into action to accomplish it. When your attention is on a thing, the power within yourself goes instantly into it. If the astrologers do not stop holding the thought of death against, she will pass out. It is criminal is a child of God and is entitled to live here as long as decreed. I shall do what I am permitted to protect. There are crimes so much worse than physical murder that there is no comparison, because they are committed deliberately by people who know better than to do them. There is one certain unfailing action of the law, and that those who do these things must pay the penalty of a like experience. To negative suggestions from others say, I am the presence, annulling all this so it cannot affect me, my home, or world. It is the easiest thing in the world to consciously dissipate something that is voiced in your presence. Simply say, I am the only presence acting here. To anything you do not wish to continue, say, Through the presence that I am, this thing shall cease now and forever. Go after it like you were going to knock over a wall, when you really feel and mean a thing. You loose the power that does the thing. Try to realize the limitless power at your command. In the feeling is both sight and hearing, because we can both hear and see without using the faculties of sight and hearing. When one becomes instantly angry, he punctures outer spheres of the quality and the accumulation rides in. Jealousy is the wide-open channel upon which every other destructive activity rides in. When things are done consciously, they have much more power. When the energy is released, it acts because the individual has set it into motion, and it makes no difference whether he be king or a chimney sweep. When the feelings are excited, they are accepting that instant. You can sit and listen to destructive conversation unaffected, so long as you control the feeling of the solar plex. There cannot a thing enter your world unless it be invited. No good ever came of gambling at one time had a most wonderful power and influence about her. She began to play the market, and not only lost the power, but her money as well. Is it not better to stand with your eye on presence than with a gambling channel? Anything that gets your attention is a subtle activity of the outer to pull you away from your freedom. For financial freedom, I am the riches of God flowing into my hands and use that nothing can stop. Say often, the presence I am governs every existing channel and manifestation. It governs all. A student's experience. The student had heard and seen an explosion of light while the physical body was asleep. 
if she had consciously said when she heard the explosion, I draw into my mind and body the strength of the light explosion, she would have received its benefit. The light was the liberating of certain powers for her use. In such experiences, the important thing for the student to do is to be alert, and in every manifestation, be conscious of the indrawing of its power. Rejoice that it is the mighty power of the I Am Presence acting, giving its strength and power to you. Command the outer memory to retain and bring into the outer conscious everything you desire to know. When you use the I Am Presence, you have set the law into motion, and it cannot fail. God does not act except through the consciousness of individuals, else he would not have them here. God can only act in the physical world through his individualizations, and even all nature is governed by individual intelligence, the ground, the plants, and all. There is omnipresent all the force and energy needed for a given purpose when loosed by the I Am Presence. Thus, through the use of the I Am Presence, you can release power of which as yet you have no conception. During the war, when folk said, Thou shalt not pass, he loosed the power by which the decree was fulfilled. He had been in prayer for more than an hour, and when he came out he was so charged with God's energy that as he uttered the command, it became the governing presence in the atmospheric condition about him, and God acted. The words, Thou shall not pass, form a decree. It is dynamic, powerful, real, and loses tremendous power. There is only one power that acts. Give it full freedom. Stand with it and let it act. Stand in it and by it. There is no other power to act. This makes steady progress, like a glacier coming down the mountain. You are steadily moving forward and gaining a momentum against which nothing else can stand. It is an infallible momentum, power, and means of achievement of all good things. There is no permanent dominion except in this. For cleanliness, use frequently. I am the presence here, keeping my clothes and home perfectly spotless. After a time, the force becomes so powerful that it instantly consumes or repels anything not wanted. The more you consciously act upon a thing the more concentrated it becomes. When you say, The presence that I am, charge this with that, you can charge the water so powerfully that it boils with the power of energy there. Do not let anything question your mind as to whether your command worked or not. Whenever commanding, say, I know it is acting with full power. Know what the I am means. Know what it is to you. Know what it can do. Get this and hold fast with unyielding determination. Within these students there is a strength and power to do this, and if they will stand with this mighty I Am Presence, great assistance can and will be given. Benediction Mighty all-pervading intelligence, we invoke thy mighty wisdom governing our every activity. We invoke thy mighty light illuminating each one in the fullness of its dazzling presence, we invoke thy mighty love to enfold all in its mantle of peace. We invoke thy mighty power that love, wisdom, and power may act in perfect unity, that it perfects all things upon which our attention has been fixed. Discourse 16, November 24th, 1932 Thanksgiving Day, the personal ray of Jesus and other created rays. St. Germain, Invocation Thou mighty, wondrous presence, we give praise and thanks for Jesus Christ's presence today. We rejoice in the fullness of the Christ activity, the active presence of God. Out of the fullness of this presence comes pouring like a mighty stream gushing forth from the mountains the energy of illumination. This great and mighty stream of life, with all its attributes of perfection surging into the hearts of mankind, is anchoring in everyone peace, love, harmony, faith, and charity to all. Thou mighty presence, infinite love, enfolding all mankind. Give special notice to these earnest students who have come under this radiation. Give every assistance that is permissible. Strengthen them to stand unwaveringly in the light and face the truth, joyously willing to pluck out their lives in creation of all undesirable things. Fill all official places with mighty messengers of light. Sustain them by thy mighty ascended host, that they may be strong enough to stand unwavering and successful before any sinister force. 
We give praise and thanks for this day as an uplifting and wonderful memory established in the consciousness of mankind. May that rapidly approaching time come when every day may be a thanksgiving in the hearts of mankind, for thy light ever unfolding all who wish it. I bring you greetings from the Ascended Host and Jesus Himself. The Discourse The first principle of activity from the Godhead is projection or precipitation. Therefore, its nature is to project or precipitate itself. The first activity is the divided rays going forth into individualization, into visible expression. When I speak of individual or visible expression, I use that term because of the physical activity, not that it is not always visible, because it is, but to those in the physical form, I speak of it as visibility. Thus you will see the nature of your being as rays of light, and who you are as the natural quality of life which you so much desire at this time. The day is rapidly approaching when many, many students will begin to use the light rays of which they are a part, especially the ray of vision and sound. Even in your physical world today, there are being discovered means of producing and use of these rays. These are strange activities. I say strange to the visible activity, but natural always to the inner presence. The manner of using these rays at present is crude, it is true, but it will require only another step to take them through the veil. The power of the I Am Presence and intelligence to use these rays will always remain infinitely more powerful than any mechanical contrivance by which they are used. However, to the student who has not yet found his ability to use these rays, the scientist experience will be a wondrous encouragement to knowing the amazing truth of the individual's ability to use them. Here it is important to know that there are natural rays penetrating through all the atmosphere or etheric belt within the Earth's atmosphere. When I say natural, I mean those rays projected from the Godhead or Great Central Sun, which in recent years, shall I say within a few years, have been made permanent. Then there are the created rays, created and projected by the Ascended Host, by those who have raised the body. The latter are the most potent of all rays because they are consciously manipulated. The rays the scientists are contacting are the natural rays, having a certain natural potency. The great need, as stated in the Magic Presence, is the preparation of earnest students who can be raised and taught to use of these rays. There are those among you who can do this, and as they are prepared with a determined steadfastness to the light, they will have more and more of the law revealed to them concerning the use of these potent forces. I feel a very great joy in the possibility before you and your students. I trust that they can find within themselves a strength and steadfast determination to hold fast to the outer and inner work that is being done for them, with a joyous feeling of sureness of the limitless power with true freedom brings. I have from time to time endeavored to give a word of encouragement, and through that enfold them in the radiation of strength, which is fearless and dauntless in its light. The joy, joyous stillness in the attitude of the student is wonderfully encouraging, for the expectant attitude is the right attitude to be maintained. I would suggest that those who have been having unpleasant experiences would consciously withdraw from these conditions all power that they have been giving him, most unknowingly. When it is necessary to discuss some condition to understand it, immediately with following by withdrawing any power that has been given to it, and then know, I am the harmonious presence, ever pervading whatever the condition may be. As I have intimated before, and it is only particularly reached through, I will repeat it again. Anyone, especially the student, who has experienced inharmony or limitation in his mind, home or world, can, with persistent, tensionless effort, by holding with determination to the following statement, keep his home clear of anything undesirable. I am the governing presence, governing in perfect divine order, commanding harmony, happiness in the presence of God, opulence in my mind, my home, and my world. When I say, I am the governing presence, I am fully, consciously aware that I have set in motion the full power and intelligence of God producing the desired condition, and that they are thus self-sustained. It seems to me that it has not been clearly understood that when you use the expression, I am the presence in my mind, home, and world, 
you are not only commanding the conquering presence of this activity through your own consciousness, but you are calling forth the assistance of the I Am or God Presence into your home and world or whomever contacts it. This is so vital for the student to understand. Do not be discouraged if you do not see immediate manifestation of this harmony which you desire, but go right on feeling the conquering I Am Presence. Do you not see that in this consciousness there is no other presence to act except what you are conscious of? All other activity of the outer which is undesirable is but a distorted activity and use of this mighty energy. Therefore, when you say, I am the conquering presence, I command this I am presence to govern perfectly my mind, home, affairs, and world. You have sent forth the greatest decree possible to be given, and you have but to feel the sustaining power of this in the face of every appearance until you find perfection manifest in your mind, home, and world. I wish the students would read this particular part every day to keep before them the mighty truth underlying these statements. Now we come to a vital point, and that is the personal ray or rays sent forth by Jesus direct. Many will ask, why especially Jesus? I answer, because humanity has been taught to look to the presence of Jesus the Christ, few having any knowledge at all of the ascended host of the great masters of the great white brotherhood who wield limitless power to assist mankind. You and your students will have, for the next seven weeks, the personal ray of Jesus the Christ. Those who can put aside any thought of any other personalities with open arms, mentally speaking, welcome these rays into each one's mind, home, and world and will find almost anything possible. I assure all of you that the idea of these personal rays of Jesus the Christ is no imaginary thing, and you, our beloved Master, have the personal thanks of Jesus the Christ for your fearless stand and use of the ascended Jesus Christ presence. As the messenger gives forth riches of wisdom and truth, so should students in their loving sincerity to the teacher, through the I Am Presence, work for the health and prosperity of the messengers. This would open doors to the students not otherwise possible. There are indications at this time that during the next seven weeks revelations may be given to some of a certain use of liquid light. I wish the students' attention to be fixed on this, so that those who are ready may receive. Here let me say that the right attitude of the student is always to rejoice at the advancement of his or her brother or sister, for each individual receives that which is most needed at the time. And if one receives one thing, another may receive something else. So the student should at no time feel that he should have the same thing that someone else receives, in regard to revelation. As no two are alike, or the same state of advancement, you can see how they could not each receive the same thing at the same time. The most wonderful attitude of the student is to continually bless and rejoice at any revelation that comes to his fellow student thus keeping the door wide open to that glorious inner presence at all times. For the encouragement of those interested in aerial transport, I wish to say there is nearing that approach of planes that will be proof against accident. These will make transportation quick, sure, and easy anywhere one wishes to go. The obstructive mental attitude of those interested in aerial navigation, which have been opposing the coming forth of this much-needed knowledge, is rapidly being broken down until there will come forth a flood, so to speak, of wonderful ideas and perfection, which can and will be used in these wonderful means of transportation. Many of you will not need them, but there are always those who do, for one's own aerial equipment within him will always far excel any outward convenience, for the higher body is the most wonderful vehicle of aerial transportation there is. Some of my argumentative friends may suggest that this vehicle is not able to carry great loads, but I say to them, how shall ye judge until ye are able to use this means? It is most amusing to watch the activity of so-called practical minds who feel that there is nothing real except what they can feel and handle. But unless one believes in the limitless power and laws of intelligence of God individualized, he can in no wise receive to any great extent from this mighty inner presence. The practical mind that forever doubts a thing it cannot see is a long way to go unless, as you lop off the undesirable limb of a tree, this limb of doubt be cut off. You know, it is a good idea, after it has been cut off, for you to consume it in the consuming flame, that it does not come back again. It seems so difficult for the student to realize what a tremendous power the consciousness of this consuming presence is. 
to some it is difficult to get away from the thought that it is imaginary, but could you see from the inner standpoint, you would see that it has a mighty presence and power and is very real. I wish you for about two minutes to feel this dazzling ray of light penetrating every atom of your being. There should be splendid accomplishment during the next seven weeks. The reaching out of humanity as Christmas time draws near, with the already added impetus of the Christ force, enables accomplishments to take place at this time which have not before been possible. There are certain activities which must be contacted by the inner presence before the outer attention can be drawn to them. This is hard for the student to understand. The student must first reach out, and he can only reach out through this inner presence. A simple but very wonderful thing is but for one to give praise every night and morning for that magnificent presence of light which animates the mind and body. It is a tremendous thing to feel deeply this thanksgiving for the presence of light which holds within itself all things. Just be grateful to life for all it is and contains. The very presence of life enables us to do the things we are conscious of and desire to do, because we cannot move without this presence, we cannot even think without it. If one would take this statement, I am the presence, thinking through this mind and body, he would receive some very remarkable ideas. The brain is the first point where obstruction begins to register, because that is the point of contact with wrong ideas. Wrong ideas register most quickly and intensely in the brain structure, because that is the field of atomic activity. However, the attention held upon the I am presence so releases the power of perfection, which is within the electron at the center of the atom, that the wrong ideas and obstruction to the light simply dissolve and disappear. Question. Where are you going? Answer. To the Golden City. From this time on until three weeks after New Year's Day, it is a time of great rejoicing in the Golden City, for it gives a great opportunity to convey into the physical world, through the light and sound rays, its own mighty radiance. If humanity could understand and appreciate this fact, remarkable things could take place, but that does not prevent individuals who can grasp it from receiving its remarkable benefit. The very simple thing, if students could only understand and apply it, is to absolutely keep the mind off every personality and know only, I am the only presence there. It would open the doors and oh so wide. Love and a reaching out of the ascended being enable radiation to be given that would not otherwise be possible. One cannot long interfere with the progress or growth of another, for if the one obstructing does not release and relax his hold upon the other who is ready to go higher, the obstructing one will be removed by his own action. If one continues to hold steadfast and sincerely to the light, personalities will be swept aside or harmoniously disconnected from the individual's world. At this state of growth, or rather expansion of the light, it is necessary to know, I am the active presence of all channels of distribution, of all things acting for my good. When the thought comes, this is all I have, nip it in the bud and say, I am the opulence of God in my hands in use today. This is the time to stamp it right out of your mind and feeling. This must be held as a sacred silence within each individual. Take this as a sacred, reverent knowledge to be used. When you take from the I am self, it is impossible for you to take anything from any personality which rightfully belongs to that one. You are decreeing for your world, so you cannot take from anyone when knowing your own law. I am the presence acting everywhere. There is no possibility of division of the I am presence. If you need money, say, I am the active presence bringing this money into my hands and use instantly. It is so important to get away from the importance of money. It is but a means of exchange. Do not give it power. Put all your power back with God, and then when you command, no matter what it is you want, you have all power instantly on hand to bring forth the fulfillment of your decree. The vibration within any element is always the breath of God, eternally self-sustained. All pulsation is the breath of God. The simple consciousness that, I am the presence of perfect health, is this breath of God acting. I am the presence of forgiveness in the mind and heart of every one of God's children. This releases enormous vibratory action after its kind. Hold the following with vividness. I am the pure mind of God. Benediction. 
Thou infinite, mighty personal presence, Jesus Christ, we give praise and thanks for thy radiance, for thy intelligent rays, for thy qualifying presence. We give praise and thanks that we are conscious of that special radiance at this time, and that we may, through the lovingly open door of our consciousness, receive its mighty presence. Discourse 17, November 28, 1932. St. Germain, Invocation. Thou mighty infinite presence, all-pervading intelligence, all-pervading substance of light, thou mighty presence, thou ascended Jesus Christ, now manifest through his mighty radiance. We give praise and thanks unto the light, unto thee, O mighty brother. We give praise unto the central sun, to the one from whose rays we receive today. Out of the fullness of thy radiant life, O God, we bow in adoration before thy mighty presence. I bring you greetings from the great master or god Maru, whose messenger is Nada. He is to one great mountain of this earth, whose mystery shall one day be explained, as the master Himalaya is to the Himalayan range. Nada is with me in the golden city upon whose twin rays we come forth today. During these next seven weeks, as designated as have you have felt, our joint rays shall come to you each time from the golden city. The Discourse when the students are strong enough to bear it, we will bring forth in descriptive expression one of the most stupendous expressions of the right use and wrong use of this mighty I am presence. This actual experience took place in what is now the Andes Mountains in South America, at a remote period when the children of God first began to forget their source, and to claim the mighty energy of which they were aware as their own. Only through that authority could such an experience take place. Students in mankind have but a small conception, even in the distress they have created for themselves, of how mightily this force was used at one time for selfish purpose. A similar condition has never before been known. There still remains today the subterranean city which will be described in which this activity took place. Oh, that the children of God would awaken to the stupendous activity that the powers of light use for the good of humanity when their attention is sincerely focused on that light. If the many students of the various angles of truth in the earth today could put away the ignorance of the outer mind and believe in the seeming miracles all down the ages, how it would break the shell of the outer self and let in the light. The faith to believe in the things not seen is one of the greatest means to open the door to the conscious activity of the light of the I Am Presence. As you use the automobile and airplane to cover distance quickly, so does the great I Am Presence use the body. The body represents the airplane, and the mind is the mighty motor through which the I Am Presence propels it. Students, I am sure, have not understood how subtle a form doubt takes at times, where there is a questioning in the mind, knowing or unknowingly, concerning the all-power of the I Am Presence, it is a subtle form of doubt. Those who want or attempt to argue the question of the reality of the great truth of life, whether they believe it or not, are attempting doubt into their lives. In this day, no sincere reasoning mind, once turning its attention and keeping it firmly fixed on the I Am Presence, can argue, doubt, or question the omnipotence of that I Am Presence. The scarcely recognizable form of doubt that lets into the mind argument concerning the source of its being is but a lack of strength to stand up against the law of resistance, by which growth in the outer can be measured. There is a vast difference between sincere questioning to know the truth and the human propensity to argue against the very reality they want to believe. We always welcome most earnestly sincere questions for truth, but we will not have anything to do with that nature whose dominating propensity is to argue against the reality of truth. The more the argument of truth is admitted into the life of the individual, the greater the barrier that one sets up to surmount before the distant day when he does surmount it. The students who criticize, condemn, or sit in judgment upon this channel of the truth expression will surely find themselves standing upon the edge of a precipice into which they may plunge at any time, for no reason, into the world except their own creation. I wish all to understand, this radiance of the light has been established for a certain definite purpose, and it will go forth doing its work regardless of any personality, or of all personalities in existence. I say this plainly, that the students of this radiation may understand they are dealing with mighty forces which are as real as reality can be, 
And those who cannot stand the test and radiance of the light need never, never blame anyone but themselves. For they have free will and are given the use of the mighty am presence by which they can maintain absolute self-control. I must put plainly before them again. The sure way that they run into deep waters of doubt and questioning is when they are foolish enough to attempt to discuss the sacred truth which has been given them for their own liberation, and use with those who know nothing about it. This much I may say to you. In the past, students who were taken into the retreats for instruction were never permitted, nor do they ever think of discussing the truth with each other. They silently, earnestly apply the instructions of their teacher, and the results they desire are certain to follow. Better were the students stoned in the streets than to condemn, criticize, or judge the light that is given them, for if they will enter into the I Am Presence as directed, every question, every problem in their lives will disappear as the mist before the radiance of the morning sunlight. I take it that all the students are strong enough to hear the truth and use the strength of the I Am Presence to govern and control the outer, so they may receive the full presence, love, wisdom, power, and opulence of the great and mighty I Am Presence, which enables them to think, to feel, to live, and which has given them the desire to reach for the truth of light. I wish to say plainly, and with the wand of fire placed in the conscience of the students, that this brother and sister who are giving this forth are but messengers of those who have known and proved this law for many centuries. These great beings to whom your attention has been drawn are no myth nor figment of the imagination of the outer, but living, wise, loving beings, possessing such power which they may wield or use at their own discretion, that it is not possible for the human mind to conceive it. Always before there has been great, almost limitless time in which the student could wander about making his decision whether he wished to act in the light or wander on in ignorance of its mighty presence and power. The cosmic cycles have turned again and again and again, until the time has come when the children of God must make their decision final, whom they will serve. Never in the history of the world has there been such opportunity or assistance given to the children of earth to face the sunshine of God's eternal light, and walk steadfastly and fearlessly into its radiant splendor, free, forever free, from all limitation, living in the abundance of that light and folding them like a mantle of peace and rest. Again I say to the beloved students, if you cannot feel in your hearts the truth of these instructions brought to you on a golden platter, then don't ever, in the name of your I Am Presence, say or do that which would discourage another from the light he might receive. The plain, unadulterated truth I give to you in the fullness of the great love of my being, that its radiance may cause you to understand and know what it means to dare, to do, and to be silent. Any feeling of questioning in your mind of the reality or genuineness of the source of your instruction but hampers your progress and causes you to require months or years to accomplish what you might easily do in a few weeks with a free, peaceful mind. As one who has chosen you, I know and feel your every thought. It is very easy at times for the student to think that his acts or thoughts are under cover and not known, but to the ascended host there is no act or thought that can be hidden from them, because everything you think or feel is registered in the etheric world about you, as plain as in those on your face. So do not ever make the mistake of feeling that you may think or act in secret. You may readily do this from the outer self, but never from the I Am Presence, which the ascended host, with no obstruction. This, my dear beloved student, is as far as I am permitted to go in helping to set up the guard for you. In the future, no further reference to this will be made. Remember that the decision lies within you to go forward or not. Now I shall say something very encouraging. The only possible reason why the personal ray of Jesus could be given forth to those under this radiation at this time was because seven of this group of students were witness to the ascension of Jesus the Christ 2,000 years ago. He saw and recognized them, and he sees them and is giving not only recognition at this time, but great assistance. As this radiance goes to you, beloved ones, so does it go on reaching into the hearts of those who can receive the presence. Because of this radiation, many who have a deep love for Jesus, or of Jesus, through the Orthodox channels, will be awakened to the presence of the God within. Outside of this, the joint activity of Jesus with the Ascended Host is spreading its mantle of love, peace, and light over humanity, this being the time of year when their attention is most easily gained. 
Beloved ones, does it sound incredible to you when I say the masters of light and wisdom have passages through the earth in all directions, just the same as you have highways for your automobiles and going from coast to coast on the earth? Did you understand the atomic structure of the earth, you would not feel as such an incredible thing for those great ones who have assisted the progress of humanity from the beginning have but to use certain rays, and they walk through the earth as easily as you would walk through the water, different however, in that they leave the opening behind them, while in your walking through the water it closes behind you and the path is not apparent. Just so with the great beings who have blazed the trails for humanity into the light. The trail remains that those children of lesser light may always find the pathway and follow it. If at times they should make a mistake and turn on the byway, they have the I am presence to call them back to the main power and carry them forward until they too may be torch bearers or trailblazers to those still following on. I am the mighty presence who never becomes impatient nor discouraged at the long period in which the children of earth turns aside from the light enjoying the sense activities until they become so repellent to them that with almost their last breath they cry aloud, O oh God, save me. I cannot help but smile to myself as I wonder how some of you may think me a very crabby old fellow, but if so, one who has the courage to tell you the truth of your needs, that you may profit by it. When you come to know me better, you will not think of me such as an old crab after all, so long as a student has a question in the mind. He does not open himself to the truth of instruction fully. If it is seen that it is worth while, determined entirely by the unpreaching of humanity to the light, then the natural rays are made permanent to the earth and placed within the center. The earth is composed of earth, water, and air, the rays of the cosmic fire interpenetrating all the three other elements. The rays pass through the earth, and where they interlock, they soften and form this luminous substance or radiance, the concentrated activity of the light. One ray enters the crust of the earth at a point just south of the center of the Gobi Desert, and the other one enters just east of Lake Titicaca in the Andes Mountains. It is the largest lake in South America and the highest in the world. It was a point of very great importance centuries ago. These are the two most intense points of light in the earth. There is always a cosmic activity taking place at certain cycles which may not be interfered with. The great cosmic laws are exact to the minutest detail, and there is no such thing as failure nor accident connected with them. A great change which takes great quantities of people out of the body only takes them where they cannot fight for a while. In the World War, both sides hated the men they were sent against, and also the government that sent them because of being sent. Never consider anything in the world but the great I Am Presence. Watch and govern your feeling, for if you do not, it will lead to a point where it will catch you unaware. Many times, the student who knows the law, when something comes up and he is disappointed, should turn to the I Am Presence immediately and ask what is to be done. But instead, he so often holds the attention on the disappointment, and then it sometimes almost takes an earthquake to shake him loose from it. Take the statement, This resistance must give way, and the sight and hearing must come through. Take the firm stand, I am the presence of your perfect sight and hearing. To heal those conditions, each should take the statement, I am my perfect sight and hearing. The Arabian Nights tales, they originally came from the masters who gave them out as veiled truth to help humanity. And those who believed them through faith received marvelous manifestations. In the beginning of those marvelous experiences, there must be faith to tide over until we can manifest the reality, for faith is a sustaining power, and if we can keep it generated, it becomes reality. There are always the two activities of the law when you get deep enough into the action of it. They are first, condensation, and second, etherealization. Go serenely along and do not let time, place, nor things interfere. The outer mind must be calm and steady and the outer and inner must become one. As the attention is fixed on, or with firm determination, more and more of the inner operation is revealed, until you can consciously manipulate it. Benediction Presence of Meru, Nada, and the Great Ascended Host, we give praise and thanks for thy radiant splendor, for thy wisdom, for thy substance which are generating to make visible. We give praise and thanks that thy great wisdom and intelligence are one with the great I Am, which I Am ever bringing more of itself forward into conscious action. 
We give praise and thanks that in the acknowledgement of the I Am Presence, we have the key to all things visible and invisible. Discourse 18, December 1, 1932 Saint Germain, Invocation Thou mighty, illumining presence which I am, in gratitude and praise, we enter into the fullness of thy presence today, and forever receive thy limitless blessing, thy strength and courage, thy joyous enthusiasm, all of which is self-sustained. We know there is but one presence, I am that presence of all activity, all wisdom and power, and in the freedom of that mighty presence we stand serene, unmoved among all outer things which seem to point to the contrary. I stand serene in thy great forever. I claim thy great dominion in my place. I stand in the radiance of God eternal, ever looking thee full in the face. I bring you greetings from the great host, and also their blessing for the happy enthusiasm which has been entered into. We shall endeavor to sustain you in that joyous enthusiasm, as the hub of this radiation, because all the students will feel and act it. Far more has been accomplished this week than was anticipated and we enter with you into the great rejoicing. The loving blessing of each student under the other most commendable, and this simple thing will open a door oh so wide to receive the fullness intended for them. The Discourse I would be so pleased to have every one of the students, just at this time especially, use the statement with all the enthusiasm they can command. I am. I am, I know I am, the use of God's limitless opulence. Here I wish to explain that when there is a group of students in accord, working the same principle, and they use this statement, they not only bring into their world and use this great opulence, but they bless their associate students with the same thing, because I am the presence in each one. This is the mighty power of cooperative action which everyone should use. The students who maintain a loving blessing to each other are really held in the embrace of the great I Am Presence, and when they acknowledge its action, they are commanding the same blessing and action for the other students as they are for themselves. This is the correct attitude to be sustained, and if maintained sincerely in the heart of each one, no one within this embrace will want for any good thing. But the student who allows any feeling to remain of unkindness to the others will shut himself away from this great radiance and blessing. Now let us enter into the keynote of what you touched this morning, the simple understanding of God's will and free will. God's will is the opulence of goodwill, the birthright of every one of God's children. When you are reaching to the light in the use of the mighty I Am Presence with sincerity, it is not possible for you to do otherwise and call it for God's will to be done. As children of God the Father, who has given His children free will that they may choose, they must understand that it is for them alone to decree what shall act in their lives and world. Having free will, the student must understand that God can only act in his life and world according to his conscious direction. God is the principle of all life, and each child of God is an individualized, conscious, active part of that one great principle of life and love and power. God has given into the keeping of every one of his children this marvelous consciousness, which is omnipresent, eternally elastic as it were, which can be drawn into a focal point to write with a pen of light or expand to encompass the earth. Consciousness is always subject to direction through the use of the free will. The most unfortunate understanding established by the orthodox idea that God acts of his own free will in the life of the individual or a nation is positively not true. God can only act through the mind of his own individualization, which is clothed with the personality that you see about you. These personalities are but vehicles of use and expression of this mighty individuality, which is God's will and your free will, and it only comes into use by your conscious direction. I say to you that every function of your body is sustained through conscious action, although you are not aware of it. But as you reach deeper and deeper into the consciousness of the mighty I Am Presence, you will come to understand that it is impossible for any outer action to take place without self-conscious action. A simple proof of this is what any of you may test at any moment. I wish to do some physical act. Preceding that activity there always comes the thought to do it, otherwise the hand or body would not move into action. 
that which people have chosen to call involuntary action, is the thing that has mystified their understanding of their own being. The student should take this humble explanation and meditate upon it often, for it will clear the mind of any obstruction. You are self-conscious, free will, acting beings. This is really of vital importance to these blessed, earnest students. I love every one of them, both men and women, even though the ladies' husbands might object. In both of your classes this week, the individualized presence of Jesus the Christ stood in your midst, in the form of a tree of life, each student being a branch, from his pillar or dazzling radiance within which was his visible personal form. His form was within the tree of life, but not visible, not to mention others of the ascended host who were present. There were also Nada, Cha'ara, Lanto, and myself. I wish to say that class of blessed boys with the one pink rose in their midst, that I joyously hold them all in my fond embrace, so they may use and inhale the radiance of my being. They have freedom and dominion within their grasp, if they will hold fast to these instructions and apply them. Further, I wish the students to understand that the stream of life flowing through the mind and body always comes into them pure and unadulterated, containing within it all the strength, courage, energy, and wisdom that can ever be desired. But by the lack of control of their thoughts and feelings, they are unknowingly requalifying this pure essence with the outer ideas upon which the attention has been fixed. To form the habit every morning, the mind is not otherwise occupied by being self-conscious that I am the only intelligence acting, will keep that mighty, wonderful stream of life from being discolored, and I shall say disqualified by the wrong conception of the outer activity of the mind, this is the simple secret of really all perfection. This great life comes into everyone's use pure and perfect, but through lack of understanding the outer mind is constantly requalifying it with discordant conceptions and thus human beings change its otherwise perfect action into that which they find expressed in limitation and discord in their outer activity. This should make clear to the students a simple activity which they should self-consciously maintain in order to keep this marvelous, perfect life that is constantly flowing through your mind and body in its pure, fragrant state. For I tell you truly, that those who will follow and maintain this idea will find the emanations from their own bodies becoming rarer than the lily or the rose. Further, in the consciousness of this perfection, which is constantly flowing into their use, they can know it as a perfect health and beauty of face and form, until its radiance shines forth like the sun. O oh, beloved students, when it is so simple, requiring so little consciously sustained effort, is it not worth all it requires on your part to enter into the fullness of this life stream and receive its fullness and blessing? In the Oriental activity, there was a secret society, in fact, it began in China, maintained gloriously in the light, until the one then in charge at the head of the order thought in one of the war ravages that his daughter, whom he loved so deeply, was killed by an Englishman, which, however, was not the case. But it brought about the breaking up of the order, and the pictures of Fu Manchu, of which I think there have been four produced, are the picturing of this to the outer world showing how the light may be distorted by something starting the fiend of revenge. This one known as Fu Manchu was, at the beginning of that activity, a wondrous, beautiful soul, and it shows how sometimes the ravages of war and lack of control of the thought and feeling in the individual bring about such distortion in life stream. In connection with the South American activity, which the present work has drawn joyously to their attention until this focus of radiation began, it was doubted by most, except Nada and myself, the possibility of establishing such a focus in this busy Western world. But they did not know what I did, the fact of our long association not having been revealed to them, so I said on my own responsibility, I shall try this out. Now I have the full cooperation of all who might have questioned. The master from Venus and Lanto also stood with us. I said to them, The time has come when there are those outside of the retreats who can be made true messengers of the light. Thanks to you, I have been proven right. Now, of course, I ask you all to stand with me in the sustaining of this. It proves that it is possible to establish this mighty active presence in the midst of a hailstorm. I have always maintained this, and most of the time I have stood alone. But the ability of the students to grasp the use of the I Am Presence is making tremendous things possible and I say sincerely for your encouragement, 
that with this marvelous condition maintained, which has come to this point, it is not impossible to have various ones of these ascended beings sit in your midst, as visible as your own physical bodies, and speak to you. This is not just a matter of the desire of the students for it, but rather the preparation of the students for it. Until recently, of course, this good brother has not known it, but for thirty years he has been being prepared for it. Half of that time your Mrs. Ballard's preparation was going on in the invisible, and it has been a remarkably beautiful thing to all who observed it. Question. The other night, while in deep meditation, I heard the words, Into the city of Delhi. Answer. Which really means, Into the city of light. Question. On Monday, November 29, 1932, I heard in the morning before the discourse, and again today before the discourse, the words of Jesus, Ye have been with me in my sorrows, you shall now behold me in my glory, and see the reward which my Father doth give me. Answer. And so it shall be in your outer experience. The very words which Jesus used from time to time all may use, and will use sometimes somewhere with fulfillment. For the words he used at all times were life, and contained within them that ascended life or perfect life. Question. How is the political situation? Answer. There will not be nearly so much accomplished by the element that sought entrance as they anticipated. The old saying that if you give a calf rope enough it will hang itself is true with certain forces. Sometimes when they think they have won an easy victory, they have sounded their own death knell. The accomplishment of the past few days drew the attention of many in the Golden City, who, as we projected the vision and sound rays today, came to look and behold the accomplishment. I say this for the encouragement of the students. While we are giving forth the work today, those in the Golden City are sending forth to the students their glorious radiation. It has been a great joy for me to prove that in the land of America, for that which I have worked so long, that there were those who could receive what you are receiving and giving forth at this time. There are those masters from Venus who have seen this with me for some time. The Kumaras' field of action was in other ways, but they are now observant of this accomplishment. There is no radiation going forth anywhere in the universe except through conscious projection. The radiation projected from the stars, so-called to our earth, does not and cannot come into contact with the earth without the conscious direction of the cosmic being, who is the conscious directing presence of that star or planet. This conscious direction is what makes the radiation from one planet to another reach its destination, but the radiation thus directed does not carry any adverse aspect to any visual air. The universal cosmic laws of the earth which impel growth through the law of experience, hold within themselves that which you know as resistance. If there were not that which the individual knows as resistance, he would not make any conscious effort, and this would make it impossible for advancement and understanding, or the return to the Father's house from which the children of earth have strayed. Resistance has nothing whatever to do with discord. Resistance is a natural law. Discord is a human creation. There is no discord in the universe except that which the personality creates. Take the dynamic consciousness. I am the pure mind of God and everyone present here. Well, this shuts out human desire. Take the consciousness. I am the governing presence of this. The desire first comes into mind. And if you take the consciousness, I am the pure mind of God, it consumes the thought and keeps the human mind clear from the desire entirely. When the liquid precipitates in the hand instantly, qualifying it as liquid light, and it will manifest as that, give the command for that quality before beginning the precipitation. One student should not expect to see the same activity as another. The students are not supposed to see or feel alike. There is not a moment in the day that we do not visualize something, because the power of vision is acting all the time. Keep all out of the mind except the picture you want for that is all with which you are concerned. Do not let the attention become focused on the seeming emptiness. Benediction. In great devotion, in the fullness of our hearts of love, in the fullness of our adoration to the guide presence which I am, the ascended Jesus Christ, we pour forth our gratitude and praise for the sustaining presence, the good of every description held within this radiance of which you are receiving hourly. Thou mighty presence, as we find ourselves held within thy mighty embrace, we become imbued with thy radiant intelligence, thy marvelous strength, thy invincible courage to hold constantly within thy mighty light. We thank thee.
Discourse 19, December 5, 1932. St. Germain, Invocation. Thou majestic presence of the ascended Jesus Christ, thou who hast gained thy eternal dominion over all things, thou who dost rest serene in the heart of the eternal Father, pouring forth thy wondrous radiance, enfolding all mankind, we give praise and thanks to thee. Our hearts fill with great rejoicing at the ascended host with thee see and manipulate the dawning eternal light for the blessing of humanity. Through his own personal ray, Jesus will now speak his wish to the students. The Discourse by Beloved Jesus When I said, I am the open door which no man may shut, I meant humanity to understand. I referred to the great I am which is the life of every individual manifest in form. I did not wish to convey that the personal Jesus was the only one to whom this great privilege was ordained. Each one of you, beloved children of the One Father, has the same mighty presence within you, the Great I Am, that I have, and that I had at that time by which I achieved the final and eternal victory. Here I wish you to understand for encouragement, strength, and certainty in your minds that the consciousness I used for this great victory was the use of the I Am Presence which you are now being taught. I had made search through all the avenues available at the time, and at last a determination and desire for the truth led me to the great Master whom you shall one day know. He gave to me this inner secret and mighty acknowledgment, turning to me to the mighty Presence of the Great I Am. Through his radiation I was able to comprehend, and at once began using it. This is the only way by which any individualization of the ray of God may achieve the eternal victory, and build his structure upon a firm foundation, from which no outer activity can ever disturb him. At this time I wish to convey the simple, all-powerful use of this presence to you. All who have achieved the mighty victory, who have been able to raise their bodies as I did, or who raised them before, have used the conscious activity of that mighty, eternal presence I am. When I said to my disciples and to humanity, The things that I have done shall ye do also, and either graver things shall ye do, I knew whereof I spoke, knowing that within each individualization or child of God there was this mighty I am presence, by whose use you are impelled forward with no uncertainty, I say impelled because I mean just that. The constant use of your I am presence does impel you forward in spite of any activity of the outer self, so long as a single idea is held firmly, storms, distress, and disturbances may rage about you, but in the consciousness of the I am presence, you can and are able to stand serene, unmoved by the seething vortex of human creation which may or may not be about you. There is but one way by which you and the Father may become eternally one, and that is through the full acceptance of His I Am Presence, energy, love, wisdom, and power which He has given you, golden links, golden steps, by which you climb serenely upward into your final achievement. Sometime, somewhere, every individualization of God the Father must find His way back to the Father through His I Am Presence, fulfilling his cycle or cycles of individualizations in the use of the activity of the other self. The earth is the only sphere in which there is density of the atomic structure that you experience. The conscious recognition and use of the I Am Presence, which you are, steadily raises the vibratory action of your atomic structure, unclothing and liberating electronic activity which is hidden within the atom, enabling you to become self-luminous beings. I wish it here distinctly understood by all who may receive this or ever contact it, that I am not and never was a special being created of God different from the rest of humanity. It is true that I had made previous conscious effort, and had attained much previous to the embodiment which I won the eternal victory. My choice of experience two thousand years ago was to set the example which every individualization of God would and must sooner or later follow. How I urge you, beloved children of God, to look upon me as your elder brother, one with you. When I said, or left the word that, I am with you always, the I am presence, which I am and which you are, is one. Therefore, do you not see how I am with you always, 
Think deeply on this and try to feel its reality. At the time and after my ascension, I saw the immensity of the radiation I would be able to pour forth to my beloved brothers and sisters upon the earth from the sphere in which I had become fitted to dwell. I wish to say to you in all truth, every individual who will send his conscious thought to me, with the desire to be raised above the limitations of earth or of his own creation, and will live accordingly, will receive every assistance from me that is possible to be given, according to the steps of growth and consciousness which he maintains from time to time. Do not misunderstand me at this point. When I refer to growth, I am speaking of humanity in general. I do not refer to some who have previous attainments sufficient which, in their present use and full acceptance of their I am presence, they may rend the veil of human creation and step forth into the embrace of the ascended, blazing I am presence at any time. There are some in the group of students already drawn together for whom it is possible to do this. That depends entirely upon themselves, upon the calm, poised intensity by which they become conscious of their I am presence. These great tidings I bring to you because I have proved them in my own personal experience. Before I become fully decided in what manner I should leave the example of humanity, I suddenly, from an inner impulse, began to use a statement. I am the resurrection and life. Within forty-eight hours after I began using that statement with great rejoicing, I saw what was to be done. And I wish to assure you that it was the conscious use of the mighty statement, I am the resurrection and the life, which enabled me to make the ascension in the presence of so many, and imprint or record upon the etheric records that example for all humanity which will stand eternally present. It was unfortunate that the veil of the orthodox idea was drawn over the minds of people, preventing the comprehension that each one had within himself the I am presence, the same as I did, by which he could attain do the same things I did and win the eternal victory. Such beloved students is my personal message I leave with you, spoken through the light and sound ray into which any of you may enter, see and hear with sufficient conscious preparation. Again I urge to think of me as your elder brother, ready to give you assistance at all times. Do not think of me as a transcendent being so far beyond your reach that contact is impossible, for I am presence which enabled me to make the ascension is the same I am presence that will enable you to make the ascension as I did. Only today you have the assistance of the great ascended host of beings, who have won the eternal victory and joyously stand at your service as you make yourself ready. With my love I enfold you. I again repeat, I am with you always. St. Germain, did I not have a surprise for you? benediction. Into the fullness of thy mighty silence, O great presence, we come to rest, to feel thy peace, to love thy harmony pervading all. O mighty love presence which beats the hearts of all mankind, strengthen thyself within their hearts, draw and hold their conscious attention upon thee, the great love star in the heart of each one. Glorify thy presence and thy creator in them, bless all mankind with that strength to look only to thee, and do stand steadfast facing thee. Discourse 20, December 8, 1932 St. Germain Invocation Thou mighty, invincible I am presence, speak thyself into the hearts of the children of men. Fill their hearts and minds to overflowing with the magnificence of thy presence, with the conscious strength to look to thee and know thee as the One, the mighty, eternal source of all things, by which the consciousness of mankind is sustained. Make them to know thy great ownership, that it is thee alone who art the owner and giver of all things, that they may thus manifest unselfishly one to the other. We thank thee. I bring you greetings from the great host who are ever pouring their radiant presence into your lives. The Discourse it is with great rejoicing that the many who have been observant of this accomplishment see how truly the students are entering into the mighty I Am Presence, and how the things that have been disturbing are being dissolved and are dropping away as though they never had been. Beloved students, can you realize how great our rejoicing is? We have trod the pathway of attainment into the great freedom of mastery over all limitation. We rejoice to see you entering into this presence which, if maintained, will bring you certainly and surely to the same freedom. 
It is only when the outer becomes sufficiently obedient, giving all power to the great inner presence, that one finds peace and rest in this mighty acknowledgment. In that peace and rest flows a mighty river of energy, like a mountain stream flowing through a fertile land, lined with flowers and perfect vegetation. So in the peace that passes understanding do you move more and more, finding that eternal river of energy flowing into and through your being, spreading its blessing and opulence into your life and experience everywhere you go. While it is true that the intelligence is the channel through which you must receive, yet as you feel with deep sincerity the truth of the I Am Presence, you will find the stillness becoming greater and greater until one day. Thou shalt see the door of the creation open wide before thee, and thou shalt step forth with open arms into that freedom, inhaling the fragrance of the pure atmosphere of the etheric world. Within there wilt be able to mold the plastic substance into the perfection of everything upon which thy desire is held. You are making such splendid progress. Do not let any fear of persons, places, conditions, or things interrupt or disturb you, for the presence of the light stands before you, beckoning you on that you may be held in its fond embrace, receiving of its boundless riches of every description which holds in store for you. I shall now say something which may seem astonishing, but I assure you it is very true. Last night, as the question was asked, had you all been together before, I wish to say that it would not have been possible for you to have been drawn into this intensified action of the great inner law if you had not previously had harmonious association and training. While it may be difficult at first for you to comprehend it, you are receiving intensified training which heretofore has only been given after a three-year probation in the retreat. Some of you have stored up treasures of energy. I mean by that, energy created by your conscious activity through your I Am Presence. Others have stored up treasures of light. Again, others have treasures of love. Others have gold and jewels which were placed in keeping to be used in this embodiment. Several of you are on the point of releasing indivisibility into your hands these stored up treasures. Do not think I have gone into fancy daydreaming, but I am calling this to your attention for your benefit and blessing. I wish each one of you to go by yourself sometime during the day for at least five minutes and talk to your I Am Presence something like this. Great Masterful Presence, which I am, I love, I adore thee. I give back unto thee the fullness of all creative power, all love, all wisdom, and through this power which thou art. I give thee full power to make visible in my hands, and use the fulfillment of my every desire. I no longer claim any power as my own, for I now claim thee, the only and all-conquering presence in my home, my life, my world, and my experience. I acknowledge thy full supremacy and command of all things, and as my consciousness is fixed upon an achievement, your invisible presence and intelligence takes command and brings the fulfillment into my experience quickly, even with the speed of thought. I know that thou art ruler over time, place, and space. Therefore thou requirest only now to bring into the visible activity thy every perfection. I stand absolutely firm in the full acceptance of this, now and forever. And I shall not allow my mind to waver from it, for at last I know we are one. Beloved students, you may add or weave into this anything else you wish for your requirement. And I assure you, if you can live in this and I shall endeavor to help you do so, you will experience the opening of the floodgates of God's abundance. I think here that I should explain to you the most important, the most desirable thing that anyone can do is to fix within his or her mind the one permanent necessity, and that is, to keep at it until one reaches so deeply and firmly into this mighty I Am Presence that all love, light, good, and riches flow into his life and experience by inner propelling power that not of outer personalities may at any time, anywhere, ever interfere with. This is the object of true training. This is why students were brought into the retreats as they could be found ready or sufficiently progressed, because, as I have said before, it is easy enough to solve your problems as they come along. But I ask you, what good does it do to continue to solve problems unless you have something somewhere to which you can anchor that raises you above the consideration of any problem? To find your I Am Presence, and anchor to it is the only desirable thing to do. Until you come to this point of firm anchorage to your great I Am Presence, of course it is necessary to solve your problems as they come along. 
But how much better it is to enter in and set free that mighty presence, energy in action which has already solved the problem before they appear to you. Is this not more acceptable than to awaken every morning and find these problems coming up, staring you in the face, as though they were something really important which, after all, they are not? Yet I am sure you will agree with me that some of them, or at least your outer sense of them, is that they are tremendously ponderous. With your glorious obedience to the divine principle of created beings, you shall move along the pathway with your armor of invincible protection buckled on, until the intensity of the very light that you enter into will no longer require the armor. Is it not worth all the effort it takes to accomplish it, that you may even move into this glorious freedom? Then when you awaken in the morning, you will no longer find these visitors appear. As I have spoken these words, I have held you, each one, in the searchlight of my vision, even without your permission, so that when you hear these words, you will feel the inner conviction of them with a strength which will delight you. When critical or disturbing thoughts try to find entrance into your consciousness, slam the door quickly and command them to be gone forever. Do not give them a chance nor time to gain a foothold, remembering always that you have the strength and sustaining power of the mighty I Am Presence to do this. Should you have difficulty in holding the door shut, talk to your I Am Presence and say, See here, I need help. See that the door to this disturbance is closed and keep it closed forever. I want you to get fixed in your consciousness that you can talk to your I Am Presence, the same as you could talk to me, believing that I had limitless power, because I tell you, it is no idle comment when I say, you can cause this mighty presence to handle every condition in your entire experience and raise you into its freedom and dominion of all things. As some of you have already reached into the activity of the universal substance, I want to call the attention of all of you to the fact that the substance of your bodies and this sustenance seem to be invisible about you, is immensely sensitive to your conscious thought and feeling, by which you can mold it into any form you wish. The substance of your body can, by your conscious thought and feeling, be molded into the most exquisite beauty of form, your eyes, hair, teeth, and skin made dazzling with radiant beauty. This should be very encouraging to the ladies, I am sure will be to the gentlemen, only they do not like to admit it. Beloved brothers and sisters, when you look into the mirror, say to that which you see, through the intelligence and beauty which I am, I command you to take on perfect beauty of form, for I am that beauty in every cell of which you are composed. You shall respond to my command and become radiantly beautiful in every way, in thought, word, feeling, and form. I am the fire and beauty of your eyes, and I carry forth this radiant energy into everything to which I look. Thus you can cause to come into appearance the perfection, which will give you all the encouragement you want, to know that I am always the governing presence. I wish to say to you who desire your form to become more symmetrical, Start your hands at the shoulder and bring them down over the body of the feet, feeling the perfection or symmetry of the form you wish. Through your hands will go the energy or quality which you desire to manifest. If you will try this with deep, earnest feeling, you will be amazed at the result. This is the greatest reducer in the world. This, I assure you, will cause the flesh, as it comes into more beautiful symmetry and perfection, to become firm and yet subtle in every way, because you are sending the energy of the I Am Presence through these cells, causing them to obey your command. This may sound ridiculous, but I tell you it is one of the best, surest, and most perfect ways to bring about the perfection of the body. I tell you, anyone who will practice this will bring the body in any condition that one desires. I want the students to get the fullness of the idea that they are masters of the form, their minds, and their world, and can inject to them whatsoever they wish. The pure and perfect life of God is flowing through you every instant. Why not switch off the old design and switch on the new? Do you not see how important it is to perfect the body? What can the inner presence do with a body that is sick or out of harmony at all the time? When this is the case, the attention becomes so fixed upon the body that the I Am Presence cannot get the attention but a little part of the time. It is so easy, if you will but do it, with this treatment of the flesh with the energy of the I Am Presence, it becomes firm and perfect. The reason I speak of this with such deep, earnest feeling today is because I see the change and improvement in almost everyone, and by special conscious attention directed to this, 
how much more quickly will each be brought into the perfection which he desires? When an individual has an abnormal abdomen, and anything that is more than straight is abnormal, he should raise his left hand into position, palm up, move the right hand in a rotary motion over the abdomen, moving from left to right. Each time the hand passes over it, feel deeply the absorbing activity. The quick charge of energy through the hand goes into the cells, contracting and reducing them into a normal condition. I assure you this instruction is no idle fantasy, but is a tremendous import, and it will accomplish the purpose for which it is used, absolutely without question, if applied with earnest feeling. The consciousness, of course, should be the energy flowing through the right hand, is the all-powerful, absorbing presence, consuming the unnecessary cells and bringing the body into a perfect, normal condition. This will not only adjust the abnormal size of the abdomen, but will penetrate through the form, charging the intestinal activity with a cleansing, purifying process, which will be of inestimable benefit. Those who have found the activity of these organs lazy will find them quickened into normal action. I assure you that the ladies will not need to use rolling pins or roller on the floor. Also, I assure you, ladies are not the only ones who use the rolling pins. The unfortunate, almost appalling condition is that individuals, having with them this mighty God presence, will give every imaginable power to outside things to produce results within and upon themselves. When whatever or remedial agent they use, whether exercise, drugs, or anything else, has little effect, if any, except the quality and the power they consciously give these agents. This treatment acts upon the cells where they are, be they bones or flesh. How prone the outer mind is to question the ability of this inner self to handle any of the part of the body. If it will handle one kind of a cell, it will handle all. Make the outer accept the full power of the inner presence, and thus let it expand into use in all things. The outer mind, through long habit, has given enormous power to drugs and remedial agents of every kind. But do you not see that the only thing that does is the power and authority you give it to have an effect upon your body? I do not mean for a single instance that individuals who do not become aware of that I am present should cease all remedial agents. But if they will fix in their minds firmly that no outer thing has any power in their experience except what they give it, they will begin to rise out of the limitations into which they have placed themselves. Here let me say that 90% of the power given to outer things is unconsciously given, and even most students are not aware of it. Now turn about and give this great God presence within you all the power to do the things you require and wish to do, and will accomplish them with a speed and certainty far beyond what any outside remedial agent could do. Some will grasp this idea with tremendous tenacity, while others will require more effort, but it is surely worthwhile making any effort to accomplish it. Remember the I Am Presence knows all things for all eternity, in all ways, past, present, and future, without limit. If the student would think of this great presence, contemplate it, and know that it is all love, wisdom, and power, then when he fixes his attention on something to be accomplished, he knows this presence is the open door, the all-powerful accomplishment, and it cannot fail. Call on the law of forgiveness and direct the energy of the Master Self to correct and adjust the wrong, and in that way obtain freedom from its reaction. You see, my dear people, that there is so much unnecessary power given to the outer activity and stress of things, which the I Am Presence cares absolutely nothing about. It is at no time concerned with the mistakes of the outer self. If the individual but understands that he could turn away from all these discordant activities and give the Master I Am Presence within all authority and power to dissolve and dissipate the wrong condition, he could never in any way feel a reaction from his wrongdoing. When the individual allows himself or herself to continue to criticize, condemn, or judge another of his fellow beings, he is not only injuring the other person, but is unknowingly admitting into his own experience the very element that he has seen wrong in the other person. The true understanding of this will make it easy for individuals to forever see such undesirable activity when they know that it is for their own protection. Let us put it in another way. Whatever the conscious attention is fixed firmly upon, that quality is impelled into the experience of the individual. Whatever an individual sees with deep feeling within another individual, he forces into his own experience. 
This is the indisputable proof of why the only desirable feeling to be sent out from any individual is the presence of divine love, and I mean by that pure, unselfish love. Students sometimes wonder why they have so many conditions in their experience to handle as they become more and more sensitive. It is because they see an appearance which they have been taught to know is not real, and by allowing their attention to become fixed upon it, they not only invite, but force it into their own worlds, and then have a battle in order to clean house. This can be avoided by instantly taking the attention off the appearance and knowing, I am, I am, I know I am, free from this thing forever, no matter what it is. This all comes, of course, from a lack of self-control in the individual, or an unwillingness to use the self-control to govern the outer. There are these two distinct conditions with students, one is willing enough to make the effort, but unknowing it allows his attention to become fixed on the undesirable things. The other one, through a quality of stubbornness, is unwilling to make the necessary effort to conquer it. No teacher should at any time hold the thought of criticism about any student, for if he does, he will invite the same criticism upon himself. If students get the right idea about this, they will stop it for their own protection. If one keeps silently seeing a discrepancy in another, it is even worse than the spoken word, for it allows the force to accumulate. When discrepancies are forced upon your attention, simply say to your I am presence, There is the I am presence within that person, and with that human I am not concerned. It matters not whether it is a person or inanimate object. The moment you see an imperfection, you are forcing that quality into your own experience. This is so important it cannot be stressed enough. Your first consideration should always be to your own divine self, adoration to it always. This gives you the opportunity and strength to rise to the heights where you can give help to thousands, where now it can only be a few. No amount of service can be of any permanent benefit unless the individual first accepts and gives adoration to his own divine self, the mighty I Am Presence. Those who want to serve the light and really do good should understand this clearly. When students say, if I only had the money, what good I could do? It is exactly the reverse thing that they ought to do. If one will enter into the I Am Presence, he will have all the money he wants and it cannot be kept away from him. Take the stand with everyone. There is only the I Am Presence acting there in this person. It is much better not to touch upon a thing than to give an insufficient explanation. All outer experience is but a discipline. For those who are coming into this work, the present training is really a finishing school or experience, and is why some of them feel it is a little strenuous. All the ascended hosts feel with great joy the love and gratitude poured out to them. Of course, they respond almost without limit. I am is all there is, everywhere present, visible and invisible. The consciousness most needed for each individual will come from time to time, as the students continue in the use of this. Do not let yourself strain after things. Just take the calm, certain attitude of the ascension. Calmly, quickly, lovingly accept it, and just be. This avoids tension. Nothing is more powerful than this. Benediction Thou mighty, all-pervading, infinite presence I am, we give forth our gratitude to Thee that we have found Thee, that we acknowledge Thee, the all-powerful Creator, making Thyself fully visible in our every need, in our full illumination, in our full mastery and dominion over all other things. We thank Thee that Thou art the all-pervading presence, and that Thou doest with Thy strength and wisdom impel Thy perfection everywhere. In Discourse 21, December 12, 1932 St. Germain Invocation Thou infinite presence, expressing Thy perfection everywhere, we welcome and praise Thy perfect manifestation in our homes, lives, and worlds, that thy radiant light may forever consume everything unlike itself, that thy wisdom may always direct, thy love always enfold, thy light always illumine thy perfect pathway, and that thou dost hold us firmly in thy glorious radiance now and forever. I bring you greeting from the great host with their joy and love for this cooperation and for that which can be blessed, illumined, and awakened. The Discourse Oh, that students or any individuals who know of the I Am Presence 
could but realize that there is no greater consciousness, no greater activity, that conscious volition can set into action than the recognition and acceptance of the I Am Presence. No matter what the angles of truth are from the thousands of avenues by which mankind reaches out to gain greater and wider understanding, everyone leads to this which you now have the gracious privilege of knowing and understanding and using. Any kind of knowledge or power is absolutely worthless unless used. Those who will apply and enter into the use of the I Am Presence with deep feeling will see and feel within their own being as they again come into contact with other channels of understanding. How transcendent the knowledge of the I Am Presence is in comparison with all other ideas of truth. I am holding fast to this idea for the student's sake, so they grasp fully the mighty truth, that when they say, I am, whatever I wish to be or manifest, they are actually setting into visible physical activity the mightiest presence and power of God which I am. This differs from any other statements that was put into the group of words. There is no other statement or group of words in existence that actually sets such power into motion to accomplish any given purpose to which the conscious attention is directed, as does this mighty expression. This is why Jesus the Christ coupled it with most important statements that he made. If the students of this radiation will meditate or contemplate the statements that Jesus made upon his own ray to them, it will help them to grasp the fullness, the stupendousness of this reality. I wish every student of this radiation to fix firmly in his mind that, concerning these instructions, there may at no time be a charge ever made for them. The student is always free to make love gifts as his heart directs, but to make a definite charge, under the law by which these instructions are given, would close the door immediately. Just the reason for this I may not explain to you at this time. It is not that the laborer is not worthy of his hire, but this work comes under an entirely different activity of the divine law, which I will one day explain to the students. Feeling as I do the earnest, most worthy desire of some of the students to come physically within this inner circle, or radiant, so to speak, I shall endeavor to explain how it is not possible to be done. Beautiful and loving are the desire and radiation of the beloved students are. This beloved sister and brother have gone through thirty years of strenuous conscious preparation for this work. The electronic circle within which this radiation must focus would have to be entirely rearranged and readjusted. It might require some years to again bring it to this point, lovely and beautiful as the radiation of the other is. Each individual has his own distinct radiation and vibratory action. While the invisible mechanism, shall I call it, for this work is in one way very powerful, yet in another way it is as delicate as a gossamer veil. I assure you, beloved students, that either my personal presence or my consciously directed ray is always present whenever either this beloved sister or brother is giving forth his instructions. Here let me urge you that at no time is it wise for any student under this radiation to give forth verbatim these instructions to one who is not yet under this radiation. Extracts, verbal or otherwise, may be given forth for the help of others, but we do not wish anyone to be so unfortunate as to say he is authorized to give this forth when he has not had permission to do so. This channel must always be kept clean, pure, and unselfish, and these instructions may not be commercialized at any time. The application within the instruction which is given from time to time, if used sincerely, with true feelings and confidence in the instruction, will cause the students or the teacher using it to become such an invincible magnet for the opulence and riches of God that there will be no need to commercialize the instruction for the sake of his livelihood. For any individual, whether at first he has the full understanding of its meaning or not, who will be conscious that, I am the omnipresent, limitless supply of God's riches and opulence in my use, will sooner or later come into the full conviction of this mighty truth. I understand fully how important the financial support of the individual seems to him, but I say to you, beloved students, that financial support is always as the shifting sands until you begin to consciously apply the use of the I Am Presence as your omnipresent, limitless supply of either money, love, understanding, light, or illumination. So try to receive the full conviction of the radiation of this which I give to you, that you may use it with a certain unwaveringly consciousness which will give you forever your freedom from all financial strain. 
Knowing that the I Am Presence, which you have set or are setting into motion, is the same in every other individual on earth as it is in you, and as it is in the universe, giving you the power and intelligence to make this declaration, then you know that whatever your conscious application implies, it is acting everywhere, just the same as within the present application that you make. Heretofore I have hesitated to give you this very definite application or explanation of this application, but your earnest demand has impelled it forth. I send with this certain specific radiation which will enable you to use it with almost certain confidence. The student should always remember it is only by conscious effort that he can keep his mind at peace so this inner power may flow through unhampered to the accomplishment of his desire. As a child in school you were given certain problems to solve, for instance we will say in mathematics. At the same time you were given the means by which to accomplish it. If you do not make your application as directed, you of course would not receive your correct answer. Consequently you kept at it, kept trying and trying until your answer was proved. If you did not understand how to go about it, you went back to your teacher for instruction and found what was required, so it is in the instruction which is now given you. This application never has, and never can fail in the accomplishment of anything to which your attention is directed, if you will but continue to apply it with determination, and stick to it until results are in your hands or presence. Now here let me call your attention to a most powerful explanation which Jesus the Christ gave you in his own words that in all the teaching he received through the various avenues, and I assure you, some of them were very great, it was only his instruction, conscientiously applied, that finally brought to him or revealed to him from within the many amazing magical statements, one of which was, I am the resurrection and the life. It was this statement which he used that enabled him to give the example to humanity, which will last throughout the centuries. Whatever demand you make of the universal, all-knowing presence wherein you use the words I am, it must bring the same definite certain results that his statements brought him when he declared, I am the resurrection and the life. Try earnestly to feel the mighty importance of this. Here let me caution and assure you with great emphasis that no matter who or what you are, what place you may be in from the growth standpoint, when you make application with the words I am, you positively cannot fail to accomplish that to which you apply them, if you will hold fast with unwavering determination. Beloved students, I feel the great love sent to me and never fail to respond to it. Always, first, give your great love and adoration to your own I Am Presence, the Master Self, then to those who may be able to assist you. Many of you are making wonderful strides. Go forth with certainty in your hearts, always being aware I am the conquering, victorious present in any achievement I desire, that I am now the full dominion of every application that I make, that I am the presence always within every demand, supplying and fulfilling it. There is no mental state that shuts the door against the very thing you are striving for like a feeling of distress about it. On the other hand, the proper attitude is to joyously take the stand that I am the presence which enables me to see or hear with the inner sight and hearing, and at no time to let one's self become disturbed because another is using a faculty different from one's own, but rather rejoice in it. The teacher or student should be quick to realize that no ignorance of the outer activity of the mind should have any power at any time to disturb him, even though directed at him personally. At all times, turn to your own I am presence, and demand to know and see clearly the plan that you should follow. The master's pictures and the instruction should be considered a sacred thing to the student. Adhere always to the time-sworn statement. To know, to dare, to do, and to be silent. Because when students begin to discuss these things with unsympathetic individuals, they scatter the force instead of holding it within for their own illumination. I say this with all the vehemence of my being, let the student forever remember that it is impossible to have a selfish desire or intent when reaching to the Master I am presence for love, wisdom, power, and illumination. As an illustration I might say, and I am sure he will not object, that this good brother is the only student I have ever known who has completely governed that impelling force to become a teacher, which always asserts itself somewhere along the pathway of the student. It is not that the desire is an unworthy one, but in so many, many instances, 
the students attempting it too soon, before they are sufficiently fortified mentally, meet with obstruction which they are not able to stand against, and they become permanently discouraged from further effort, defeating the wonderful work that they might have accomplished later. The most important thing in any student's life is the love and adoration to his own mighty I Am presence, with patience to the extent that he becomes so anchored in his mighty presence that he is always fortified by it. An individual who is a stirring stick can do more damage in one hour than you realize. Anyone whom you can once get to apply the I Am presence earnestly will never backslide. I am determined to keep the I Am presence before the students so they realize they are using a mighty intelligent power and love, and that they are setting it into action. Jesus came of his own volition and gave to the students the way he accomplished the overcoming of the last enemy. It takes enormous strength to stand your ground. There is nothing that can give you permanent success in the outer activity except the conscious use of the I Am Presence. Stand adamant against a thing that would sway you off. Take the stand off and, I know what I am doing and I am doing it. You may sometimes have to say very strong things in order to shut off interference, but do not be susceptible to it. Decide what you want to do and then say, I am the presence doing it. The use of the I am prevents the development of anything out of balance. I am is the all balance, because it is the power and governing intelligence of all perfection. Its very activity compels the balance. The I am command is the activity of the thing that is already there, impelling it into the outer activity. There are several in America now who, if they would take Jesus' stand that I am the resurrection and life, and live it day after day, would raise the body assures the world. You cannot use the words I am with anything and not couple it with the power to do the thing. There are two things retarding to a student's spiritual growth. One is when the husband or wife does not agree with one's effort, and the other is outside suggestion. You have your I am presence, which is all intelligence, so make yourself adamant against suggestion of any kind, good or bad. Sometime we will devote an entire discourse to the wine handling of the psychic. This is not one out of ten thousand who understands that the awakening of the sight into the psychic plane is not a spiritual thing. When people begin to see on the psychic plane, they are but using the physical sight a little expanded and do not know it. In the psychic realm, the suggestions given offer just enough truth to anchor interest and hold the attention until psychic forces get a good hold on the person. This always comes through the fascination of the phenomena. When one focuses the attention upon the I Am Presence, it will draw him into the fullness of the I Am Presence. The inhabitants of the elements are used for all activities of nature, but they do not prevent other forces acting and they are not the only activities in nature. There are times when these great cosmic beings direct their attention to nature. Every thought sent forth by an ascended or cosmic being contains within it a perfected form, if that being's idea is on the manifestation of snow or whatever it is, it would take on the perfection which was within his thought, because all thought carries form. Say, I am the presence entering into and revealing to my outer consciousness this activity. Then the outer mind would get the fuller inner activity and bring it into your outer activity. When people enter into the psychic plane, everything is distorted, and they have no definite proof of the truth. Those beings in the psychic plane, who seek to get others under their control, begin to prophesize, and it is one of the first things they do. No one can take a stand against a messenger of the light and not receive the reaction into themselves, because the light repels that is all unlike itself. Benediction Out of the fullness of thy mighty opulence, O mighty I am, we feel thy flowing energy, we feel thy enfolding love, we feel thy qualifying presence hastening all who turn to thee into thy perfection. We feel thy glorious presence unfolding them in thy mighty mantle of peace, enabling them to maintain perfect self-control, sustaining them in thy mighty perfection, that they may manifest thy mighty presence now. Discourse 22, December 15, 1932 St. Germain, Invocation Thou infinite abiding presence, thy all-pervading light, 
Thy opulence of substance is omnipresent and all-pervading. We open the activity of the outer consciousness into the conscious direction, and molding into form of every good thing we desire. We give praise and thanks for thy intelligent action in these minds, with thy love, thy wisdom, and thy power to guide them, to raise them into all perfection. I bring you greetings from those ascended ones who ever minister to the messengers of light, wrapping their mantles of light, illumination, and protection about them. THE DISCOURSE I had not intended to explain quite yet the undesirability of any thought or condition of the psychic plane, but the demand compels it to come forth. In the first place, the student must understand that what is called the psychic plane has nothing whatever to do with spirituality. It is a faculty of the human consciousness which can be brought into play by human beings who will give sufficient attention to it. But the individual who wishes to reach into the psychic plane alone either consciously or unconsciously, had better never been born into that embodiment. The fascination of the phenomena of the psychic plane, I assure you, is most alluring, for those whose attention becomes firmly anchored in the psychic plane do not loosen themselves from it in the embodiment, and it may take several embodiments to free them. In all strata of consciousness there is a fragment of truth unrecognized, otherwise it would not be possible for it to be sustained, because you must understand that in all things and in all activities there is some, more or less, of the God energy acting, misused truly but nevertheless active. The sincere student will give no attention to the phenomena of psychic seeing or hearing, but understands that he must push directly through, by the power of the inner will through his utter determination, and enter within the electronic belt where only the truth is expressed. Beloved students, while it is necessary to explain this, I want you to make up your minds not to have any fear. Within the psychic stratum of thought and feeling is the principal activity of what we know as the sinister force in this world. Sometimes souls with splendid inner attainment, not understanding the true reality of this of which I speak, have allowed their attention to become drawn to this stratum because of the premature awakening of this physical faculty by a semblance of truth being presented to them in some phenomena, enough to hold their attention. After the attention becomes fixed, everyone, without exception, will find that semblance of truth disappearing. One of these attributes, which is perhaps most fascinating, is the false prophecies which are made, causing the individual to make wild prophecies, and once in a while, one being fulfilled in order to bind the attention more strongly. With this, there is also a certain substance which is drawn into the brain, I may not yet fully explain to you. This makes it impossible for the master to interfere with the help of the individual, because of his own free will by which he has accepted it. There are a few cases, however, in which the individual realized the mistake before he had gone too far, and by intense calling to be liberated, one of the brothers was sent to release the individual completely. There is occasionally a rare nature who, because of its great purity, passes through this psychic stratum without ever knowing it or contacting it, this kind of individual is very fortunate indeed. The forces within this stratum will work most directly upon the feeling nature, and this means upon the passion of the individual, because it is most easily reached. Men and women who have lost the controlling power over their passion, which may be either sex or anger, have knowingly or unknowingly become entangled in the psychic stratum of thought and feeling, thereby opening the doors of their beautiful and wonderful temples of God. Through the open door, the forces within the psychic stratum fasten upon them, intensifying their own passion into an uncontrolled condition, which otherwise might be controlled. Far better had such individuals walked into a den of rattlesnakes, for then they would have but thrown off the physical body and been free. But once enmeshed in this psychic sphere, they are often bound for many embodiments. Why is this? Because they make records within their mental worlds from which they do not know how to extricate themselves. Consequently, these souls are reborn again with those same tendencies, until after the second or third embodiment they become the depraved creatures you see about you wherever you go. Sometimes the influence is cunning enough to hide this from the outer world for a long time, thus carrying on its nefarious work, as it thinks in secret. Here comes the most heart-rending part of this explanation. I mean to say it seems so from the outer sense. On the higher planes of activity, there are great and beneficial souls who volunteer to go into the stratum to help, through their radiation, to break its hold upon humanity. These volunteers are both masculine and feminine. More often, however, they are feminine. 
This explains why beautiful souls in a feminine embodiment become united in outer marriage with the masculine soul who has become enmeshed in this psychic condition. Often the individuals thus enmeshed become most cunningly sensitive and with remarkable accuracy sense conditions, thus many times causing others with whom they come into contact to temporarily think it is real. If individuals coming into the point of being united in marriage, man-made, would call out to the God within, the mighty I am presence, that if this marriage is taking place through the desire of passion, then let it never be done. Great grief and torture would thus be avoided. Now we come to the real part. The individuals who, through their own efforts, or through instruction being presented to them, get the true understanding of what the mighty I am presence means, that it is the true and mighty self, and hold earnestly to it, Never again can they be drawn into these discordant things, unless from their own volunteering from the higher plane of activity, where they know exactly what they are doing. War periods more readily than any other open individuals to the psychic plane. Consequently, it has always been observed that after war period, there is always a great unleashing of the uncontrolled passion at any other time. Knowing this should in no wise cause anyone to fear this psychic stratum. If students find themselves conscious of passing through it, they should instantly take the consciousness, I am, the controlling master presence, always victorious. And they will instantly find strength to face whatever appears and go fearlessly in saloon through. Jesus suggested this explanation be given while the students were under the triple radiation. This triple radiation means that in his radiation, he always carries with it the triple activity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, or the I am presence. All who apply the I Am Presence are receiving the triple activity as long as they maintain it, and the triple activity is always self-sustained. Astrology One of the saddest things I have to say to you is that many of these attempting to cast horoscopes are unknowingly drawing themselves into the psychic net, and are becoming sensitized and voicing the adverse conditions which exist only in this stratum. This is one of the most unfortunate activities because the individual is so entirely unaware that he has opened his door, until he has become so enmeshed that no amount of argument or reasoning will change his belief in astrology. In the past twenty years, the avenue of astrology has been used for this purpose more than any other. Many times through this, the thought or radiation from this stratum says that certain conditions will manifest for the individual which he cannot avoid. If it is not said in so many words, it is felt through the radiation. This is one of the principal reasons why the last cataclysm of Atlantis occurred and why the people of Atlantis in the great majority refused to listen to the wisdom of the masters who prophesied from reality the destruction of Atlantis. I understand, beloved students, that some of you have been so interested in your horoscopes may think I'm being severe. However, such is not the case. But my love for you is great enough that I may speak to you the unadulterated truth. If you cannot believe the truth I speak to you, then you must go on your way, for you are individuals of free will which I have no desire to interfere with except that I am privileged to point the way. Individuals who will cling tenaciously to the I am presence need never, any time, anywhere, ever fear any of these things, because it will correct them and hold them steady on the true pathway of light, up whose golden stairway they may climb with definite precision into their full dominion and perfection. I assure you, beloved ones, that my heart goes out with all strength to the individuals whose attention is held on astrology, for they are so unaware of the pathway strewn with thorns which they have entered upon that will pierce their feet, causing them to cry out in agony, and only when that agony becomes great enough will they call out with all their being and say, O oh God, show me the true way. Beloved students, you who so earnestly seek the light, know there is but the one presence that is your invincible protection, and that is the great I Am Presence, God in you. Do not let your attention ever be held by these many outer manifestations, astrology, the power of numbers, spiritualism, or any of the many things that would take your attention away from the mighty I Am Presence, which is your real self. If you turn to it all times, it will lead you in the pathway of light, strewn with the rarest flowers whose very fragrance will unfold you, with that strength and peace that passes understanding, with that stillness of the outer which will enable you to enter into the great silence, wherein you will find the greatest invincible activity of God, the I Am Presence. Beloved ones, surely you must understand that you cannot serve two masters and gain any victory ahead. Having free will, you must choose. If you choose the outer, 
forgetting your invincible I am presence. Then my love goes with you, enfolding you in its mighty mantle of protection until such a time as you choose to return to the one God. If you choose your I am presence and adhere to it, then your struggles are soon over, and you will find yourself moving in that sphere of peace, harmony, perfection, wherein you look upon the outer world with great compassion, but never with that human sympathy which would stifle your own growth. This reminds us of the old time-worn statement, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all the outer things are added or given into your use under your command. That kingdom of heaven is the great I am presence, the only reality of you, who is the owner and giver of all created and manifested things. Is it not strange, beloved students, that one will so long wander about in discord and limitation, when the master presence of light, the I am presence, walks by one side at all times, waiting one's decision to turn to it and receive its radiance, glorious blessing and perfection in all outer manifestation? Such is your privilege, O beloved ones. In spite of all outer activity, the atmosphere of the class is true divine. When I am sorry that some have not felt the true importance of their I am presence, and they still reach out to other things, I but wait, enfolding them in my love, for they have free will. Perhaps I am a little too old-fashioned, but when I see individuals that are so good and so fine, I would just like to pick them up and hold them in my embrace, until they could realize the full importance of their own mighty I am presence. But this I may not do. For I so well know that all have any desire left to reach to the without must do so until that desire is no longer apparent. The students must understand that they cannot divide their outer attention between the I am presence and outer things, for it is a house divided against itself and must sooner or later fall. All greatness is dependent on the I am presence, and it is the governor of the form or should be. It is all strength, courage, and power. Those blessed children if they could only realize fully what a privilege stands at their door, and how in a comparatively short time they could gain freedom from all limitation. This dictation, the situation is this. When students ask if they might listen to these dictations themselves, they are entitled to the explanation of what is necessary for the work of this kind, for it is most unusual, we know. The fact that the one God is always perfect, always was, is now, and always will be, and the I Am is that presence, but if you have not been aware of this, the body and brain of the student must go through a period of adjustment. That adjustment of the outer self takes weeks, months, or years to accomplish according to the requirement of the student. Never in the history of the preparation of students has the master ever allowed them to come within his own inner electronic circle. The students come, or are taught of the application, but they never come into the inner electronic circle of the master himself. The electronic circle prepared here for this work has required 30 years of preparation, and no matter how beautiful the radiation and love of an individual are, we do not have the time to prepare and adjust the atomic structure of the brain and body of the students at this period of world crisis, but with their sincere determination and use of the I Am Presence, they will be prepared for the presence of the Ascended Host. The atomic structure is a mechanical instrument, and the innumerable parts must work in harmony and perfect cooperation with each other. The students do not understand that when a certain definite, specific work is to be done, there must be definite preparation for it. For illustration, take one by whose nature is endowed with an unusual quality for giving forth lectures in public. If he is to have the assistance of the ascended host, there must be special preparation for it. The individual would be so prepared that from twenty minutes to half hour before the lectures, that one would be enclosed in a tube of light into which nothing entered except the radiation of the inspiring master. Benediction. Out of the fullness of our hearts, O mighty presence, we give praise and thanks for thy love, wisdom, and power. We give praise and thanks for the mighty rays that have gone out to each student today. We give thanks for the intensity of this focus that quickens the assurance within the students of the truth of their mighty presence of the I Am, which is the true self. Strengthen them, each one, with that firm determination to hold to that one presence which is all freedom, all perfection, eternal youth, and beauty. Notes. Question. Is the god Miru large of stature? Answer. The god Miru is about seven feet, and of the most wonderful proportion. The god Himalaya is about seven feet two inches. The god Tabor is about eight feet. He comes from a very, very ancient race of people.
Discourse 23, December 19, 1932. Christmas Preparation, St. Germain, Invocation, Thou mighty infant intelligence, Thou who dost have power over all things, we welcome Thy all-pervading presence, Thou all-pervading life, the animating principle of every human being. We give thanks that I am the great and mighty presence, that I am anchored in the heart of every one of God's children, fulfilling the perfect plan in spite of all resistance of the outer activity of the mind. We give praise and thanks that the conscious direction of thy mighty energy is sufficient by those of understanding to bless and to prevail with thy wondrous light and intelligence everywhere. I bring you greetings from the great host, and personally from Jesus, who will again speak to you over his ray today. The Discourse by Beloved Jesus in the fullness of my love I come to you again today over the great light and sound ray, this time to direct consciously the healing ray to every one of the students. This ray I will sustain for two weeks every day, that they may have the radiance of the healing power. In my ministry to mankind among the hills of Judea, I stirred the latent memory within the inner record of mankind, and its work is still going on today. I wish the students to understand that, preceding all conscious healing upon my part, Within my own mind, I always conscious that I am the only healing presence, and as the unlimited I am presence, I had the right, the power, and the ability, through that presence, to command all outer activity of the mind to be silent and obey its command. Thus, when I spoke to individuals, I spoke with that authority, the I am presence, which I recognize as the only intelligence and power acting, or that could act. I was conscious of the outer activity of the minds of those of humanity about me, but as I said to you before, it was only when I began using I am the resurrection and life that the fullness of my mission and how it was to be fulfilled was entirely revealed. This is the particular point I wish to stress with the students today, that within each of them is the same mighty I am presence, which I used to accomplish the perfection of that mighty presence. This seemed to humanity at that time the performance of miracles. However, I assure you, it was but consciously setting into action and use cosmic laws that are ever about you, to be set into activity through conscious direction. The mistake that students make and which delays their achievement is in feeling that they are acting a falsehood in declaring the perfection that they do not yet see manifest in their appearance or activity. I tell you sincerely from my own experience that we must acknowledge the one presence intelligence and power, then claim it as our own in every thought and activity. It is the only way this mighty perfection can be brought into the outer appearance and fullness of your use, because that perfection has not yet appeared, seemingly, should not deter you from applying and claiming perfection as your own. For anyone with average intelligence has but to stop and think that the energy, the life principle which he is using, is God, the mighty I am presence. Therefore, its presence, power, and energy is always self-sustaining. In the claiming of this mighty presence and activity, you consciously set into action in your life, home, world, and affairs. Today is in the time of my attainment. The financial struggles seem to be most wane, and yet within the reach of your consciousness, manipulation, and direction of the mighty energy, substance, and opulence about you, you have everything with which to draw to you that wondrous, omnipresent opulence of God. When you say, I am... You are stirring that into action to fulfill your conscious demand. One of the first and mightiest things that become clear in my consciousness was my ability, everyone's ability, to qualify this energy, consciously directed with whatever the seeming need demanded. Thus the energy may produce for your use gold, silver, money, food, clothing, means of conveyance, or whatever the conscious demand is. All this you must claim with determined conscious effort which knows that in the conscious demand is the I am presence speaking and acting. Therefore it has all power and authority to clothe whatever the demand is with its kind. In the consciousness that you are the I am presence acting at all times, you then must know that you are that moment of recognition, an invincible magnet of attraction, which causes every activity of the universe to rush to you to fulfill the demand. The only reason it does not seem to be so is because somewhere in your consciousness there is a feeling of uncertainty, either of your ability, of your authority, or the omnipresence of it to act. But I assure you, as one having attained and having gone through the complete process of attaining, that it is a pleasure, the privilege of myself and others, 
to place before you these simple laws, yet mighty and invincible in their activity, which will give you freedom and dominion over all things that seem to be such a mountain of obstruction in your way. As you continue to accept and use these laws in your activity, you will find that you are attaining dominion, not only over the one element, but all four elements, earth, water, air, and fire. When you have become conscious of the flame of your divinity, you are acting from the highest of the four elements, which is fire, and the true activity of spirit. As the conscious activity is to the unconscious, so is the conscious use of the flame to the recognition of the light. The natural element of your soul is the flame, accounting for the ancient fire and sun worship. When one becomes conscious that he has, is, can use and direct this consuming flame, he has entered into mighty power. When one becomes conscious that he has dominion over the four elements, he is but to practice its use to become conscious that he may direct the lightning, master the storm, control the water, and walk in the midst of the fire unharmed. Will you kindly tell me how any being can have the use of anything until he acknowledges it, and knows that he has the ability to make it his servant and use? Then, by the practice of its use, he becomes absolutely invincible in its direction. I wish so earnestly to make clear to you that you are being given and taught the exact laws which I used, and which everyone who has attained the ascended state must use. It is all a matter of use, once you know of these laws and that the I Am Presence which you are has all intelligence, power, and authority to consciously direct the energy through the outer activity of your mind. Then do not fear to use it to heal, to prosper, to bless, and to enlighten your fellow man. Erase from your mind forever that there can be any selfishness in your conscious recognition that the I Am Presence is directing. It matters not what you require for your attainment, wherein it makes you more able or of a greater ability and power to bless. Then do you not see that there can be no selfishness in the desire for this greater attainment and perfection? For any individual to feel that he must wait upon the attainment of another is a great mistake. Individuals may attain only through their own conscious effort in this wonderful recognition. No one can grow for another or attain for another, but each may be of immense help to the other by knowing with intensity, I am the only presence and intelligence acting within that individual for the one you wish to help. This may be qualified with whatever the person seems to need most. Every individual's first duty is adoration and love to the one mighty I Am Presence which is everywhere present. Do you not see how in this it is a joyous privilege to love your so-called enemy? Because I am the only real presence and activity anyway. If the ignorance of the outer activity of the mind seems to have created disorder, pain, and limitation, then you know that the miscreation has no power of its own. There is nothing but the wrong belief of the individual to sustain it. Consequently, it has no self-sustaining power. If you have been unfortunate enough to create in harmony, disorder, limitation, then can you not see that you alone, through the power of your I Am Presence, the consuming flame, must consciously call on the law of forgiveness, consumed through that flame of life which you are, everything in the world which you have wrongly created. This should easily make it clear to you how you set about to cleanse the world of its disorder and its mistaken creation. Then you stand forth, clothed with the sun, the light of eternal life, youth, beauty, and opulence, holding within your hand for instant use the scepter of power of the I Am Presence which you are. It is important to know that this one mighty energy does all things according to the quality you give it, or the wish you want fulfilled. One thing students should be intensely conscious of, and that is, the I Am, the eternal, harmonizing present and activity everywhere I move, and of everything to which my thought is directed, this constantly used with a feeling of its invincible power, will keep the atmosphere of your world purified, harmonized, and held in readiness for any conscious direction to go forth with great speed to its accomplishment. When you wish to speak with authority, silently or to another individual, speak his given name, and you will find the help, the energy sent, much more easily received. It is like calling the attention of a person to whom you wish to speak. Naturally, your first impulse is, if you are going to speak to one of the family, you first say Don, Mary, or Dick to get his attention, and then you proceed to give your message. So it is when directing the energy silently. 
Within the inner world, in this recognition and use of the I Am Presence, knowing that I am everywhere present, you see how you may speak to one across the earth through the I Am Presence as readily as though that one stood in the room in your physical presence. I warn you, if you attempt to use this knowledge to harm another, then remember that through your own soul and body will pass the bolt or your intent to another. Try always to remember that you are not human beings so called, but you are gods and goddesses in embryo, which through the conscious effort you can bring into full dominion. I say to you, beloved students of light, arise, awaken to the fullness of your God dominion. Fearlessly use the conscious knowledge and direction of this mighty I am energy for your freedom, prosperity, blessing, and enlightenment. Each of you is a glittering, dazzling jewel of light projected into a world of chaos and darkness, that the radiance of your light may expand, expand, and again expand, that all darkness of the earth be consumed in this mighty radiance of the I am presence which you are. Do not hesitate, beloved children. Grasp the scepter of your power and dominion. Use it to heal, to bless, to prosper, to enlighten. You will find all earthly things bowing before you and rushing to fulfill your slightest demand. Such, beloved ones, beloved brothers and sisters, the one mighty presence which I am is the conscious ability I convey to you this day, with its self-sustaining strength, courage, power, and enlightenment to go forth, attaining your freedom now with these personal rays which I predict to each you for these two weeks. I assure you these rays are no idle fancy, but a tangible current of energy containing in all things and blessing you according to your acceptance. I clothe you in this mantle of light within its all power. I hold you close in my mighty embrace, and I am with you every hour. St. Germain, again have you been blessed by that electrifying presence. I need not add to it unless there are questions. When you realize that I am is the only presence, power and ability to think in your brain cells, and you are accepting only the activity of the I am presence, then you make it the all-power fulfilling every outer desire. Therefore, if you desire something needful in the outer activity, it is the I Am Presence producing through your conscious demand, which has nothing to do with so-called human desire. Say often, I am always loving obedience unto the light. Everything will become more alert, more quickened, and more powerful protected as you use the I Am Presence more and more. The great central sun magnet. The more one is conscious of this great magnet working, the more powerful it acts in his own sphere. An awakened individual never uses the destructive force. When the master of Serene projected the force and the army was killed, he simply projected it for the protection of his people, and the destructive qualities which the others brought with him to slay and kill qualified the force sent out by the master. And it destroyed those who sent their destructive qualities out. You can see how easily it would do that when they come to destroy. Every individual, if he has understanding, has a right to protect himself. The student should always be taught never to judge the action of a greater intelligence than themselves. When phenomena is produced by an ascended master, the activity so transcends the intelligence witnessing it that it is most difficult for them to be sustained in the acceptance of the actual truth of it. It is utterly impossible to satisfy the outer activity of the mind. Projected vision. The etheric record is reclothed in substance. You cannot reclothe a record of scenes except in their own environment. The individual's record goes with him wherever he goes and can be reclothed anywhere he is. Benediction. Thou mighty, infinite presence, thou wondrous brother of light, wisdom, love, and power, we give thanks for thy radiant presence, glorifying all who look to thee. And in that glorious presence we send to all mankind thy enfolding light, lifting them into thy presence always. Discourse 24, December 22, 1932. St. Germain, Invocation. Thou infinite, all-loving presence, we feel thy peace, thy love, and thy wisdom pervading all everywhere. Knowing there is but the one mighty presence of which we are a part, we know thou art omnipresent, pouring themselves forth, filling every need on demand, lifting the conscience of mankind unto thee, and holding it anchored there until the light of eternal life fills all beings with its radiance, carrying them forward with that inner impulse to eternal, permanent recognition of the great I Am. 
I bring you greetings from the great ascended host, and especially from Nada, Cha-Ara, Chan, and Diana, goddess of fire. The Discourse As the consciousness of the student is raised into the activity of the higher or fire element, everything in their being begins to act with an intensity that many times they do not understand. And as they begin to work more from the fire element standpoint, the more necessary is it to keep up the guard. The training which we are endeavoring to give forth to bless, protect, and enlighten the students is to train oneself to be on guard at all times, and while all should understand with every effort use the I Am Presence to maintain self-control, yet if something happens unexpectedly to stand serene in spite of it. Use the statement frequently, I Am the Presence on Guard. If something unexpected happens, just say, We will dismiss this and go on in that joyous happiness. Try not to have any feeling, but to know, I am the mighty presence governing everyone's activity. Whenever there is a center of light of the intensity of this focus, there is always a disturbing element that would seek to enter through someone. If you are working about the house, keep using, I am proof against any sudden disturbance. This sets up a certain armor that will keep the atmosphere harmonized. Use often, I am the presence with nothing you can disturb. Always hold yourself in a joyous, calm attitude, regardless of anything that takes place. For one you wish to help, say, Here, pal, through the I Am Presence, we give you the strength to control that. The very marvelous manner and radiation of your two classes this week was the most remarkable thing I've ever seen in classes of students. The great love and harmony within the hearts of these students maintain a sufficient length of time, makes almost anything possible. It is a rare thing. Here are three classes in which the same love and harmony is maintained. Do you feel the great wave of peace and joy that will come like a breath of the spring morning? I will explain so you may see how far-reaching it is that wonderful loving care. The great master whom Jesus contacted and who enabled him to gain the victory is the same one who was my teacher, and it was his radiation which came just now. He wishes me to tell you that, as you pass along the pathway of light, you'll find the easiest way to overcome disturbance is to turn away from a thing and forget it. You may have this master's name later. To wrong activities say, that is not correct, and then quickly pass it off. This avoids a disturbance which builds. As we reach into the light, we are one great family. Knowing that there is but the one great family, I am presence everywhere. You, being the individualization of that, there can only be the one great family, children of the one God. In the very first place, let this be understood. If a worthy individual is critical, say with very definite certainty, there is no one who wishes to intrude this upon your free will. We do not mind sincere questioning, but we do not tolerate criticism nor argument. The messenger must refuse acceptance to the discordant things by pouring out the love element so the discord may be consumed. The messenger must be fortified or else the work is left half undone. No class or work of the messenger can be sustained if the messenger allows argument or discord and feeling to generate. It is very difficult for the average individual to understand that the quickest way to stop any kind of disturbance is to stop discussing it. The thing in your own aura is the only thing that needs attention. The thing recorded in your atmosphere can only come through your feeling. The spoken word, unless there is a sense of condemnation or anger back of it, will not record in harmony on your inner atmosphere. Of the two undesirable conditions, it is far better that one explode and get a thing off his mind and to hold the feeling within on resentment or of being hurt, for that is what registers on your inner atmosphere. From my standpoint, I see what is registered in your feeling and therefore on the inner atmosphere. You know how a carbuncle forms. Well, let me tell you that in your mental world, exactly the same thing takes place as the physical carbuncle expresses on the physical body. It is most important to do something to keep yourself from harboring a feeling against persons, places, things, or conditions, for these build and record on the inner atmosphere. If the desire comes, I wish so-and-so would do this or that, check it immediately and say, there is only God in action here. When a feeling is registered in your atmosphere... It is anchored there until you dissolve or consume it. It is always the feeling that makes the inner record. There is no use consuming a thing if you do not break the habit of generating the cause. 
one can easily conquer this by saying, I am in command here. Do not let your feelings run rampant. Many times individuals are brought together for the sole purpose of compelling them to correct these subtle activities which most people pay no attention to whatsoever. This is a matter of still in the outer and order the truth may be received. This is so vital in the individual's self-correction. As you rise in consciousness, the energy is waiting like an avalanche for expression. And if the energy is not controlled, it will rush in and cause you to do things that you would not have done for the world. Whatever energy is given, it is your use to be sent out harmoniously. That is the natural law of your being. If one does not understand that he is to govern the energy flowing through him, and he contacts a discordant element, the energy flowing through becomes qualified by that discord, and he should immediately either check it or requalify it with love. In my experience, if I met a discordant element, I simply said, Here, I shut my door. You stay out. The universal energy flowing through you is naturally harmonious. Shut your door and then figure out who's the matter. People resist persons, places, conditions, and things because they have not mastered themselves. The students must maintain this self-governed harmony within themselves long enough to let the momentum be created, which becomes the permanent guard. If one will maintain harmony within himself, I tell you, he will draw all good things into him. The unfailing prompter is at the moment one expresses some kind of discord, he is to realize that he is the one to blame. There needs to be no written thing to warn you. The moment there is something discordant, it is the prompter warning you to get busy on yourself. Each individual is his own guard and prompter at all times. There is only one power in the world that can correct anything, and that is the I Am Presence in each one. If you refuse to recognize that you are the creator of your own disturbances, how can you ever correct it or be free from it? There is no person, place, condition, or thing that warrants you ever being disturbed, with the ever-present I Am Presence, beating your heart each moment whenever is all-powerful. If one will correct himself on these discordant feelings, he will let the great I Am Presence flood his world with all perfection. If the individual will not correct himself, how can he ever gain the eternal victory? The I Am Presence is the all-power of the universe to make this correction. Let the I Am Presence flow until it washes everything clean. When your attention is fixed firmly upon the I Am Presence, which you are, it is as though your body were a fine sponge through which His pure energy is pouring, cleansing it of all imperfection. If you will stop the discord, the stream of the I Am Presence automatically cleanses away all impurities. You thus have an unlimited power in your hands to intensify your right command. Even from a scientific standpoint, knowing that the cells of the body are renewed in less than a year, if the discord could be shut off for one year, the mind and form would express eternal youth and perfection. Either from a sense of false pride or something, humanity will not face the truth that the cause is within themselves. The habit of always blaming the other fellow for what has happened to you is the thing that binds you to the truth and prevents self-correction. A wonderful illustration of this is in the beautiful child form. Until the child is old enough to begin to register the discord about it, its body is beautiful and expresses perfection. This perfection of form would always be maintained if there did not enter into the conscience of the child the discord of the outer world. There are those who would say to me, What about the child that is born sickly and disturbed? In most cases, that is a condition brought over from the preceding embodiment, or in rare cases, where there is intense discord between the parents. This may be intense enough to register upon the child. But if you will notice in cases of that kind, as the child begins to grow and develop, it will show less and less of that disturbance. That is absolute proof that discord was not of its own creation, but was imposed upon it by the parents because the stole was strong enough to rise out of it. In this particular point, one should understand the amazing conditions of suggestion by which individuals are constantly surrounded. For instance, let us take the environment and association of individuals who have been in the habit of going together. In that friendly association, each one is susceptible to the suggestion from the other. If it be discordant, then the association will be broken up sooner or later by one grand row. However, 75% of the individuals moving about in the outer world are not aware that they are taking on suggestion, either from association, environment, or conditions out pictured before them. The correct attitude of the student who becomes aware of this, 
as I am presence, is immediately to take the firm stand that I am invincibly protected against any imperfect suggestion. Thus one can build about himself an atmosphere which will immediately repel any suggestions that seek to intrude wherein there is a destructive element. I think it is necessary to call your attention to your old copy books which said, If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. There is no way to gain victory and dominion over limitation except to keep at it until you accomplish it. If you question your accomplishment, you are postponing your victory that much longer. Those students who really begin to understand that in the recognition and use of their I am presence, they have the universal power at their command. Then they know it is impossible to fail in their application, because the more they use it, the more of its sustaining power they have. Every time you feel a Christ manifestation, say I praise thee and accept the light of thy presence, the full I am activity. Take this attitude always, and then you shut the door to any undesirable creation from those who have passed on. Always remember that you are the master of what shall come into your thought world, and unless you realize that you are the master, you are susceptible to all kinds of thoughts and feelings. For others, no, I am the presence taking blank into blank accomplishment. If you give attention to a condition of disturbance, you are giving power to something else but your own I am presence. Benediction. Thou mighty, infinite I am presence, we rejoice in thy ceaseless outpouring, thy enfolding presence, protecting and governing the life of these beloved students. Help them to enter into the fullness of thy presence with no uncertainty, that they may bless mankind wherever they may be or go. Intensify thy wondrous light within the outer activity, that each one may become a great channel to heal, to bless, to prosper, and to enlighten. Discourse 25, December 25th, 1932, Christmas Day, St. Germain, Invocation, Infinite I am Presence, from thy ancient sanctuary, we find thee pouring forth thyself into manifestation with conscious intelligent expression, that thy perfection be manifest in all phases of life, and that all of earth which has been wrongly qualified by mankind be raised into that ascended state, thy eternal perfection. I bring you greetings, and especially from the retreat in Arabia, that great center of training for the use of the mighty rays. I have two surprises for you today. I say I, because we are all one. I trust that I need no introduction as I speak to you over the light and sound ray. Nada speaks. The Discourse How beautiful this day always seems to us in the consciousness conveyed to humanity, representing that birth of the Christ activity in all mankind and to the students who have become aware of what the use of the I Am Presence means to them in setting into motion love and intelligence to do their bidding according to the direction of that limitless power. So long individuals have wondered how to attain the Christ Consciousness. The first mighty step is in the recognition of the great I Am Presence, God dwelling in you. The second step is in the use of that I Am Presence, for when you say I Am, with the understanding of what it means, you have then and there entered into the Christ Consciousness. It does not mean you immediately express the fullness of that Christ Consciousness, for you must first know where you are going and what you wish to do before you can accomplish it. All the Ascended Ones have gone the same path and use identically the same application, because all roads lead to the great central Son, the Godhead. Our beloved Brother Jesus performed one of the greatest blessings to mankind and not only setting the example from his birth and achieving the ascension, but in making the eternal record that stands radiant, pouring itself into humanity. Little can the unascended realize what this means to mankind. It is an eternal beacon, beckoning them on into the light, and in the example of the ascension, Jesus stated definitely not only what could be done, but what must eventually be done. Great as were the wonders he was able to perform, he gave the marvelous promise that, even greater things than these shall ye do. Many times students wonder what greater things could be performed than what Jesus did. But he tells us that he only performed a few of the universal services which can be rendered to our fellow man. To us this day always symbolizes the conscious beginning of that most marvelous of all achievements, the ascension. The moment the individual becomes conscious of this fact, the process of his own ascension is started. And according to the fullness of his grasp of this truth, may the individual accomplish it quickly, or require time to do it. 
My personal experience has been that when I became aware of what it meant and began the use of the I Am Presence, I found that shortly I was entirely unaware of time or place, and that each day, as I entered more fully into this expansion of consciousness, I found that all things of my desire were right within reach, mark you, right within my individual governing power. And with it came the consciousness that divine love was the mighty cohesive power holding all things together and in place. That this divine love within me, of which I had begun to learn, made me an invincible magnet for everything upon which my desire rested. This simple truth is one of the mightiest the first comes to the student. At first it causes one to realize that, really, he can rise above the seeming limitations about him, and that he finds one by one that he is actually doing it. Then comes the great inrush and outpouring of this mighty self within, which holds the substance of anything the heart can wish within its own embrace. And your ability and authority, mark you, to qualify and mold this substance, is that which causes it to take on the form of your requirement, whether it be peace, love, gold, or enlightenment. I say to the beloved students, Awake, O beloved students, to your authority, to your right, to your conscious ability to apply this great law to your perfect health, eternal youth and beauty, the riches of God, the glorifying of your mind and body, and then to ascend in the arisen dominion into your eternal, everlasting freedom. After you begin to find, step by step, that you are accomplishing, then you begin to forget all this outer condition surging about you in the glorious feeling of being held in the great embrace of that mighty master self within, which never has and never will give cognizance to time or space. You are the master and have dominion in your life and over your world the moment you recognize that the energy, power, and intelligence which you are using is the mighty I Am Presence. How fortunate indeed are those individualizations upon earth who become aware, really aware of this truth. Jesus said, Know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. This is one of the mightiest phases of that truth. Apply it, O beloved ones, with full determination, shutting out all uncertainty from your minds, and you will climb steadily that jeweled ladder of achievement. And as you look back upon each step gained, more and more will that blazing radiance shine forth, and you will wonder, how could I have gone so long in the shadow, when above me stood this mighty flame of life, ready to consume instantly all my unfortunate, ignorant creation? I tell you, beloved ones, that you do not have to wait indefinitely in the recognition of this mighty presence. Fold your arms about it in all the adoration you can command, and it will raise you quickly out of all these seeming limitations, clothing you in that seamless crystal garment, blazing with radiant light and held with a jeweled girdle that is your right to wear. And in your hand that blazing scepter of dominion, the searchlight of your mighty soul, which you can turn upon anything, upon any place, upon any height, and draw to you the revelation from within it. Such, beloved brothers and sisters, is the picture of achievement which we have used and attained. Such we know you can do, because we have. Never grow weary of the consciousness that I am the Ascended Presence. And when you say that, no, it is the self-sustaining, emanating strength by which I reach my full dominion. It makes me very happy to be home again, for the happiness in your hearts, to see the many rungs of the ladder you are past, and that you have the conscious consciousness that you can achieve the greatest of God's gift, the fullness of Himself. cha Ara. It is with much joy that I too may say a few words over the light and sound rays to you and to answer in person the many calls of the hearts to cha ora. I do have many a good laugh in moving about among the students who have so much longing that I make myself visible to them, and yet some of them, upon the slightest movement unusual, catching their breath lest I do. You know, it is almost comical, the outer activity of the self wants a thing so much, and at the same time experiences all kind of prickly sensations about it. But, beloved ones, I say this. I may not appear nearly so frightful as you might think, so trust me at least to have a pleasing form or appearance, and at the same time, for the benefit of the dear sisters, I shall endeavor to bring along some altar of roses. Question. From Kashmir? Answer. That would be quite appropriate. Question. Why not your own brand? Answer. You are very alert. I do not need to purchase it as you do, for I am privileged to brew my own. 
May I add a word to the beloved students, commanding them and urging them to continue that wonderful, glorious presence of love and goodwill, not only to us, but to each other, because it makes a wonderful condition in which the expansion of conscience goes on in leaps and bounds. I must commend them on the theme of certainty within themselves in the accepting of our presence, and the consciousness of their ability to apply the law of their I am presence, for it is increasing with great speed. Do not be discouraged in your call for our visible appearance. While hearing is perfectly good, I assure you, yet in that call is something that you require. In the call for a thing is a certain vibratory action that the student needs, which cannot be explained except as you see it from the inner action. America O oh, America, precious jewel in the crown, the diadem of earth, that flower of ancient wisdom and light! Again you shall come under the power of your full bloom, in spite of all the seeming obstructions and appearances to the contrary at present. Within thy soul, almighty America, is the strength to shake thyself free from the barnacles that have attached themselves to thee, the barnacles of selfishness, and the creation of the outer activity of the mind of unawakened human beings. So shall you again come into the fullness of that light which is your birthright. Beloved students of his radiation, no matter what the appearance seems to be in the outer activity, do not allow that appearance to find anchorage in your consciousness or the suggestion from others concerning America. Stand serene in your God-given dominion, knowing the truth, seeing America free, governed by divine love and justice. The net that the sinister force of earth has seemed to draw America into will yet find the sword of truth and light. Sever the net each way, making of it the open-ended cross of freedom, of light and justice. The most valuable thing in the individual's life and the things which he cannot help is to shut his eyes to the appearance of them, acknowledge and set forth into action the mighty power of the I Am Presence. Do you not see, beloved students, how very, very foolish it is to keep accepting the appearance through suggestion or otherwise, which you do not want, whether it is national, state, or personal, when you have such an extraordinary privilege of setting into activity the mighty I Am Presence to correct whatever has the appearance of less imperfection? The habit of mankind has been to see imperfection where we see perfection. Now, in the recognition of the mighty I Am Presence, fully accept its perfection every hour of the day. This does not mean that you have to dwell on this by the hour, but you can at least assert once every hour of the waking state. I do accept the full activity of my mighty I Am Presence. Each time you assert this, you are building its perfection more powerful into your outer activity for you are already using this energy, and why not acknowledge at all times who and what it is you are using, thus giving it the dominion it wishes to convey to you? In this way you set into motion for the freedom, protection, and blessing of America, your beloved country, and invincible power. You do as yet little dream of the mighty power of adjustment. It can cause you to take place when consciously set into motion by one or more who recognize its invincible universal power. Now let me suggest that instead of listening to the constant lamentation and suggestion of all kinds of destructive activities, that you know the I Am Presence consumes them and requalifies all this energy with freedom, protection, and perfection for America and the world. For your encouragement, I want to say that all those human beings who started the cause of this present condition did not foresee that it was going beyond their control, and through it, many of them have lost their outer ability to longer foster it. So those who are attempting to bring back prosperity by the unlimited use of beer will find things going beyond their control. Instead of temporary prosperity, things will sweep into actual prosperity. So now, as at all times of seeming chaos, will come peace on earth, goodwill to man, and the light of the expanding Christ in the hearts of individuals, permeating the earth, will draw to itself its own. Again, for the benefit of the beloved students. I urge them not to discuss discordant things any more than is enough to understand the situation. Then turn completely from it, and never let it hold your attention again. For I assure you, what you entertain in your consciousness will find expression in your life and world. So fill it with the great I Am Presence, holding in its embrace the mighty fulfillment of your every desire. See that perfection, the full perfection of its activity everywhere in your life and world. Do not be affected or disturbed by the creation of others where you cannot help, except to see perfection, knowing that back of the seeming shadow is the blazing white light of the I Am Presence. 
This, beloved ones, is my greeting of the season I leave with you. In closing, my mother and others of the ascended hosts, some of whom you do not know, but who know you, send their greetings of love, peace, opulence, and strength to each of you, to bless you on your way to your final victory and achievement. St. Germain Well, very fortunately, the Radio Corporation can't charge us for overtime on our station. I suppose if they knew of it, they would want to charge us. I want to say a word or two in conclusion, and it is to urge the students to recognize that when they say I am, for whatever they want to be accomplished, they not only set the great I am presence into action for the accomplishment, but they should be deeply aware that it holds within it the self-expanding, self-sustaining, self-emanating power. While reputation is good and oftentimes required to produce a deeper conviction, yet in the present advancement of the students they should become more conscious of its innate, inherent self-sustaining power. This would give the outer consciousness a fuller comprehension of the sustaining power, so that the outer activity of the mind is occupied with other duties, it can send forth the charge of the I am into any achievement once an hour without any way interfering with the student's work. It is such a mistake for the student to let register in his mind the absurd idea that he hasn't time for these things, when it only takes a moment to powerfully realize the mighty invincible activity of his I am presence in whatever his attention is required to be used. However, this application might be very helpful. I am the mighty presence, commanding the time, all the time I require for the realization and application of this mighty truth. On the other hand, if many times during a day, one will for a few moments take the consciousness that I am the only intelligence and presence acting, it will naturally adjust things according to the requirement. It is so easy to set the consciousness into motion, knowing one is not restricted by any sense of limitation. Temples of Light They are located in the etheric belt above the Earth's atmosphere. The radiation is poured out from this belt to the Earth through its atmosphere. The etheric belt around the Earth and that around Venus should be vastly different. Venus is within the etheric belt of the Sun, while the Earth is below that. Warning, do not give recognition to anyone who is a tool for the sinister force. Simply know one thing only. There is only the I Am Presence, intelligence, light, and power acting. Do not be concerned about any personal activity of any kind whatsoever at any time. The student's business is to see perfection. Feel it and to be it, no matter what any human appearance seems to be. Benediction from out of the heart, thy great silence, O mighty I am presence, comes the solution of all things, the perfection of all things, for thou art the only governing power, perfection, and intelligence in all outer experience. For thou art the presence governing all human expression. Only as we see thy perfect manifestation in all things, do we cause perfection to manifest in all things. Discourse 26, December 29, 1932. Saint Germain. Invocation, thou mighty, infinite presence, all unfolding love, infinite in thy activity, gracious in thy loving power, we salute thee heart to heart, face to face, pouring forth eternal gratitude for the outpouring of thy mighty energy, for the use of thy directing wisdom, for the presence of thy opulence in our home and use. We acclaim ourselves that active part of thee, self-conscious of thy divinity, maintaining every hour thy supreme command. I bring you greetings from the great host who minister and who watch all activity. The Discourse We all rejoice exceedingly in the wondrous loving presence of the students, for the great harmony, joy, and accomplishment that has been attained. How mighty that miracle-working presence I am can and will manifest its dominion if such a wonderful state is maintained. And I tell you with no uncertainty, it can be maintained, ever growing greater and greater in the comprehension of that God presence in its supreme power of divine love. Every student should remember with definite certainty that in this quickening power of the I Am presence, within his being, everything good or otherwise is stirred into action. If there is latent within that conscience rebellion, resentment, or the inclination to judge, it means that all this will be stirred and brought to the surface to be consumed. And I tell you with no uncertainty, unless the student consciously consumes that which is brought forth to the surface, it will consume him. If one finds himself becoming irritated, 
he should seize the reins in issuing that command through the I Am Presence and declare that this be governed harmoniously. Here let me again remind the students that the greatest thing in their progress is self-correction, and there is no person, place, condition, or thing to blame for what they entertain but themselves. This is the most imperative for their future progress. These beloved students have arrived at a point where such subtle conditions must be made clear and thoroughly understood, otherwise they will find themselves facing conditions they are unable to govern. I repeat again to the students to be greatly encouraged because of the strides they are making in self-control, the fuller and fuller acceptance of these mighty laws of life, and their willingness to apply the mighty whip of self-correction. For I tell you frankly, and I speak from experience, that the outer activity which we term the human has to be flayed with no uncertainty before it is brought under the subjection to the divine command. The reason I gave and use of the rays of flame through the hand is because the minds of some are attuning more rapidly than the atomic structure of the body is being raised. This activity of passing the hand over the body will maintain and sustain that equalization of the quickening of the mind and the raising of the atomic structure to its balancing point. I am so happy and willing to give every assistance to the student, as are others, but there are certain bounds beyond which we may not go because of the self-conscious advancement of the students which they must do for themselves. However, every one of them has everything by which to be encouraged. But again, let me urge them that at no time may they divide the attention of the I Am Presence. To do this means that they are releasing the stream of energy and giving power to outside things and simply delaying your progress. I speak from experience. It is not possible to divide the attention. For it must all be given to the I Am Presence in order to go beyond a certain point of attainment. I do not wish to bring any shock to the students under this radiation. But I must speak the truth, that if those beloved students who have been brought under this radiation are not able to hold their attention entirely upon the I Am Presence, it will close the door to our assistance to them for a long time. This need not be done if the students will follow the direction. Make the sincere effort every time the attention wanders off. Bring it back with firm determination and say, I give all power to the I Am Presence, which I am, and I refuse with determination acceptance to anything else ever again. I wish to prepare the students that there will come the time when they may not be sustained by our messengers, but must rely on their own ability to hold with such a firm grip upon the I Am Presence that they will always receive its mighty sustaining power. It is useless and a mistake for any student after months of instruction to each day or even a few days allow himself to be thrown into a sense of depression or doubt of the inner power or his abilities to apply it. This childish attitude of mind will in time shut the door if it is not discontinued. Each student should take his positive stand the moment discord of any kind attempts to enter into the mind and assert his dominion by declaring, I am the almighty governing presence of my life and my world and I am the peace, harmony, and courage, self-sustained, which carries me serenely through everything that confronts me. It is so important that the students have the benefit of the manuscripts that we must discontinue the instruction until they are completed, for according to their ability to accept that which is illustrated in the manuscripts, will the great judge determine what shall next be given. We may not, under any circumstance, take the student beyond the point where he is well fortified, I must say, for the protection of the students, that certain phenomena manifest about them to be calm, poised, and unmoved by it at all times and to go serenely through, not allowing their attention to be held by it. For it is not unlikely in this number of students that some may have sufficiently generated energy from past understanding at a certain point to produce certain phenomena. In such a case, they should always take the firm stand. I am the governing presence of this utilizing it in its highest expression and use. You see, in all this amount of instruction that has been given, it is but a fragment upon which the student must build. The student must always watch for ideas from within himself upon which to build his expansion. The first premise for every student on earth who wishes to attain permanent achievement is to first remind himself that I am the presence and intelligent activity. This is the first principle and in it he can never go astray. I assure the beloved students that they need not crave nor desire phenomena, for the natural law of their being is their sustained progress, will produce abundant phenomenal proof as they are ready for it. 
In this mark you, I do not in any wise refer to the appearance of any of the ascended ones, for that is an entirely different thing, and is really not to be taken as phenomena of any kind. I watched with great interest the inner activity of the students, Tuesday and Wednesday, and it was very gratifying to see the expansion of that inner light within them as the power of love grew more intense. It should be remembered by the students that when they say, I am, they are making the outer activity a mighty magnet for the light to reach and expand. I think it would be very wise for each student to take the attitude at this time, or in the beginning of the use of both the instruction and the manuscript. Great I am presence, take me within thyself. There instruct me and cause me to retain the full memory of these inner instructions. As messengers of the light, this training is very essential. But the idea should not in any way cause anxiety or tension in the desire to retain, because an attitude of that kind might easily close the outer memory of the inner experience. I cannot help but smile to myself at the closeness which some of the students are coming to most surprising things but I trust they will always find themselves poised and serene in whatever the experience is, knowing that I am the one eternal, self-sustained life in action, and to forever remove from their consciousness that there is such a condition of so-called death anywhere in the universe. The outer activity of the mind and world is a passing maya, shifting as the sands of the desert, and need never cause anyone the slightest concern, for I am the eternal life, knowing no beginning and never finding an end. Out of the heart of that great silence comes the ceaseless, pouring stream of life of which each one is an individualized part. That life is you, eternally, perfectly self-sustained, and the garment it clothes itself with are but little consideration, until one comes to a point of recognition wherein the attainment has prepared him for the seamless garment, self-sustained, radiant with every prismatic color. Then may one indeed rejoice in that eternal garment that is ever radiant and changeless, which has removed him from the wheel of cause and effect, and has made him a being of the cause only. That cause is the radiance of divine love, ever pouring and evolving from its conscious, self-poised, radiant God-center, the heart of the I Am Presence, which is eternal youth and beauty, the all-knowing presence containing in self-conscious action the past, present, and future, which, after all, are but the one eternal now. Such is the eternal elimination of all time and space. Then you find your world peopled with perfect beings, your buildings decorated with choicest jewels, you standing in the center of your creation, the jewel in the heart of the lotus, its petals your mighty avenue of its perfect activity. Such is a humble picture of that which stands before you, beckoning you into your perfect eternal home and radiance. You see, I feel a glorious radiance, and if each one, especially the students, could center themselves in the presence of divine love and hold themselves there firmly, what wonderful experiences would come to them if they would shut out the interference of the outer activity of the mind. For one to take the attitude that I am the presence of divine love at all times would do such wonderful things. To use this statement and feel it would at all times close the door to the outer activity of the mind. The solution of every problem is always right at hand because I am presence always holds everything within it. A demand is the impelling of a solution into expression. I am is the intelligent, active principle within us, the heart of our being, the heart of the planet, and the heart of the system. I cannot refrain from reminding the students again, for they should always know that whenever you say I am, you are releasing the One Almighty intelligent energy, power and self-sustained element. Keep at it, and you will come into a condition so supreme, so wonderful. When you are looking into the physical sun, you are really looking into the great central sun, the very heart of the I Am Presence. You must take the unconditional stand with your body that the I Am Presence governs this physical body completely and compels it into obedience. The more attention you give your body, the more it is the master, and the more it will demand and keep demanding from you. When the physical body is either chronically ill or continually showing disturbance, it proves that it has been given attention over a period of years to one disturbance or another, and it will never improve until one takes the positive attitude and whips it into obedience. You can positively produce whatever you want in your body if you will fix your attention upon the perfection of it, 
but do not let your attention rest on its imperfection. For the ascension, I am the commanding presence. Use this often, for it stills the outer activity so you become centered in the activity of love. The instant you feel something discordant, turn away from it. You have the scepter of power in your conscience. Now use it. You are to follow Jesus' command. See no man after the flesh. It means exactly what it says. Recognize no human imperfection in thought, feeling, word, or deed. A very powerful thing to use in problems is to take the simple consciousness. God in me, the I am presence, come forth. Govern and solve the situation harmoniously. It would do wonders. The whole thing is to instantly draw forth the I am presence and set it to work. Jesus said, Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Say to your divine self, See here, God, come forth and take care of this. God wants you to set him to work. This release of the flood of God energy, intelligence, and substance which flows to do the command. Benediction Thou mighty, commanding I am presence, assert thy dominion within the heart and conscience of each student. Command the life activity to express its fullness. Set thyself a guard at the door of the mind of each one, so he admits only that which is helpful and harmonious. Bless each one with the power to hold fast and go forth to harmonious attainment. We thank thee. Notes Cha Ara, his mother, Nada, and Saint Germain were working very intensely on the expanding of the inner light within each one who is here. We wish that the students might see from the inner standpoint. It would be an experience never to be forgotten. Discourse 27, December 24, 1933. Christmas Eve. Invocation. Thou mighty, majestic Christ power, now grown to full stature, we salute thee by the sign of the heart and head, accepting the fullness of thy mighty power made manifest in the hearts of the students and the people of America. We accept the fullness of the light and its illuminating presence within the heart and mind of each one, surging forth with such intensity that it carries the courage and strength for everyone to make the needed conscious effort which will enable the mighty I Am Presence to raise the atomic structure into its full ascension. Now I will step aside and let our beloved brother speak his heart. The Discourse by Beloved Jesus I bring you love and salutations from many of the ascended host, some of whom you know and others of whom you are yet to know. I am the light, the way and the truth, is the Christmas bell that is still ringing throughout the field of cosmic activity, in the understanding that has been brought to you in the meaning and power of the words I am, you will find a charmed circle in which you may move untouched by human discordant operation. It is not only a matter of knowing the presence, but in practicing the presence in even the simplest activity. For as you attempt an unfamiliar experience, you may many times feel timid and uncertain. But as you learn to use the I am in the solving of your desire or problem, you find growing a confidence that you can apply with a definite assurance. The student should always understand that it is the great silence or stillness of the outer that the inner power flows in its ever-increasing accomplishment, and soon they will come to know that even as they think of their mighty source, the I Am, they will feel an increase of strength, vitality, and wisdom, which will enable them to go forward with a feeling of mastery that will surely one day open wide the door through the limitations of their human creation into the vastness of their true freedom. We so often see in the heart the craving for proof, some remarkable manifestation which will strengthen them on their way. I assure you, beloved children of the light, any proof given outside of yourself is but temporary, but every step proven in and through your own conscious application is an eternal accomplishment, and as you continue to gain the mastery through your self-conscious application, you are not only accomplishing the things in hand, but you are raising the consciousness until presently you will find that all barriers have gone down. It is in this manner that the door of human limitation is forever nailed back. And as my outer form was nailed to the cross, so do you, by your ascending consciousness, nail back the door of self-created limitation and feel and know your dominion. To the many students so vitally interested in making the ascension, I would urge you to use the statement often, I am the ascension in the light. This will enable your consciousness to more quickly rise out of the Maya of human creation. 
It cannot be stressed too urgently that as you live in and accept more fully the transcendent power of the I Am Presence, you will find that not only the outer struggle ceases, but that as you have entered deeper into the light, the outer things that you have sought so earnestly will really and truly begin to seek you. Because by that time you will truly and fully realize the unreality of form and its transitory activity, you will then know that within you and the light about you is everything you can possibly desire. And the outer, which has seemed so very important, will have lost its great binding power upon you. Then in the outer things that come to you will come joyous freedom. This is the true activity of outer things. As you become more conscious of the transcendent powers which are at your command, you will know that you can quickly draw to yourself anything you require without harming or affecting another of God's children. This truth must be established within the consciousness, for conscientious souls must know this unwaveringly. So they may not at intervals find themselves wondering if it is right for them to succeed when others around them are not succeeding. For your greatest service, I assure you, is to gain the mastery and freedom for yourself. Then you are prepared to dispense the light without being affected by the human creation which you must move. Never feel sad or distressed if another of God's children is not ready to accept the light. For if he does not come to the light of his own choosing, it is rarely but a temporary step. As one begins to gain a conscious freedom from the body, he understands how temporal these outer things are and how unimportant. But when one enters into the universal consciousness or the great cosmic activity, one finds to enter into the light is all importance. Then he will know the joy of the inner presence and its invincible activity, for which his heart will leap with joy. Shortly before I became aware of my full mission, the statement stood out vividly before me. I am the presence that never fails or makes a mistake. This, I knew later, was a sustaining power which enabled me to be the resurrection and life. It is unfortunate indeed that some of the scriptural statements have been clouded by human concept. Yet I am thankful indeed, and many have remained unaltered. Another statement I used constantly for more than three years was, I am always the majestic power of pure love that transcends every human concept, and that opens a door to me to light within its heart. I knew later this greatly intensified my true inner vision. In response to the earnest desire within the hearts of many, I wish to say that during the years in which the scriptures seemed to have been unaware of my activity, I was going from place to place in search of the explanation of the light and presence which I felt within myself. And I assure you, beloved students, not with the ease and speed of which you were able to seek today. Those of that day in my association were joyous to receive the knowledge of those unchronicled experience, but owing to the unusual nature of them, it was thought unwise to place them before the multitude. So it has been through the ages, when the period of transcendent experience has begun to fade into the yesterdays, and those who followed were not sufficiently advanced to realize its truth. They had shut out from the humanity glories, beautiful and wonderful. However, at this time there has come to the assistance of humanity the cosmic Christ power which became so real to me. This, through its natural impulse for expression, is steadily and surely finding its way into the hearts and minds of a large percentage of mankind, to the extent that great hope is present that this activity will enable the veil of human creation to be lifted. So great numbers of humanity will see signs and wonders, and feel them within their own hearts. Then they cannot be turned aside from the truth by human doubts and fears. I spent some time in Arabia, Persia, and Tibet, and closed my pilgrimage in India, where I met the beloved Master who had then made the ascension, although I did not know it at the time. Through the power of his radiation, revelation after revelation came to me, through which I was given expressions or statements that enabled me to hold steady the outer activity of my mind until it no longer had power to disturb or retard me. It was then that the full glory of my mission was revealed and the eternal cosmic record it was to make, which was to be established at that time for the blessing and enlightenment of the humanity that was to follow. You might be interested to know that this became an active cosmic record, which is quite different from any other records made, in that it contains within it, and does today, the forward urge or impulse for which the human mind was and is a magnet. This accounts for the expressions and statements I give forth becoming more and more vivid through the centuries, and with the forward impulse of that activity, assisted by their powerful rays of radiation focused upon the earth, it will enable a great number of humanity to become so anchored in the truth and its conscious application that a transcendent accomplishment will be achieved.
There is no single step so vitally important as getting before mankind the knowledge of the I Am, their source of life, and its transcendent power which can be brought into the conscious youth of the individual. Within three years it will be amazing how this simple, yet all-powerful truth will have spread upon humanity, for all who will think upon it, practice its presence, and consciously direct its energy through the power of divine love will find a new world of peace, love, health, and prosperity open to them. Those who understand applying the knowledge of the I Am need never, never be beset by inharmony or disturbance in their home, world, or activity. For it is only by a lack of acknowledgment and acceptance of the full power of this mighty presence that individuals allow human concepts and creations to disturb them. The student should constantly look within his human self and see what habits or creations are there that need to be plucked out and disposed of, for only by refusing to any longer allow habits of judging condemning and criticizing to exist can he be free. The true activity of the student is only to perfect his own world, and he cannot do it as long as he sees imperfection in the world of another of God's children. You have been given marvelous statements to harmoniously govern your life and world. Apply them with determination and you will succeed. Another correction many of you wish to make is this. I did not say on the cross, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? But I did say, Father, how thou hast glorified me, and I did receive into the glories with me the brother who was on my right of the cross. There are a number of those beloved students whom I know personally at the time of the crucifixion, and in giving this message forth to them I feel like talking to old friends, for in that great ascended present centuries are but an incident, and only as we come in contact with human events is there a cognizance of time. Beloved students who are so earnestly seeking the light, try to feel yourself held in my loving embrace. Try to feel yourselves clothed in the light, dazzling as a noonday sun. So anchor within your consciousness the feeling of your ability to make the ascension that each day brings you closer and closer to the fullness of its realization. Cut loose all things on earth that bind you. Know that in the love, wisdom, and power which you accept from your mighty I Am Presence, is the power that does this transcendent service. Always remind yourself that God in you is your certain victory. The I Am Presence which beats your heart is the light of God that never fails, and that your power, by the acceptance of its presence, to loose its energy and direct it, is limitless. It is my great joy and privilege to continue in association with my beloved brother, St. Germain, in pouring forth through my conscious radiation a definite assistance to the students who accept the instruction of St. Germain. This will continue during the entire year of 1934. Do not misunderstand me. I am pouring out to all mankind, but in this radiation to the students I am privileged to give a special service. With my love I enfold you, with my light I clothe you, with my energy I sustain you, that you may go forth dauntless in your quest for happiness and the perfecting of yourselves and your world. I trust this will bring a radiation that you may feel at will throughout the year, and that your attainment may bring you boundless joy. I am the enlightening, revealing presence, manifest with full power, Jesus the Christ. St. Germain, I wish to convey my enfolding love as a gift to each of the beloved students, for love is the greatest gift that can be given. Discourse 28, December 25, 1933 Christmas Day, St. Germain, Invocation, Thou mighty, infinite, active presence of the Christ everywhere, we bow before Thy majesty and power. Assert Thy dominion in the heart and mind of every individual throughout the land, causing Thy wondrous perfection to express everywhere. I bring you greetings of love, the comprehending consciousness and mastery from the great host of ascended masters, who have looked with favor upon my humble effort to dispense the light and who bring to you their love and clothe you in their mantle of light in this Christmas day. The Discourse O love divine, in thy magic power of transmutation, we assert thy power in cleansing and purifying the world of human mistakes and human creation. Thou art the eternal victory, the golden pathway of attainment for every student of the light, and through thy transcendent power, the Kumara start forth their mighty radiation for the blessing of the earth and mankind for the entire year of 1934. Thus will mankind find many desirable changes taking place, greater health, happiness, and prosperity being restored, a deeper sense of love, a greater desire for justice in the hearts of mankind everywhere. 
In many channels, human selfishness will be greatly transcended through the feeling of pure love which will generate within the heart, enable them to govern the human sense, and cause them to involuntarily desire to bless. It is my wish that every one of the students send forth this truth in conscious radiation at least once a day. God, the mighty I am presence, is governing with invincible power everywhere in the hearts and minds of mankind. Those masters from Venus who visited the Royal Teton and who will again visit it this new year will start forth a definite activity to consume the subtle attempt to generate and bring into outer activity another war. Shambhala is losing its power, which for many years had been drawn within its own compass. The Golden City, whose rays are sent in all directions like a spoke from a wheel, is performing a service for mankind that it alone can do. If mankind could know and understand these activities for what they are, such marvelous changes would take place in the outer world as even the advance would hardly conceive possible. On New Year's Day, the cosmic wheel of progress will have reached a point where, in personal activity, much of the free will of individuals can be set aside. This brings a joy and hope unspeakable to the conscience of those serving from these transcendent spheres of activity. Thus, O oh students of light, can you understand the magnificent assistance that is yours to be had by still in the outer and reaching forth for it? I plead with you, dear students, shut your minds against the ignorant and inharmonious suggestions of human beings everywhere. I say to every one of you, freedom in every way stands at your door, if you will but keep your personality harmonized and refuse to accept inharmonious, sinister suggestions from the atmosphere and from those you contact in mortal form. It is imperative that this be done if you wish to bring into your world joy, peace, opulence, and perfection of every kind. It is not our intent or desire to intrude a single thing upon your free will, but oh, the joy that leaps within our heart when we see the students taking hold, comprehending and applying these transcendent laws, which we know mean their certain victory. And may I reiterate that we have said before, there is no single thing so vicious in the human activity as that personality or suggestion which would try to turn the student from the truth and light which would be his freedom. In connection with this mighty cosmic activity, the student should work with great determination, consuming all past and present inharmonious creation. Every time your thoughts and desires reach forth in this matter, great currents of energy will come to your assistance to sustain and help you. This is part of the present amazing assistance sent forth to the earth, the silent watcher has waited for 200,000 years for the cosmic wheel to reach its point, a coming new year. Again I assert that never in the history of mankind has such transcendent activity been ready to rush to your assistance. I plead with you, O beloved students, is it not worth all your determined effort to act in accordance with this great blessing, which makes your struggle for freedom from human self-creation so much easier? Beloved students, how deeply my heart rejoices to see within you the intense desire for the light in your determined effort to apply these unerring laws, which will as surely give you your freedom as you apply them. I wish to thank all the students for their joyous desire for the limitless distribution of unveiled mysteries in the magic presence. In this great desire, beloved ones, is a service that you can little comprehend as yet is far-reaching blessing. I feel greatly blessed this day of devotion to the Christ to feel the love from the many pouring out to me, and I assure you, blessed ones, that I shall come back to you with all the loving power at my command to assist, enlighten, and bless you. In the special service that Jesus has decided to give forth, you are surely blessed indeed. Try to feel this wonderful truth with the deepest, intense feeling you can command. Open your arms, hearts, and minds to the glory of His radiation, and as you can do this more fully and completely, you will see how quickly all disturbing and limiting conditions about you will disappear. I plead with you, beloved students, do not continue to limit yourself by human concepts. Declare and feel your amazing ability to use these laws and direct this mighty energy to your freedom and perfection. Try to realize that your human form is not a dense creation difficult to manipulate. Try to feel it as a transparent substance that follows your slightest direction. Speak to your body. Command it to be strong, receptive only to the ascended master consciousness, to be a perfect expression of the divine power of the mighty I Am, and to take on its beauty and form and expression. Review in your experience the powerful determination you have had at times to accomplish success in the outer activity of things. 
and then realize how much more powerful your determination can generate to attain your eternal freedom. Believe me, beloved ones, when I say to you, there is but your human creation that stands between you and your freedom from all limitation. That creation is no greater an obstacle than you accept it to be. If you take away from that creation its power to limit you, any hour, any day, you may joyously step through that veil into your world of the electronic presence, so beautiful, so joyous, so filled with the dazzling light of its glorious presence, and move there forever in the light of eternal glory. Then as you step back through the human veil for service and the outer activity, you will still continue to feel the glory of the transcendent being which you are. Then not of your own outer conditions or those about you will touch you or affect you in any way. My whole being thrills with this joyous anticipation for you, as I know with a definite certainty your attainment. To any who would let the suggestion of the ignorance of other human beings turn them aside from the path, I wish to say, just remember what awaits you, what is within your ability to achieve and to be. Remember again, again and again, that as you grow into more and more intense acceptance of your mighty I Am Presence, the outer problems which have seemed so terrifying will surely fade from appearance. Thus not as your problem solved, but every step gained in this way does not reappear. Instead it becomes your eternal freedom. If it is financial freedom you crave, I plead with you to take the outer activity of your mind off the appearance and place it upon your mighty I Am Presence, the only giver of all the mighty opulence there is. Stand firm and determined in this, and you'll have all the money you desire to use. Life does not limit you. Opulence does not limit you. Love does not limit you. Therefore, why allow your human limiting concepts to bind you longer? Beloved children of the light, arise in the mighty glory of your true being. Go forth, a mighty conquering presence be. The light of God that never fails, move, clothed in the light of the transcendent glory of your God self, and be free. Benediction Mighty I am presence, transcendent in this Christ activity, we give to thee our eternal thanks and gratitude for thy love, glory, freedom, and our conscious ability and power to accept the fullness of thy glory made manifest in the outer activity of our lives that we stand with firm determination in thy light, directed by thy wisdom, and forever sustained by thy transcendent love, anchored within our hearts. Discourse 19, August 19, 1934 Beloved Arcturus Discourse on the Music Festival at Soldier Field, Chicago, Illinois It is St. Germain's request that I voiced you the mighty accomplishment at the music festival last night. May I first refer to my own humble efforts in conjunction with those at the Royal Teton on New Year's Day two years ago. It was then decreed that a Century of Progress exposition should be a focus for a constructive activity which should ever expand and increase in intensity during the next 100 years. The opening and lighting of it was the initiatory step that is to usher in the beautiful, magnificent Golden Age which is signalized in that activity. This has made Soldier Field sacred ground a sacred altar of divine activity in the Western world, and so far as humanity at large is concerned, the hub of the whole of America. A volume could be voiced on all that took place, and that which led up last evening, but owing to the human sense of time, this must be greatly condensed and but an outline given. Before proceeding with the description, I wish to call your attention to the unparalleled number of pageants of all kinds, of many nationalities that are being held in Soldier Field this summer. These cover the period from the ascension of Jesus down to the present time. They give acknowledgment of the ascension, which is the most vital thing in the culmination of all human experience. These pageants, from the human standpoint, are a calling forth of the latent memory in humanity at large and are raising the essence of that activity. How easy it is for humanity to pass over transcendent activities because of their unbelief, acknowledgment or acceptance of the true perfection of life, for all life and manifestation is God in action. Unfortunately, however, it is more often colored by human concepts of limitation and destructive qualities which, through the individual's power of free will, everyone is at liberty to do. This ere long, however, will be greatly remedied by the setting aside of the great part of the human free will as is known today. This will enable much of humanity to be awakened and saved from their own destruction. 
Here may I say that the students who think they can play with the great law because of their unwillingness to give the necessary self-discipline will find themselves unfortunate indeed if they attempt it when once having entered upon the conscious path. The great law, which does not discriminate, takes individuals at their words and feelings. Those who think they can escape this are but deceiving themselves. The coming pageant of the Celts is really of great importance, for it enters into the vibratory action from the time of Jesus up to the present. The inner activity within and above Soldier Field last night was one of the most divine activities since the advent of the Kumaras into the presence of the earth. Circle upon circle rose above the surface of the earth, and those seated within the field. The first sequel was formed by the members of the Great White Brotherhood in their golden robes, being those whose outer forms have not yet made the ascension. Next came the ascended host of masters who have made the ascension. Then came the angel divas and seven of the cherubim. The circle above them contained four of the gods of the mountains, three of whom you know, the others you shall know. Around these were the archangels, of whom the archangel Michael was the director. Surrounding the core of light within the center of the field, extending for two hundred feet within the earth and to five thousand feet above, were St. Germain, Jesus, the tall master from Venus, the great divine director. They were the dispensers of the mighty currents of energy sent to all parts of the earth to do their work with no uncertainty. During the singing of the holy city, the divine pattern of which is to become the holy city upon earth, was lowered into its position, where it shall remain, until it becomes a visible, vibrant city of light to the westward. The exact position of this I may not disclose at the present time, but I assure you, it was a mighty activity which will become a mighty reality to the humanity of earth. During Mr. John Charles Thomas Solos, the great vibratory action was taken up and re-echoed by a great, majestic celestial chorus whose radiance poured forth over America like a glistening shower of light to consume and bless. During the singing of the Hallelujah Chorus, the entire activity was turned over to the direct dispensation of Jesus himself. I wish to assure you that the set pieces and color were not just a human idea, but those responsible for their presence were inspired by the Ascended Masters, principally St. Germain, in order to establish their renewed, powerful activity, which was intensified a thousandfold or more to again act within the life the soul, the light from the heart to the periphery of America and the world. The representation of signing the Declaration of Independence was to bring forth the conscious attention of the earth, and especially America, its unparalleled activity upon the earth, and to call it to the attention of the people of America, that they might hold close to and stand by the original Constitution of the United States, which was and is a divine creation until such a time as the complete Ascended Master Constitution of the United States of America shall come forth, as the advance of the Golden Age proceeds. The Golden Eagle and the Shield represent the height of divine protection for America, again re-established. The Bell of Liberty and the Power Color of Blue represents the glorious liberty and freedom forever for America and the earth from all human selfishness, the instigator of which in every case is private profit, and the cause has been the same throughout the ages. The four powerful blue rays that formed a canopy over the field, thought to be ordinary by the mass of humanity, represented a four-dimensional activity brought into visibility upon earth. And if it be necessary for the protection of America, the jewel in the heart of God, then that blazing light as of a thousand suns shall descend upon earth and consume all human inharmony and selfishness from the planet. The fan of pink light at the beginning was qualified to serve in the entire activity, and the great love star stood above all, shedding its rays through the tier above tier of great beings. I congratulate you and this good brother and those many students of our beloved St. Germain, and I thank you for all your earnest, sincere work in behalf of the freedom of America. May the activity of these beloved students of light ever continue to expand, until from this nucleus the light of its radiance covers America. I also congratulate our beloved St. Germain for his great accomplishment in establishing this nucleus and focus in America, and for his wonderful love, his light, his work for America for nearly two hundred years, which ere long will begin to bear fruit of such perfect kind as is not seen heretofore in any civilization. I bow in acknowledgment of his great love, wisdom, and strength. I congratulate you, my beloved sister and brother, for your love, steadfastness, patience, and activity for the students that have been and those that are to follow. 
ever know that I am the only acting presence, and you will find that all activity will conform to the perfection of that presence. I bid you adieu, but not goodbye. Arcturus Discourse 30, November 29, 1934 Beloved St. Germain's Thanksgiving Day Discourse Beloved students of the light, today is indeed one of the greatest days of thanksgiving that I have experienced in one hundred years. To see how the light, acknowledgment, and acceptance of the mighty I Am Presence is being received and utilized by the hundred of students in America is truly a time of rejoicing and thanksgiving. Not only do I pour forth my love and blessing to the students, but the entire host of Ascended Masters, the great Cosmic Masters, the Great White Brotherhood, the Legion of Light, and those ministering from Venus join in this praise and thanksgiving for the true light that is being spread among mankind. I do and shall deeply appreciate every assistance of the students under this radiation in getting the books into print and spreading them before humanity, for it is the greatest service at present that can be rendered. The greatest need today is in calling the outer attention of mankind to the one great source which can give the needed assistance, and that is the mighty I am presence, and the host of ascended masters. The attention of individuals fixed upon this great source gives the opening needed for the outpouring of the great, eternal cosmic light to flood forth into the outer world, reaching not only the conscience of individuals, but into conditions that greatly need readjusting. It is my wish that all the students under this radiation feel their individual responsibility in this respect to keep their minds and bodies harmonized and to keep charging their minds and emotional worlds with the directing wisdom and perfection of the mighty I Am Presence. This will enable assistance to be given humanity, which the outer could not possibly conceive of in its heretofore limited condition. I wish each student to understand and feel deeply that the great Ascended Masters and myself stand ready to give every assistance to the individual that the law of this being permits. The need of the students is always to stand firm and unyielding in the presence until the outer human creation about them is dissolved and consumed. And then the mighty light, wisdom, and power of the mighty I Am Presence will flood their minds, beings, and worlds with this glorious radiance, filling them and their words with that harmony, happiness, and perfection which every heart so much craves. I urge all to do definite, conscious, protective work for America that the cosmic light and eternal perfection enfold the earth removing and consuming all discord, and continue to bless persons, places, conditions, and things, for it is the mighty miracle-working activity which will usher in the prosperity and happiness that all so much desire. It is my great joy to report to you that already great protection has been given to the eastern coast from Philadelphia to Maine. If this protection had not been given, some of your cities would have been in ruins today. This, beloved ones, is what it means to bring a mighty focus of the Ascended Masters into your midst. Only as your inner sight is open to see and know the true reality can you have a small concept of the truth which I have just spoken. May your hearts fill with joy, and may you work earnestly for the health, success, and prosperity of the messengers who have been the channels through whom this focus of protection has been given. Unfortunate indeed are those who criticize the messengers of the work better than they had never been born in this embodiment. Beloved students, try with all sincerity to feel the reality and infinite blessings of this work, that your world in America may reap the great reward of that blessing. Words are inadequate to tell you the fullness of my gratitude for your earnest, sincere effort. Your ability and power to bless and prosper will ever increase as you hold firmly to, and within, your mighty I Am Presence. My love enfolds you, my light illumines you, and the wisdom of the mighty I Am Presence prospers you until the fullness of all perfection. The love of the mighty host of Ascended Masters, the Great White Brotherhood, and the Legion of Light enfold you always. I am sincerely in the light. St. Germain Discourse 31, December 25, 1934 Beloved St. Germain's Christmas Day Discourse St. Germain it is with great joy that we are observant of the tremendous accomplishment, individually, nationally, and cosmically speaking, for when we have the use of and can cooperate with those great and mighty cosmic currents of energy directed by that great, wise intelligence, then we know that every step moved forward brings us nearer and nearer to the mighty glory and freedom which many are learning to feel and rejoice in. How different all activities are when working in conjunction with that great cosmic wisdom, 
which is no longer compelled to withhold its mighty energy because of the free will of the individual. For now the cosmic activities of the nations are of first consideration. Then comes the individual. Heretofore, because of the individual, certain cosmic activities had to wait. Now the great cosmic wheel is turned, bringing all national, emotional, and mental activities into that great preparation where every cog of the wheel must fit into the cosmic reality. The free will of the individual still binds and limits the outer sufficiently, so there will be many individuals and conditions in which it will be as though they were being run through great rollers in which all undesirable qualities are pressed out, and by the power of the consciously directed flame are consumed. The mighty radiance, consciously directed by the great host of ascended masters from the great central sun, is not only having tremendous effect on the minds and feelings of mankind on the surface of the earth, but far within the crust of the earth itself. Hence it has been possible to advert many great disasters. Here I want to say in great love, gratitude, and blessing to the hundreds of students who have been projecting the mighty love, wisdom, and power of the mighty I Am Presence into the mental and emotional world, and assure them that a gigantic work has been accomplished. For if mankind and the beloved students can once understand that all cause rest within the mental and emotional worlds, then they will have reached a point of understanding wherein they know with complete assurance that the outer activity of mankind must and will come into perfect order when the only cause, the mental and emotional activities, are corrected and held in subjection. This is how so much has been accomplished even since last June. Here I want to assure those who have had some question in their minds. Was it really true that great devastation had been averted? that one day they will see and know the truth of which I have spoken. Since three hundred years after Jesus' ministry, mankind steadily and surely drifted back into dealing with effects instead of causes, and that is why no permanent assistance had been possible to be given. Now, with the assistance that the turn of the cosmic wheel permits, it is possible to bring the conscience of mankind back into dealing with the cause, and the effect, if out of order, must disappear. This is why the knowing of the mighty I Am Presence its powers and whereabouts, is bringing the students to deal only with that one and mighty presence whose cause is full perfection, as hundreds of these students are proving for themselves. When their attention is fixed upon the mighty I Am Presence, they are dealing with the one and mightiest cause, whose one and only expression is perfection. Therefore, their worlds first become filled with ease and rest, and through that they begin to feel the glory of this mighty presence, as they begin to feel it, they realize that they can reach forth to this mighty presence, consciously, and release such a mighty avalanche of its mighty energy, that the human does not even have time to requalify but a fragmentary part with its limitation and in harmony. Therefore the strength which is required to give the eternal proof to the individual is sustained. Thus, through the individual's own self-conscious effort, comes the greater and greater recognition of the possibilities within this conscious grasp. Mark you, I say, conscious grasp, for it is only through first, conscious acknowledgement, second, acceptance, and third, application, or in other words, consciously directing this mighty intelligence and pure energy, that the outer, or human, is kept dissolved enough for the outer to truly grasp these mighty activities. Oh, the pity mankind has believed so long, and many individuals very sincerely, that they could cure hate, condemnation, and criticism with those same qualities. How futile and tragic has been this false concept! Believe me, O oh children of the light, hate never cured hate and never will. Condemnation and criticism never cured their kind. For as we have so often said to you, that which your attention and vision is held upon, you are qualified and compelling to come into your world, abide and act there. With all we have said and given forth, so little has been grasped of how much the personality is constantly qualifying the very atmosphere and conditions, about with it the things it does not want, through the belief that it can continue to have any kind of feeling and speak words of discord, hate and limitation, and still be unaffected by it. This stubborn, false concept of mankind has filled the world with all kinds of tragedy. Now this mighty, eternal light is being released to show mankind why the outer world has been so filled with tragedy. If I were to show you for one half hour how much selfishness has been removed from the mental and feeling world of humanity since these classes of the I Am began, you would scarcely believe that so much accomplishment in so short a time could have been possible. It could not and would not have been possible except for this mighty, eternal radiation of light from the great host of ascended masters, from the great central sun, the masters from Venus, the silent watcher, Cyclopea, and the mighty gods of the mountains. 
All this is making possible the achievement for which the Legion of Light and the Great White Brotherhood have labored for centuries, for over 14,000 years. This work is continued without cessation. The great ascended ones seen the victory from the beginning, but, oh, the infinite patience, to wait upon the waywardness of mankind century after century. Yet was there no single thought of impatience, or why does not humanity change? It is only within the compass of human thought and feeling that judgment and impatience enter in. Not for seven thousand years has there been such rejoicing at the inner octaves of activity for mankind as comes with the ushering of 1935. While it is true that there will be some great extremes in both constructive and destructive activity, yet the forward impulse is so great that many of the destructive things will pass with much less notice than otherwise would have been. As more and more of the students of the mighty I Am Presence realize that their thoughts and feelings are the only cause in their world, that it is entirely within their province, within their ability and dominion, to govern their thoughts and feelings, then they will know that to govern these harmoniously, sustaining this activity, will fill their worlds with eternal perfection. This day, when the great feeling and thought are fixed upon the Christ activity, it has made possible as never before the filling of the mind and feeling world of mankind with this mighty cosmic Christ presence. Thus can you understand how great is our happiness on this Christmas day, to see the goal of the freedom of mankind in sight. Once they learn to withhold all power they have given the screaming human appearance, then individuals will see how quickly these appearances will disappear. For no kind of discord nor human limitation can be sustained unless by the thought and feeling of individuals. Therefore, O beloved students of light, to every discordant limiting appearance say, Get thee hence, thou powerless human creation. I know thee not. My world is filled only with the mighty perfection of my mighty I am presence. I take away from you, foolish appearance, all power to harm or disturb. I walk henceforth in the light of the mighty I am presence, in which there is no shadow, and I am free, forever free. I say to you, O beloved students, do not fail to charge your mind, body, home, world, and activity with the mighty love, perfection, and intelligence activity of your mighty I am presence. Send forth through conscious projection, like the belching forth of a great cannon, the mighty violet consuming flame, consuming everything undesirable and imperfect in your world of activity. Consciously qualify this with the full power of divine love and action. Then see and feel what great beauty, happiness, and fact, you will experience as you move forward. I urge the students, with all earnestness of my being, to constantly charge everything within the activity of their thought and feeling with love, opulence, and perfect achievement. Do this qualifying with dynamic energy. Put great feeling and sureness back of it and you will find such changes taking place in your world of activity and environment as almost to compare with the rubbing of Aladdin's lamp. I say to you, beloved students, with all the love of my heart, use, use, use this mighty application to your freedom. When you call the mighty I Am Presence into action, into your life, environment, and activity, all struggle ceases. The undesirable moves out, and the I Am Presence moves in, and you find that you have truly entered into a new world, filled with the happiness and perfection you have always known existed somewhere within your own heart. Beloved ones, no matter how humble your present position seems to be, by calling your I Am Presence into action, you can transform everything within your world and fill it with the perfection that you desire to have there. Very important. Train yourself to still the outer, if only for five minutes, three times a day, at the end of that stillness with all the calm earnestness of your being. Call the mighty I Am Presence into action, and you have all the proof in the world you wish of the presence, power, and dominion of your own mighty God Self. The beloved Master Jesus wishes me to extend his love and assurance that he will give forth his special radiance to the students under this radiation for the entire year of 1935. He will not dictate over the ray today, but will on New Year's Day. This is the Christmas message with the host of great ascended masters, the legion of light and the great white brotherhood give to you this day. May your hearts, O beloved students, be filled with our eternal presence of divine love, and you may become so charged with its active presence that its very radiance becomes an eternal, consuming activity, keeping out everything but the eternal light of perfection. I charge the mental and emotional world of humanity with our eternal, active presence of divine love manifest everywhere in the hearts and minds of mankind. 
In the name, in the power, in the love of the eternal light and perfection of the universe, I send forth the consuming, purifying flame throughout the earth. Freeing mankind, controlling the feel of mankind, holding them in the governing presence and perfection of divine love, now and forever. With all the love of my being, St. Germain. Discourse 32, January 1st, 1935. Beloved Jesus' New Year's Day Discourse. As we look upon the accomplishment of the past year from the higher octaves of light, and then come into your octave of human activity, we see and feel the great change which has taken place even in one year. It is truly most encouraging, most assuring of the ultimate goal of victory in the freedom of mankind from the chains and limitation of their own creation. After all, the pity is mankind does not understand that the human activity alone is the only creator of limitation and harmony there is. In other words, through the ungoverned activity of the outer, personalities allow themselves to constantly requalify the perfect energy the pure essence of their own mighty I am presence, producing all that is undesirable, when it is within their ability to keep themselves so harmonized that the perfect intelligence and energy flowing through the human form could not it would not be requalified. Therefore, it would constantly do its perfect work, not only in perfecting the human form, causing it to express divine perfection, but it would allow that purity and perfection to flow out into the individual's world, producing the beauty, harmony, and success each heart so much craves. Question. Why does almost everyone desire greater beauty, perfection, and abundance of every good thing? Answer. Because it is an inner recognition of each one's own God-given dominion, which everyone can assert at any time. I assure you, beloved children of light, that every individual can assert his dominion at any time, if he only will, by his recognition and acceptance of his own mighty I Am Presence, for that enables this mighty, invincible presence to become the mighty, directed intelligence. Therefore, do you not see that this mighty presence, there is no obstruction, therefore no struggle, no interference of any kind? This is why the old scriptural statement so long used, Be still and know that I am God, can be made a dynamic power in one's life. This being still means the harmonizing and quieting of the outer mind. In the past year, we have drawn attention to many of the scriptural statements, giving more explanation of their true meaning. This year, we hope to bring forth a full and complete explanation of all the I Am statements used through the centuries, that mankind may have the evidence before their own eyes of the freedom and dominion which is within their own grasp. We rejoice and give thanks that this year will release such abundant financial support for this work that boundless light and blessing will be brought to mankind. In all past gold ages, when the great light of the higher octaves descended into the earth, enfolding and dissolving the human creation about individuals, they were so unable to reach into the higher octaves through the inner sight, hearing, and feeling, that they knew firsthand the true reality, and that the outer form was but the garment of this all-wise supreme intelligence, which the mighty I Am Presence used to find expression in the denser octave in which the human had drawn itself. Can you, O beloved students of the light, even for a few moments, realize what joy this brings to the hearts of the host of ascended masters, who have freed themselves through self-conscious effort from these same human limitations which you now experience? As these beloved messengers have come to know with full assurance that freedom, so all mankind will one day understand that everyone can make the necessary self-conscious effort in the recognition and acceptance of this mighty I Am Presence and have this same freedom. Do not let any one of the beloved students make such a mistake as to think that the mighty I Am Presence is going to act independently of the individual's own self-conscious effort. This never is and cannot be done. It is true that after the student has reached a certain point of attainment, the law seems to begin to act almost automatically. But this is only because a charged momentum has been built and established about the individual. Let me make clear to you now that never until you have made the ascension do you cease to make conscious application for your own freedom? Today I am going over some of these simple yet all-powerful acknowledgments of the truth because I wish every student under this radiation to have a copy of this, so each one may read it once a day for those who will do this earnestly and conscientiously. I will give forth my individual radiation to bless them and assist them to their freedom. You have been asked throughout the past year to charge your mind, body, home, world, and activity with the perfection of the mighty I Am Presence. Now, with your permission, I shall assist you, 
and also charge your being and world with this mighty perfection and abundance. I am offering this assistance to you, O beloved students. Let no one be so foolish as to doubt, for I am the Jesus, the Christ of Galilee that you have known for the past two thousand years, who is dictating this discourse and offering this assistance to you. Again, let me assure you that this work of St. Germain and myself is entirely different from anything that has ever been given forth to the Western world, because in this works there are no human concepts nor opinion. It has not been possible to do this heretofore until the visible light and sound rays could be established through which knowledge and instruction could be given. If you beloved ones as students could realize this, how great will be your blessing and benefit. The protection which has been given American and certain other parts of the world during the past few months has transcended anything I have ever known in my experience. Oh, if humanity could but realize this, how glad and willingly would they cooperate to their utmost to sustain it, so its all-powerful activity might ever increase. We can but call your attention to the truth, the reality as we know it to be. When you can fully accept this truth and apply it to your world and activity, you will have all the proof required in your own experience to enable you to know the full power of the truth of which I have spoken. To all who can accept this truth, it will enable me to charge their consciousness and fill their world and activity with this truth. They who doubt must wait, for doubt and fear are the two doors through which every human being must pass to know and have his full and complete freedom. The key that unlocks these doors is divine love and each one's acknowledgment of his own mighty I Am Presence as the fullness of the power of divine love acting. The door to the seventh octave of light stands open to every one of the beloved students under this radiation who will make sincere, earnest, self-conscious application. This, my beloved brothers and sisters, means your freedom. Can you, will you, grasp this with the full power of your I Am Consciousness and be free? As I am dictating these words to the messengers through amplifiers through your outer world is not yet known, these words and this radiation are going forth into the mental and feeling world of humanity, which will immediately start into operation. And as the students and individuals contact these words from time to time, they will find an immediate response which will enable them to feel the truth and the reality of which I speak. O oh, that humanity, who through church service after church service, are acknowledging my ascension, O oh, when can they not feel the true reality, and know that in my ascended, eternal light body, I can and do reach all who will open their hearts to my reception? O oh, children of earth, learn to couple your feeling of the truth with the acknowledgement of the truth that you wish to have manifest in your life. Then you will be enabled to go forth to any height of achievement in your quest for freedom. I am the open doorway which no man can shut. Your mighty I am presence is the truth the way, and the life. Your mighty I Am Presence is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Your mighty I Am Presence is your directing intelligence, your exhaustless, sustaining energy. Your mighty I Am Presence is the voice of truth speaking within your heart, the light enfolding you in its luminous presence, your eternal belt of protection through which no human creation can pass, your eternal reservoir of exhaustless energy, which you can release at will through your conscious charging. Your mighty I Am Presence is the fountain of eternal youth and beauty, which you can call into action and expression in your human form today. Your mighty I Am Presence is your resurrection and the life of your body and of your world of action into the perfection which the heart of every human being so much desires. Listen, O beloved students of light, when you are uttering these decrees for yourself, and I am uttering them for you, do you not see that we are doing it for all the rest of mankind as well as ourselves? That when you issue a decree of and through the I am, you are issuing that for everyone else as well as yourself. This is how the application and expression of I am becomes so powerful, exhaustless in its activity, and forever acts beyond the realm of human selfishness. Why? Because you are asking for every one of God's children the same perfection which you are calling into action for yourself. This is not possible except in the use of the I Am statement and application. For acting within the I Am presence takes you instantly out of the activity wherein there is a human selfishness. This is why the earnest, sincere student who will cast out all doubt of fear will find himself or herself acting within a sphere of positive, 
definite activity which knows no delay or lack of accomplishment in anything. Then, O oh beloved ones, do you not see how you are then acting in a world of infallibility, wherein your decrees enable the full power of the I Am to move into action, causing all human in harmony and limitation to move out? I now voice a decree that the host of ascended masters and students issued last night at the Royal Teton. Such freedom, health, prosperity, and harmonious action shall come forth for America and the world as has never been before experienced on earth. The students who will join us in this decree will render a service which will bless them throughout the ages. Only because America is the cup, the Holy Grail, do we often speak of America first. All should know without question that what blesses America blesses the world. An activity, a radiance that has not been known since the height of the last golden age of Atlantis, was sent forth from the conclave at the Royal Teton, the description of which St. Germain will give you later. The fullness of my love, light and blessing, I leave with yourself, all the students of all mankind, that the light within each heart may be so quickened that you and they will no longer know limitation of any kind, and the light become so powerful that its very radiance consumes all human creation accumulated through the past or present, setting all forever free. My love enfolds all forever. Jesus the Christ Discourse 33, July 4, 1932 Beloved Arcturus, Independence Day Discourse St. Germain, Invocation Mighty, sustaining, enfolding presence, we give praise and thanks for thy life everlasting, thy youth eternal, thy light illumining. The Discourse O America, we love you, mighty seed of God's eternal manifestation, we give praise and thanks that thou art sustained and governed by God alone. The day on which independence within the heart was established, thou didst become a radiating center of light to all humanity. We give praise and thanks that out of all will come peace and prosperity in mankind in thy embrace. Back of thee is the power that will sustain and maintain the reign of God on earth. His light shall illumine and strengthen the hearts of thy children in all ruling places, and out of all shall come love, justice, and wisdom. America, we love you. 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 Today, O America, those mighty messengers of God who have passed before look upon thee with their hearts filled with love and strength, the love of thy mighty I am presence, flowing forth to heal, to bless and to prosper thy inhabitants. The very substance of earth is being quickened into greater activity, and as the children of God walking the earth, so shall they feel the current of God flowing in quickening them into greater love, loyalty, and desire for thy freedom. O America, thou didst seem to have become bound, but thou art not. Thou art entering into thy great freedom. Thou dost seem on the throes of pain, but thou wilt be born into thy great peace, health, happiness, and prosperity. We give praise and thanks that this is God's wisdom, the mighty I am present speaking. The Christ child enfolding thee, America, has grown into majesty and power. It no longer pleads, but commands obedience of all that is of the outer to the service of the inner presence. The power of divine love governs thee and consumes all unlike itself. America, we give praise and thanks that thou art a great jewel within the heart of God, the lamp of illumination, lighted by the mighty I am presence, the chalice, the crystal cup, holding within its pure radiance the freedom, peace, health, prosperity, and illumination of those who dwell within thy embrace. May all the world feel thy radiance and be blessed by it. Peace, 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 and on earth good will to men. Arcturus Notes I would suggest that sometime each day you think of yourself as a radio station sending forth peace and good will to all mankind. Know that in this mighty consciousness the limitless power of the mighty I Am Presence flows forth to each individual and gives that which he is ready to receive bringing enlightenment and decision to everyone. Be conscious that your own minds are such powerful divine centers that at any time you can make quick, unerring decisions through the power of divine love. Recognize that your mind is but a vehicle of the great master presence of the mighty I Am presence within, and that it is to obey the inner presence at all times. Command it always to act with decision, alertness and quickness, and that all human senses of wavering be forever consumed. 
The New Cycle Today is a focal point of 10,000 years, the beginning of another cycle of 10,000 years, in which the Great Ones from Venus, who have always been instrumental in the uplift of humanity and of our Earth, this day come forth and pour out to humanity throughout the Earth a mighty radiance. This will bring about more quickly a greater stabilization and confidence in the hearts of many public officials. It will cause them to have a strong, unwavering desire to reestablish American confidence and prosperity and make them feel a deeper love and loyalty for her progress than ever before. Many will have learned that they cannot rule humanity with a ruthless hand, for they are seeing that the inroad of control which they have desired to gain over others is returning to themselves for redemption. If this lesson can be impressed upon them sufficiently, a great calamity will have been averted. In this quickening period, things can be done in a short period of twenty years that would ordinarily require a hundred years. Beloved St. Germain's description of the New Year's Eve conclave at the Royal Teton, January 1, 1935. It is with great joy that I relate to you briefly some of the activity that took place at Royal Teton last night. 214 of the Ascended Masters were present and the Twelve from Venus. The all-seen eye was in the most powerful action known thus far. Great rays of light are made permanent to our national capital and the capital of each state, that a constant radiation may pour forth to these focal points, and also to the principal cities of Europe, India, China, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, South America, Africa, and Mexico. A similar activity or radiation from the Golden City in Shambhala was also poured forth making a triple activity for the blessing of mankind. Every effort is being made to avoid as much destructive activity as possible throughout the world. The activity of the past three months has been tremendously encouraging, and we do have high expectation for this year. Being so well aware of the free will of humanity, we can but trust for their harmonious cooperation with the conscious radiation pouring forth from the above-mentioned triple activity. There were outpourings of light from the tall master from Venus, Jesus and the great divine director, such as I have not known before in my experience. The many who have been fully aware of my sincere effort for the blessing of America have now joined me in full power to achieve all the possible and cosmic law and the law of the individual permit. The cosmic laws are daily giving greater freedom in this activity, which is the thing that gives us such great encouragement. There were many students present last night for which I am very grateful. There is much detail of the activity which took place that I may not reveal at this time, but I assure all the students it was marvelous beyond description. The great host of Ascended Masters joined me in their love, light, blessing, and opulence to the students, to America, and to the world, that this year may be unparalleled in its happiness to mankind, in the fullness of my love, St. Germain. End of Discourse End of book.